live. Welcome back, everybody, to the second day, the final day, of the TRC Legends of Runeterra Invitational. I am James, joined today by Case. Howdy. And we're going to be swapping around a, a bit today because the primary core of uh, casters that we had going on yesterday are all still in winners. So we all at least have two more games to play today, if not more than that. And we make it an intense run. Um, I personally am looking forward to it. Uh, yesterday was a ton of fun, not only to be here casting, but also to play in the match that I played in, you know? I, I enjoyed having the spotlight on me for a little bit. It, it, it was a really good time. And uh, we certainly had some, some surprises going on yesterday. The biggest one being Sky knocking Emma down to losers immediately. Uh, now, Emma has played this game a lot, as we, we, we were boasting about her skills yesterday, and especially her skills with this... Demacia Shen barrier deck um, that wound up really not having the legs that we thought that it would have in this tournament. Absolutely. I also think uh, maybe we discounted Sky a little bit. Uh, we talked a little bit after the end of the stream about how it seems like maybe some of these players who net decked or maybe modified a net deck didn't understand their decks as well as they could. Um, she built all of these pretty much from scratch. Yeah, that's um, what it looks like. You don't really see... Um, you see a Shen Lux, but you see, don't see a Shen Lux like this. Mm -hmm. um, this is definitely a different spin on aggro than we're used to seeing, and then uh, at least with Hecarim, uh, certainly an unusual combo. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, we saw her pilot that knocks his aggro deck to great success against Emma. I'm a little bit worried about the Shen Lux deck because, as 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 much as you were talking about the strengths of you know homebrewing, I feel like it's definitely not the most powerful deck that there is, and we've seen it struggle to take wins, but. In this first match, Henry versus Sky, if Sky manages to upset Henry here, that would be insane. Shooting Sky all the way to winner's finals, where we she herself did not have very high expectations for her performance in this tournament. Um, then we in losers, we suffered even more with Oliver beating Riley, which was, I think, unexpected. And then Oliver taking out Emma, eliminating her within the first day of the invitation of the invitational. Yes, definitely quite a surprise, especially with Oliver being the first loss of this tournament. Uh, in that initial lower seed match, Oliver versus Riley, Riley did actually um, knock him down to loser's bracket. And then Oliver came right back to 2-0 uh, him, I believe. Mm-hmm, um, yeah. And, and then beat and then Emma, he, a favorite he, for the tournament. He 2 0 Emma, yeah, as well. Chris uh, knocked Shay out uh, quickly before, right before that, which is exciting. I'm glad to see that Chris is still in this tournament. Sad to see Shay go, sad to see Emma go and Riley. But I, I, I'm really looking forward to how the games pan out today because I feel like with the upsets that we saw yesterday, this could go in a lot of different ways, especially with some power players still in winners having to come down to losers and face elimination. Absolutely, and Chris is running those net decks we talked about. He's running some decks that are very in the meta right now. We've got that uh, elusive aggro, you've got deep deck, and he's running Vimerdinger, I believe. Yep. Um, and so those could make a very strong run through the loser bracket here if he stays consistent. Yeah, I, I, I'm for sure excited to see how it goes. Um, hopping right into our first match here, it's going to be Henry versus Sky. Now, as we said... Uh, this would be a big upset if Sky manages to take out Henry, but we've seen her, you know, pilot her decks with success before, so, you know, I, I, I'm excited to see it. We're still waiting for Henry's ban, but we know Sky's ban. <clears throat> How do you predict that this matchup is going to go, Henry versus Sky? Well, you know, Henry, I think, has stronger decks. I think maybe he has a stronger uh, handle on his decks, perhaps, as well. Um, that kind of tactical thinking, especially with the Yasuo deck, um, but yeah. what it might really come down here, uh, <clears throat> what it really might come down to here is is how Sky is drawing uh, and what kind of combo she's able to set up. If she's uh, able to get that Darius out already leveled, that um, that could be really really good for her, given that the aggro deck isn't banned. Um, and her Shen Lux deck runs very much like a uh, aggro or rather mid range Bannerman deck. Right. Um, so she's staying on curve and she's pulling those cards, even though the Lux maybe isn't the best in the deck. Um, she could be looking very, very scary with uh, face damage. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I agree. I think that both competitors have a chance to win here. We just got word uh, Sky is banning Henry's Yasuo deck, and Henry is going to be banning Sky's Darius deck. Now, I am okay. not surprised to see this because Henry was definitely talking about how powerful that Darius deck was yesterday. But on the bright side, we are going to get to see Sky's Elise deck, which took a game off of me in Round Robins, played very well. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing that one. 100%. Let's get into some deck analysis here. Henry's attack a lot, Quinn Misfortune deck. Now, we did see this get played yesterday against Chris's uh, Noxus aggro, and honestly, this deck 
didn't have the strongest showing in the world. It did manage to get the W, but I feel like it could have lost to Chris's aggro deck had he prioritized that face damage, that burn damage, and maybe just played a little bit more optimally with his cards. I don't know. Sure, but I think what we were seeing with this deck is that even against those aggro decks that are built around sort of early gameplay, um, this Quint MF deck can really, really quickly establish board control, go very wide, um, and start hitting face around the enemy units. Yep, yeah, I mean, I, I'm excited to see it against these two matchups, one a little bit more mid-rangey, one a little bit more... Well, I guess they're both kind of mid-rangey decks, but certainly the Elise deck, it has a chance to pop off and get really aggressive early. So I'm looking forward to seeing this matchup. Uh, what I'm more excited about is Ugly's debut in the spotlight. This is one of the one of the most creative decks brought to this tournament for sure. Uh, synergizing Baron von Yip and Overgrown Snapvines with a bunch of cards that summon multiple units, have death triggers that summon multiple units, and then just a nice controlly shell that allows you to really take apart the board early. And as you get into that late game, you're just summoning wave after wave of four threes. Absolutely. <clears throat> and um you know, he's running a couple cards that are, are very strong in the meta on their in their own right, such as Blighted Caretaker, um, and he's running the Spider Package as well as an alt win con. He's got Elise, he's got the Skitterer, Hapless Aristocrat, Crawling Sensation, um, which, you know, secondarily as well, combo with the Snap Vines and combo with Baron Bunya. So he's looking at uh, several win conditions, which um, I think is the strength of this deck. Yeah, uh, I mean, I agree. For me, I, I've scrimmed a lot against this deck. You know, it was his first deck that he really got going. I think it's his it's his favorite deck, I would say, that he brought to the tournament. He, he likes to say that it's the least powerful one, but I'm not sure if I agree. Um, regardless, I'm, I'm excited to see it. It, it has its legs. It, it went about 50-50 against me in scrim, so, you know, we'll see if it, if it can perform against Sky here. Yeah, well, that's against you, but it did go undefeated in group stage. That is true. Now, it, 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 like I said, it has a lot of power. We're going to have to see. I'm just excited to watch it. Yep, for sure. Let's move on to Sky's Elise deck, which we have yet to see in the spotlight as well because it was banned yesterday. Now, this deck has a few unorthodox rings. Um, namely, that I, I, you don't often see Scar Mother Vrena here in these, in these uh, Mist Wraith style They Who Endure decks, but it, that's a really powerful mid range card, you know? And against Aggro, if they're swinging in and you're able to just block it and build up that power with overwhelm and then you start swinging in they're trying to block the overwhelm damage but it's just buffing her up even more that's just like a win condition right there yeah i mean um it, it, she's running a lot of cards that are very very strong in their own right and do find their way into a lot of very strong meta decks uh even on ladder but i'm concerned that she's maybe piecemealing a bit here you know um this isn't all the way a hecarim deck it's not all the way an endure deck right um you are missing a lot of those sort of death effect units that you want to have in the They Who Are Door decks, the ones that you want to be killing off, but she lacks those. She doesn't have um, Hapless Aristocrat, she doesn't have Cursed Keeper, mm -hmm. um, there's no... Um, I'm sorry, the... Summons two ones. Oh, the uh, the Caretaker? Caretaker. It has right. no Caretaker. Yes. Um, these are those classic cards that you want to be comboing with They Who Endure, and of course with Hecarim you want to be um, you want to be comboing cards like Haunted Relic, you want to have Soul Shepherd, um, so I'm wondering if that lack of synergy might cause a problem. I agree. The the Oblivious Islander and Mark of the Isles maybe could be taken out in you know in lieu of a few of those death effects that you were talking about. I mean, this Hecarim just you're kind of like kind of going in on the Hecarim, kind of not. You don't have that many ephemeral units, even the, that caretaker with some of the saplings, which would help you out. But it feels like this Hecarim is just a five five that summons two twos. Granted, I think that Hecarim is one of the strongest base character or base champions in the game especially after that buff that it got sure but he can be in a lot of danger if he's not leveled by the time he comes out or if he won't be leveled on that turn because if he's just a 5-5 five five, um i mean two turns and he's dead pretty much mm -hmm. if he takes two blocks um what i do see as a strength of this deck is she has a lot of sort of mid-rangey blockers which can delay time for what i see as her possible main win con which is ledros plus atrocity yep i agree um i i think that this deck is strong if it draws well i think that there are a lot of possibilities where it doesn't draw well we're just gonna have to see how it goes mm -hmm. <clears throat> the last deck is sky shen lux deck which is again unorthodox but you we saw it you know come out with the early green glade caretakers and just wipe the floor with a very slow uh war mother's call deck earlier mm-hmm yeah, I'm not sure how to feel about this one. I feel like uh, Emerald Awakener in particular is kind of a, a weak include, but besides that, it runs very similar to just a standard Bannerman deck. Um, obviously, it doesn't have uh, Bannerman the card in it, but she runs Scythria, uh, and, and with the barriers and the, the Lifesteal Key Guardian, 
uh, purify, she can have counters, and she can just continually hit face. Yep, it looks like this deck kind of wants to stay alive in the early game. Late game, you're playing those Radiant Guardians and those Emerald Awakeners. Alongside Brightsteel Formation and Prismatic Barrier, ways to give them barrier, you're going to be swinging in and healing a ton. You know, you have a lot of stabilization in this deck. I think it's just going to have to come down to, can you get there, especially against the Quinn deck, and even if you do get there, are you going to be able to take out all these waves and waves of 4-3s that the Snapvine deck manages to create? Mm -hmm. I have to say, though, in this matchup, I think this deck is particularly weak. Um, obviously, with the MF uh, attack effect, all those barriers disappear um, if uh, Sky is on the defense. And then she's running 3 Deny, which really isn't that useful against anything that Henry's running. Um, against MF Quinn, she can deny Relentless Pursuit or Make It Rain, I suppose. But those don't really seem like that much value for 4 mana, do they? Yeah, I, I agree. I think that, for me, I just want to get right into these games and see how they go. So let's give our players to go ahead. Um, and we are going to see this crazy matchup. Now, again... Sky showed a lot of promise yesterday, but with that Darius deck banned, is she going to have the same success against a competitor like Henry, who has a higher caliber of decks, you know, debatable on whether or not he's a higher caliber of player, and it looks like Henry is going to be queuing up his Quinn Misfortune deck, whereas Sky is queuing up her Hecarim Elise deck. Now, I think that this is a pretty favorable matchup for Sky, or at least more favorable than if she queued up the Shen Lux deck. Well, absolutely, it is more favorable than Shen Lux, but I think this deck still suffers. Um... Obviously, in sort of mainstream Hecarim decks, you run a lot of Ephemerals, which means that when it's your turn to block, you don't necessarily have those blocking bodies there. Um, you know, her, her Hecarim deck isn't very mainstream necessarily, so she, she does have those mid range blockers that I talked about, which could delay time for her, her win con. So we'll see how this works out. Yep. Um, Henry, with a great start, the Fleet Feather Tracker obviously is a great turn one play, and ooh, Sky picks up a heavy hand. Oh, a Mist Wraith might help her get there, but... You don't really want to be seeing they who are enduring your opening hand. Especially Henry gets that first two damage off early. Uh, and I'm very scared for Sky here to see that Henry has um, MF plus Playful Trickster in hand. Mm -hmm. uh, that can possibly be a strong combo if he gets board presence. Yeah, Quinn as well. Henry's just going to be curving out in this game. Now, Make It Rain is also a very useful option against some of the 1-1s. One Sky plays her Mistrength, and it looks like she just wants to get the value trade. You know, he she knows that Henry's unit has challengers, so in, in later, if that gets buffed or that gets, a, you know value trade against something higher than it. Sky just wants to make that trade, but Henry decides to let it pass, let the 2-1 go through. Well, these Mithraeths do have Fearsome, so Henry actually was not able to oh, block there. Oh, that is actually a very good point. Yeah, my, my, my bad. I, I, I do not play against Mithraeth very often. Um, but it looks like Henry can just go in ahead and bang out Misfortune, give his unit Challenger, then swing with Misfortune and the Fleet Feather Tracker, pull in the 2-2. Sky does have a response, though. She has that Black Spear, which is a really good option against the Misfortune deck. Um, because Misfortune's a 3-3. Now, Henry can decide about whether or not he wants to play this 2-2. If he has the read that Sky doesn't have another blocker in hand, this 2-2 is going to get in for a lot of damage. Because she doesn't want to just waste this two, this Mist Wraith against a barrier. And he may be thinking about that Black Spear, thinking, if I play my MF, do I have any way to protect her here? Mm -hmm. Without that Trickster, <clears throat> you know, yeah, might be dangerous. And of course he doesn't. Sky is just going to pass the turn here. Henry, I assume, is going to swing with both units, pull in the Mist Wraith, and Sky will be able to Black Spear and basically reset the board, which is great for Sky because otherwise she'd be under a ton of threat against this deck. Looks like Henry is deciding whether or not he wants to pull in the Mist Wraith. And cast Make It Rain to save his bird because the Misfortune Trigger plus the Make It Rain Trigger will go off. Now, that could be interesting play here. It is a way for him to maintain board presence. Obviously, he doesn't know about the Black Spear, but um, if that comes out, you know, he'll still have a unit on board. Uh, could be a valuable blocker, especially since Sky has that Wraith Caller next turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, what I'm thinking here is Henry wants to preserve board presence because he knows he has a Quinn in hand. He knows he has Misfortune. So these little units that you can send in to just get an attack off, you know, and... and Oh, wait, she Mark of the Isles to actually take out the 2-1, and she's still going to have mana left over for that Black Spear. Now, Henry doesn't have a means of responding to this. Well, this may actually be a mistake from her. I don't Never think mind. so. She's I... just spending one mana to take out the one drop. Now, she does go down to 13 against a pretty aggressive curve coming out from Henry with Quinn plus uh, the Playful Trickster. Mm -hmm. But I see she gets the attack chip on the, on the even turns. Her next two even turns can very easily be Wraith Caller plus Hecarim mm -hmm. or Scar Mother Vrenna, which can get strong. Yeah, my only concern here is that if she doesn't pick up a playable card for turn five, she's kind of going to be in a world of hurt. That 3-1 with Fearsome is going to get through no matter what Henry decides to play here. 
He plays the hired gun, and Sky can just swing. I mean, she doesn't really have a reason to not just swing with both units here. Yeah, I think it's a little interesting he decided not to play the barrier unit. That could have taken at least a, a value trade for health. Yeah. Uh, here, he might just have to lose okay, a unit. Okay, so he decides to... Now, I think Henry's realizing the mistake. He wants to play Quinn next turn and use Valor to take out that 4-3, but if he blocks here, then that vulnerable is just completely going to waste. He would have much preferred to have a 2-2 with Barrier to block this 4-3 so that he could kill it with Valor next turn. And suddenly, a lot of face damage coming out from Sky. Yeah, Henry deciding just to not block. He, he values this 2-3. I'm not exactly sure if that's right. I think he would prefer to put damage on the 4-3 and save his Nexus the damage. Now, Sky draw, draws Glimpse Beyond, which is really not a good draw here for her. What she can do is Glimpse Beyond the Miss Wraith right now to have Black Spear ready, but she's just going to pass... I think she wants to let Henry play out his turn so that she has the Black Spear at the ready. And it looks like Henry maybe for a second thinking about attacking with Quinn and playing Ranger's Resolve. Now, I think this would be a big mistake to... Yeah, okay, Sky decides just to pass. She knows that Valor has a lot of value with that deck. I think Sky just wants to pass again here. Yep, she passes. Okay, this is... This is I think she's playing this as well as she can. Now, Henry has a, a very strong mid-range board. That Quinn is a powerful unit. What she could have done is Black Spear the 2-3 so that Henry couldn't attack, thereby making sure that if he has another scout unit next turn, Quinn won't be able to level. But now Henry can attack, and she won't have a way of Black Spearing to cancel that attack. Henry decides just to pass. No way of leveling up the Quinn until two more attack chips. Now, she can rally and then attack now. And here's that turn six that we talked about. You know, she has those even number chips, she can drop the Hecarim, she can drop the Vrenna. Uh, she does opt for the Hecarim, which I think is a good choice, because Henry doesn't have anything with enough damage to kill the Hecarim straight off. Yeah, I like Hecarim here. I would prefer to swing with a Mistwraith. You know Hecarim is going to be summoning two two twos of the Ephemeral, which is no matter what going to be triggering your Black Spear. If Henry decides to trade with Quinn here... See, this is why I really like would have liked to see the 4-3 swing as well, because it... it if she lets Hec if Henry lets Hecarim through her Nexus at six, he can't afford to take that four damage. Let's see here. So Sky could War Mother or Sky could glimpse beyond the two two that would just be pinging into that barrier, which is I think what she wants to do. She doesn't really have a great uh, target to use the Black Spear on anymore, as unless she would want to take out that Scout unit. But Henry has another one in hand. I think the best play for Sky to do, ooh, and she chooses not to glimpse beyond, she chooses to hold up the mana, the Black Spear. I have to think that might be a big mistake, because as we talked about, she doesn't really have a lot of good targets for the glimpse beyond in this deck. Yeah. We'll see. Okay, so I think she could just hold up the spell mana still. She's going to Black Spear the Quinn? Knowing that she needs this Quinn to be removed, and she's not, she might not have a great way to use it in the future simply because she would need a unit to die, and she doesn't really have that many units to feed into that. I think she may want to Black Spear the 2-2 without Barrier here, but she does go for that Quinn. Okay. I suppose rendering Quinn unable to attack herself. Mm-hmm. Henry choosing to Ranger's Resolve target, targeting Quinn. And I'm not sure that's good value from Henry either. He does only run one of those in his deck. Mm-hmm. And the Black Spear was not going to be killing the Quinn, so does... Emma run maybe the one drain the drain one because that may have been what Henry was considering and these are seven mana five fives they who endure and we're seeing how this they who endure package without those ephemeral you know units or the death triggers are just not that powerful and Henry coming in with Genevieve Elmhart a big finisher for this deck and I don't know if Sky that's just gonna take out the Hecarim I mean he he's gonna be swinging in with a bunch of scout units yeah the all three of a sudden looking scary for Sky I mean this. In a standard Endure deck, would be her Endure turn. This would be the, the big turn to get that, uh, that damage or that big blocker out. Uh, maybe hit, fa um, hit face with Atrocity. Mm -hmm. But because she's not running a lot of Endure uh, Synergy, it's not as good a turn as it could be. Now, the good news is this Vrenna is a really solid drop for Sky. None of Henry's other minions have three or more health, and he's actually letting the Hecarim live here. So Sky should trade this Hecarim into this 3-3 without a doubt. Well, I think what Henry's looking at here is that Genevieve will drop the Vrenna down to three, and then if he attacks again with scout units, then the Vrenna uh, dies on blocking. Yeah, that is true. She decides not to trade with the Hecarim. That's a huge mistake. You've got to think that Henry's just going to pull in the Hecarim with the Genevieve Elmhart now, and she's going to have missed that value. Yeah, there it is. I mean, 
Henry would have six less damage and not a three three anymore. Although I don't think he wants to be swinging with Quinn against this. He decides to. He just wants to push the face damage. He doesn't care about leveling up the Quinn. Now, if Sky had blocked that three three, then Henry would be at ten right now, and Quinn would be blocked, and Henry would only have a three two on board. I think that's a that's a big misplay that might cost Sky the game here. Now, granted. She does have a very strong next few turns, I think, with the Endures coming out, another Vrenna in hand, uh, and Henry pretty much Especially out of gas. Especially compared to Henry, yeah. I mean, you can drop an Endure next turn and the turn after that. These are now 8-8s eight with all those units that died. She would... Oh, and the Atrocity coming out. She just has to drop They Who Endure, and she has Lethal next turn. Henry has no way of removing this They Who Endure in his hand, let alone maybe his deck. And if Sky sees the play, I don't think Henry can... Well, do this. Do you think Henry has lethal here? Oh, he can't. He doesn't, he doesn't have, have the attack, the attack chip. chip. Sky can just pass the turn. She can just swing in now, and Henry. Oh, he can buff up his units to stop to stop the lethal. But Sky can just swing in, put a ton of pressure on Henry. But she's deciding whether or not she wants to. I'm sure she's looking at Henry's deck list right now, thinking, if I pass this turn and just go into atrocity, how do I lose this game? Should I even swing and risk Henry having those buffs? Well, if I'm looking at his deck list, I know that he has no answer from this. The best he could pull out is a Riposte, um, and even that doesn't kill your Endure. So I think this is a smart play by her. Mm-hmm. So that's Henry down to three, and with the Atrocity in hand, she could just pass the turn, get the mana available to it. Henry's going to go for the swing, and that War Chefs just doesn't do it. Sky just has to cast Atrocity now, and the game is hers. I mean, I assume Henry's going to play War Chefs to try and get in for lethal this turn, but Sky has the mana, and Sky looks like going to be taking this series 1-0 against Henry, possibly making an upset. I mean, then what... what oh, well, I mean, you got to keep in mind that her next deck is not the most powerful deck in the world. Henry doesn't need to be sweating yet, but certainly needing to 2-0 is not a position that he would have liked to have been in in this series. But of course, for Henry, being on the back foot here, just like with the Shen Fiora decks we've seen... If Sky gets those strong card draws with the Shen Locks, um, and she gets those early units out, she curves well, there's really nothing Henry can do about that. Yeah, exactly. Sky has a chance just to be able to win the game. Now, Sky should block and cast Atrocity here. There's no reason not to block, just in case Henry has some sort of answer to the Atrocity, but she realizes as long as she targets this right, yep, and it looks like she managed... Yeah, and she decides and she goes to block, block as well. Very, Very smart. smart. Smartly played. And she that will be the game. Has Henry to hit the has block no response. Buttons. She's... Thinking. Okay, you don't need to overthink this, Sky. Just hit block and you win. And she does. Okay, and that's going to be it. There's no way for Henry to respond. He can cast Playful Trickster, but it doesn't do anything. Henry goes down 0-1 against Sky. And are we on the verge of a huge upset here? Well, it really comes down to card draw, I think, next game. Um... You know, she does have to curve out on that Shenlox, but Henry, if he plays this Quinn MF again, he's likely looking at curving better than she will. I completely agree. I think that the Quinn MF is the is the better is has the better matchup here. I think you want to give that deck as little time as possible. Mm -hmm. And we did talk about as well, Henry has a lot of counters to those barriers with Make It Rain. Um, he's got uh, the MF to remove the effect when he's got the attack chip. Yeah. And because of the way that Burst versus Fast interacts... Uh, I think Henry should keep this Make It Rain. I think that he really wants ways to deal with that barrier. There's no way for Sky to let the Make It Rain resolve, taking the one and then putting on the barrier after that. So the barriers are basically just going to be adding one health, which is not the type of value that you want to see out of those barriers. Alright, Henry was deciding on whether or not he wanted to bounce away the Make It Rain to try and find a two drop. Instead, he keeps it and finds a crack shot Corsair, which he decides not to play. Sky's just going to drop the Green Glade Caretaker, knowing there's no way of Henry giving that unit barrier this turn. And, and Green Glade Caretaker into the 3-2 that gives it barrier next turn. I mean, this could be devastating. But if Henry sees this 3-2 come out, then he could wait, then make it rain, and block the, the, the Green Glade Caretaker with the... Fleet Feather Tracker and get the confirmed kill on that without having to worry about barrier because Sky's going to be tapped out and that is what happens instead of Sky playing the Green Glade Caretaker which would have been better against this specific line of play. Henry needs to pass, let Sky swing in with the barrier unit, get the block ready, cast Make It Rain and yep he sees the line. Next turn is going to be a really powerful uh, Green Fang Warden which is going to be able to get some early swings and Sky's not going to be able to want to block it. 
knocks Sky's Nexus down to 13. And Sky loses one of those crucial units that she would have needed to stay alive in this game. Granted, she does have an okay curve. She has the 2-2 two -two that's going to draw her another card. She finds a Deny, which is just almost a dead card in this matchup. But one of the things I'm looking at, which could be good for Sky if she continues to curve out, she did get that one of Scythria in her opening hand. And that's a crucial, crucial card, um, especially because she gets the attack chip on evens. Um, she can play that, and if she has a wide board, it's very, very strong, especially against uh, Henry's decklist here. Yep, she decides to play the Emerald Awakener. I'm not really sure if this is right. I think at this point, the mana that you want to be using should be going into card draw. Maybe you find a four drop to play next turn instead of... Uh, Instead of a 3 and a 1, which is, you know, okay, you still want to be going wide, but I think you want to have as many options as possible, you know? Um, and she's deciding to trade off her 2-2 to save her Nexus to health. I don't know if that's right. I think that you're right that she wants to be trying to go as wide as possible here. And that 2-2 two -two that has lifesteal could be great for swinging another deny picked up is not what you want to see. And this is exactly what we mentioned. She runs three denies, and they're particularly weak against MF Quinn. There's just not a lot of great value targets. Only a Relentless Pursuit, really. Mm-hmm. Yep, she's able. To get, she's going to be able to get in for two damage here. Uh... And she realizes that both of Henry's units in her mind are more valuable than this 3-1. The 2-1 that can pull in her 2-2 or the Green Glade Protector, and that 2-2 with Scout, she, she wants those off the board because she knows that they synergize really well with Henry's uh, other champions. Yeah, and Henry deciding to let the 3 damage go through. That was a very intelligent attack by Sky, reading that Henry would want to let the 3 damage go through. I don't know if I would have attacked with that 3-1 there, but now Henry gets to... Okay, Sky doesn't have a way of burying up this 1-2, so she could just be feeding it into the bird. And the make it rain against that 3-1. Now Sky well, does... she does draw that prismatic now. Yeah, that's a great draw from Sky. Henry, I think, just wants to swing with both the 2-2s. Two I think Sky should block one of the 2-2s two with the 3-1. Sky just passing, knowing she doesn't have any proactive play. She's going to hold up mana to Prismatic Barrier. I want to see Sky put the 3-1 in front of that 2-2 two -two right here. But again, she might be looking to Prismatic, and he has that Make It Rain counter if it hits the proper unit. Yep. I think she's considering throwing in the 1-2 and putting on Barrier, but that's just not going to be good. She must see that Henry has that tracker. Okay, and she decides... She's thinking about sending in that 3-1. Massing over Prismatic Barrier. I don't know. This is really scary for Sky. She decides to just go ahead with the Barrier against Henry's deck with Make It Rain. She might be giving it to the 2-1? Or the 2-2? Two -two? Okay, she does. Now, I think Henry casts Make It Rain here 100% of the time. You have a 3-1 that you're going to be hitting. Yeah, and here comes the Make It Rain. Sky does not have the mana to deny it. And this... So there's there's two good targets here for Henry. I'm sure he'll be happy, even if he doesn't hit this 2-2 here, if he hits the 2-2 or the 3-1. Yep. Yeah. And he hits 3-1, 3-2, and the and Nexus. The Nexus. So, he, so he's okay. You know, you don't really want to be hitting the Nexus here. You don't really want to be hitting the Green Glade Caretaker. But the Nexus is the better of the two because... You're happy to see that damage go through. Mm -hmm. And of course, that elusive unit will still die, it, unless he targets the caretaker, which might be yeah, the Yeah, I think that point. is smart. I think he wants to leave that elusive unit up. He knows that it's not going to block. I think sky blocking here would be a big mistake. You're preserving your nexus too, but you would rather, yep, you'd rather just save it. And he also knows that sky doesn't have any mana left for any of her barrier cards. Yeah. This is rough. I mean, if she plays Scythria, she can get in because Henry doesn't have any big units, and that Relentless Pursuit I don't think is what you want to see here for Henry. He has no way of casting that or triggering Plunder this turn, but this back-to-back -back might be absolutely huge. It, do it won't be enough to kill the Scythria yet, though. We'll see. I, I mean, Henry, despite, you know, going up, these small minions are getting traded pretty effectively by Sky with her barriers. He really would have liked to see that 2-2 die using that make it rain last turn. I think Sky just swings in here. Absolutely, so she swings in for 3 at least, and Henry probably wants to block the Scythria, so he has to decide, what does he value less? I, and me personally, it would be the Corsair, but we'll see what he chooses. I think, yeah, you want, you want to chump that 1-1. One, one. I mean, granted, he wants to get the Nexus damage now, but that he you have, you have to consider Henry has a 2-2 two, two on board. Granted, it has elusive, but if Sky finds... Oh, he just lets all the damage through, decides he would rather have both units alive. And I think what he's looking at is that uh, Citrus Courier here. Yeah, but what is he going to do? I mean, there's no he doesn't have enough mana to capitalize on it. 
I think Henry is going to get a lot. He's going to try and get a lot of value out of this back to back. He really wants Sith three out of block that three one. And if Sky doesn't have okay, so Sky's going to be playing her Vanguard Redeemer here. It looks like not caring about the card draw. She knows that she this game is not going very much longer. She needs to get tempo now. I may have preferred to see Lux here. That barrier could have done really well defensively. Okay, Henry swinging with both the scout units. And I think that back-to-back -back is going to prove extra value. She'll probably go for those blocks here, and the back-to-back -back will save one or both of his units. And that's a permanent buff throughout the turn. Yeah, the question is, does she block the 3-1 with Scythria? She decides to block the 3-1 with the... Th 3-3, knowing that Henry's Nexus is low enough that that 2-2 getting damage in is going to be huge. And this is really an interesting deny here, um, especially if she's looking at his deck list and she sees that he might have that Relentless Pursuit, uh, she might want to save the mana for that, but yeah. she's instead denying the one damage from the crack shot. Well, the thing is, Relentless Pursuit doesn't get Henry a lot of value on this turn. If he doesn't cast back-to-back -back here, both these units die, he still has the attack chip, so the Relentless Pursuit isn't that good, and he can't get in with the 3-4 because... Scythria can just block it for free. Now what Henry might be thinking here is, just let these blocks go through, he then has a 3-4 and a 1-1, one, one, and he still has mana for back-to-back, -back. he can swing in with both next, and if Sky does any blocks here, he's gonna be able to get insane value out of these units. Yeah, this was really smartly played by Henry. And Henry gonna kill both of Sky's units and have both of his survive. And Sky, granted, she has a Lux in hand, but Henry with that Citrus Courier and Relentless Pursuit, and he's going to be drawing. You've got to think he's going to be able to take this game. It's yeah, going to depend and he on really, he draws. really dug himself out of a bad situation there. I think if she maintained the Scythria and the Elusive, she probably had to block at least one, but if she kept that Scythria on board, that could have been very strong for her. Mm -hmm. I think Sky just needs to play Lux here and swing. This Emerald Awakener, you really want to be waiting until 10 mana to play it, and you need that body on board. Absolutely, and she'll probably... I, I see the Relentless Pursuit coming out here for Henry. Oh, he just plays Citrus Courier without Plunder. Yeah, I I mean, if you're Relentless Pursuit, you can't play either of his four fives. And he is trying to go wider. Yeah, exactly. Um... Now, I think Henry needs to block here. I would prefer to send in the... He sends in the Citrus Courier. So that's value from Sky, but he Henry's very wide. Now, Sky has to deny to save her Nexus one health, or if Henry winds up casting that Relentless Pursuit, the Shen has a lot of health and will be able to block twice. Henry, having no scout units, decides to just full swing here. This isn't lethal. Sky can block... The 4-1. But unfortunately for her, he has two opportunities to rally this turn, so I think we're looking at possible curtains. However, she can play the Emerald Awakener after this attack for Lifesteal, and she can deny the Relentless Pursuit. Yeah. Here's the deal. With how she's been playing her denies in the past, I wouldn't be surprised to see her deny this crack shot Corsair just to save her Nexus 1 health since her Nexus is at 7. Uh, the th another thing is, if, Sky, if Henry doesn't Relentless Pursuit here right away, which is what he's thinking about, He's going to give Sky a chance to respond by playing at least two units before Henry gets another chance to attack. Now, I think he should have relentless pursuit in response to this deny. He doesn't. So Sky is going to be able to play both of her units out before Henry gets a chance to attack again, which is going to be saving her and her Nexus. Next turn, she's going to have a 6-6. Six, six. See, Henry has no way of getting... Uh, of... of Okay, and he's choosing to play the Citrus Courier, which I think is right here. Oh, but he can rally again after this. Well, she does have the Deny, and she has mana for it. Unless she plays the Emerald Awakener here. I think Sky wants to play the Emerald Awakener. If she doesn't have, if she doesn't have that third blocker, then that 1-1 one -one is going to be getting in for a lot of damage. She decides to pass, and I, can't, I just can't think that this is right. Henry plays a hired gun, and now Sky needs to play this 2-2 two -two that's going to heal her. Otherwise, Henry just has lethal on board. If he full swings, Sky has no way of dealing with it. She wants to hold up mana for that deny. But it looks like Henry is just going to take this game, because unbeknownst to Sky, he has that rally in the back. Now, I think Sky can hold on here and maybe nullify the board. Because Emerald Awakener is going to heal her a little bit. Henry needs to attack with this Crackshot Corsair last so that Sky can't get lifesteal value off of it. Yeah, she wants to attack with her biggest minions first. Pulls in the Lux. 
So that Lux can't trade. Yeah, this might just be it. Now that's a mistake. Henry really wants to attack with his crack shot Corsair last. Because Sky wants to be using that 2 2 to block the 1 1. And as of now, she can still do that and survive. But if he swapped his two, his two units, the 1 1 and the 2 3, she would have to trade with the 2 3, otherwise, she'd be dead. Mm -hmm. Now, the board as it is, I think she blocks Shen into the 3 4 Badger Bear and she life steals on the crack shot. That way, she preserves. Oh, that might be a mistake because she could preserve her Awakener for next turn. She doesn't realize that Henry has Rally as well, so she's not keeping her 2 2 alive. This is a. Huge mistake. Henry goes on ahead and rallies. Oh, he waits. He doesn't have lethal yet. Yeah, and that rally is going to do it. Sky is going to lose this game. Uh, there's no way of her uh, staying alive here. And with that vulnerable on the Lux, there was no way of her staying alive either way. There's one Shen against this full board. That's going to be it. Uh, moving on. I mean, again, like we're going to see a better matchup. And honestly, this Misfortune Quinn deck, I feel like has been performing very poorly against a lot of these decks. I agree. This certainly came way closer than I thought it would. Yeah, it seems like it's it doesn't do racing justice if the enemy can p properly play around it. And that moves the uh, series score up to one and one. Henry now with ugly... And Sky bringing out the Lux and Shen deck again. Let's see here. I think if Sky can get some Bright Steel formation value against this, these four threes, then that's going to be really good for Sky. But but that then you're talking really late game, and he's probably gotten a lot of value from the snap vines, if not one by then. Yeah. Yep, we're gonna have to see. It looks like he might be trying to curve out really early with Elise. Gonna keep that spider just to allow him to maybe get an early Elise level up, buff up his board, just play this like a spider's deck. And with the curve he has in hand, I wouldn't be surprised to see him keep the collector. We'll see what he decides to do. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Oh, and he has a spider-filled hand. He might be able to get this Elise leveling up very early. We'll have to see. Glinkate Caretaker turn one comes out. She's gonna be able to swing that in for some free damage. But, aside from that, not really that much. She can give barrier to whatever unit she wants to play next turn. For me, I would think the Shadow Assassin is... But actually, after seeing this Elise, I think she's going to want to do it on a 3-3 three, three to help contest that Elise. You're looking at that Vanguard Sergeant for sure, I think. And yeah, she casts it on the Vanguard Sergeant, giving it barrier, drawing up a Deny, which can be really good in this deck. Maybe if Henry wants to get some value off of that Glimpse Beyond, this guy's going to be able to deny that. <clears throat> she can also deny a lot of his control -y spells. He has, uh, he runs Vile Feast, he has Grasp of the Undying. Uh, Vengeance would be a huge one. Mm -hmm. And Sky really happy to pick up a Prismatic Barrier. Any sort of ways to give Barrier in this game is going to be really good. Henry playing this Vanguard Sergeant is going to completely shut down, or uh, Sky playing this Vanguard Sergeant will completely shut down Henry's plans because he can no longer swing in with the Lease. If he swings in with that 3-2 with uh, Fearsome, then he's going to be in a really bad position. She goes for the Purify! Oh man, I think she really needs to play this 3-3, otherwise she's going to be in a world of hurt. Henry can swing in with both units if she doesn't. Come on, Sky, it has barrier. This, you've got to see that this is going to shut down Henry. Okay, good, good, good. So she buffs up her Green Glade Caretaker. There's no real way of Henry getting value here. Picks up the four Demacia in hand, so if she winds up going wide over the next few turns... So Sky, I want to see Sky just swing here and cast barrier on a unit that might be dying. I, I think that that's going to be really good for her game plan. You're going to eat Elise if, you, if one of your units dies. Instead she chooses just to play the Shadow Assassin, saving the barrier for a better combat trick, maybe a more defensive combat trick, but that Baron Von Yip, she can silence that next turn if she knows how Henry's deck works. She needs to get that silence going. Henry does have the burst scuttler, which will summon a 3-3 for burst speed. This is a lot of the strengths of this, and they use Cast Salesman. Could actually... That might be a huge combo here with Von Yip. Do the, does the use Cast Salesman... I believe his... Uh, can they attack? They can, yeah. Okay, so they are one cost, so they will be able to get in, and, and Sky is going to struggle to play this defensively. Henry choosing to scrap Scuttler here, summoning a 3-3, and nerfing Emma's board, buffing his own spiders again. 
Emma might just want to play for Demacia here, but instead she goes for the Purifying of the Von Yip, which is smart. She can, I think she wants to play this 3-2 and give her unit Barrier right now. Just get a lot of defensive power. Stop Henry from swinging in. If he can't swing in with... I think you want to give it to the bright uh, to the 4-2, which is going to have the mo most fav favorable trades here. Instead, on the 1-2, which doesn't really pose any sort of a threat against Henry's board. Well, perhaps she's looking to block the Elise Spider, but I feel like it's not value. Yeah, I mean, at, at that case, you would still want... You could kill off the Elise quite easily if you cast that barrier on the Green Blade. Mm-hmm. Now, Henry still gets to kill the Elise. He can still block three damage for free with this barrier. Can't block four. I think she wants to do it in front of the Scrap Scuttler. Now, in this case, if she had cast a barrier on one of uh, on the Green Glade Caretaker, then the Green Glade Caretaker could take out that 4-2, save her Nexus a lot of health, and swing this board, but instead, she decides to just kind of go for a medial play. I don't know if that was right. Henry going for the Glimpse Beyond on the spider. Gassing up his, his hand a little bit more. That Neverglade Collector is going to be really bad for Sky, given that she wasn't able to clear off more of this board. Yeah, absolutely, and, and he is swinging in for 9, bringing her down to 11 the turn before the Collector comes out. So that can start to get into risky territory for her. Yeah, he also has the used Cast Salesman in conjuncture with that Neverglade Collector. Plus Blighted Caretaker as well. These are very strong combos in hand for him. Yep, Sky needs to somehow find a way... Oh, and the Scythria comes out. I wonder if it's ever double three drop here in preparation for a four Demacia turn on the horizon. Because Henry this turn is probably just going to drop the uh, Neverglade Caretaker and that's it. I, I can't imagine he uses any other resources here when he doesn't have the attack chip. So Sky has a little bit of time to just take the foot off the gas, chill for a second, see what she draws. Okay, I think you definitely want to play your Lifesteal minion here and then swing in for four elusive damage she chooses to swing first which is smart just in case henry has some sort of response have i been saying emma instead of sky i apologize if that if that has been the case <laughs> i just get so excited i think you want to be holding back this three three four defense you don't really want to be trading any sort of one for one trade right now is not good um for henry or for for sky because henry has that never played collector out yeah, I think you just want to be swinging in with the two twos here. I agree, but I think Henry has a very, very scary turn coming up. Uh, Sky will need to block, otherwise she risks lethal here, um, which could put her on the back foot when you talk about a for Demacia turn coming up. Yep, Sky looking to attack and give prismatic barrier for what Henry for whatever Henry blocks with, but I feel like you could have gotten more value out of this card later. Henry can just throw in the Von Yip, which is a very weak card. Mm -hmm. And you might be wanting that Prismatic Barrier for this next turn coming up that uh, Henry will have very strong. Yeah, exactly. The only thing that I can think of is Henry playing a minion, allowing Sky to four Demacia. Although without that lifesteal, she's just going to start to get burned out of this game. Let's see what she decides to do this turn. Oh, and the Guardian could make all the difference. If Henry decides to just swing here and Sky can get that Guardian pr uh, proc triggered. We'll see. What do, you, what, do you, what do you think here, Case, looking at both the hands? Well, if I'm Henry, I'm looking at my Caretaker here. Um, obviously, that, that creates two ephemeral units that'll die, and then I'm looking to swing in and play the Cask Salesman after that. That's a ton of burn damage to face. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, with just all the units that are dying here, that's one plus the two saplings, plus the two casks is five, plus the two cask triggers will be seven direct damage. And she does if she doesn't for Demacia here, she loses both elusives to those uh, Challenger units. Yeah, I, I, I mean, at the same time, the only way I think that Sky stays in this game is if she plays that 2-2 with Lifesteal. I really would have liked to see that 2-2 be played last turn instead of the other Neverglade Collector. He's mousing over Scythia. She's just going to play Scythia for the block damage. I mean, Henry's not going to be able to swing in with his 2-4. Honestly, I think 4 Demacia right, might have been a right, uh, correct play. You completely ice Henry out of attacking. He can't play another unit unless he obliterates one of those Ephemerals. Um, and then you can drop Scythia next turn and attack with 4-4, um, 4-3, four, 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 three, uh, three, three Elusives. 
um, with Fearsome. The only problem with that is knowing what we know about these hands, Henry can just full swing, leaving back the Neverglade Collector, forcing Sky to block all of his minions, play that used Cask Salesman, and just straight up win the game. And that looks like what he's going to do. I mean, if Sky blocks here, then she's taking five. If Sky doesn't block here, then she's taking an additional two, three, or three, so she has to full block. She loses the 3-3, three, three. she just... I don't know if she has any way back in this game. This Henry might be able to just pull, the, pull out the used Cask Salesman, pass the turn, and that might just be it. <clears throat> Guy needs to block this 3-2 with the 3-3, three, because three, it has Fearsome, so she can't throw in her stealth minions. <clears throat> I think she realizes she may have made a few mistakes this game without prioritizing getting out some lifesteal. Mm -hmm. And if she doesn't block this frenzied skitterer here, okay, she will now, um, then he would have lethal with the cask salesman. And I believe he still does, because he does 5 damage here from the collector, and then an additional 4 for 9 lethal. Yep, and Sky has no way of regaining life, she has no way of shutting down this used cask salesman. It looks like this is just going to be it, I think Henry just takes the series here off the back of this Neverglade Collector and Sky just not having the lifesteal to stay in this game. And you see the ideas behind this Emerald Awakener, but she just hasn't managed to get to 10 mana in either of her games. And Henry going for a little bit of BM with the Crawling Sensations. He knows that as, as soon as he passes the, the turn, this game is over. And that is going to be it. Henry is going to take the series over Sky. 2-1. Sky showing a lot of signs of life in that match, um, but overall just not able to bridge that gap. Uh, it's, it's a little bit disappointing, but then again, Henry definitely did perform really well in the, um, in the round robin, so I'm happy to see him continuing to, uh, to perform. Absolutely, and congratulations to Henry. Uh, Sky will go down to that loser's bracket, and I'm excited to see more from her down there. Yeah, um... Going on into our next match, it is going to be me versus you, Case. So I am definitely looking forward to that. As soon as Henry gets up here and we get Chris set up casting, Case and I are going to be playing a match to see which one of us gets sent into winner's finals and which one of us gets sent down to losers. <laughs> Congratulations on your win, Henry. A little bit closer comfort there, but I'm glad to see you making it and staying in winners, and I, and I hope to, uh, Sky will be able to make a stance later on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, what can I say? Sky gave me a real run for my money today. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, I really, I didn't draw the champions at all on game two, which is a pretty bad uh, thing in that deck. You definitely want to have your Misfortune on three and your Quinn on five if at all possible, so that was very scary. So I think the way that we're doing this, Henry, is Chris is gonna come into the uh, primary spectator Discord so okay. he can see what's going on. That makes I sense. will be downstairs deafened in that Discord so you guys can communicate in there okay. um, without me knowing what you're talking about. Uh, so if you wanna communicate with him through text, that would be awesome, but for now, I'm just gonna set, go downstairs and get set up on my own account. Right, yeah, and we've got a pretty exciting match here today. James and Case, uh, two tournament heavyweights here. Uh, definitely both trained a lot and prepared a lot for this tournament. Both spent a lot of time crafting decks to the fullest potential, save for Case's barrier deck. And I'm really excited to see how this match turns out. Now, I'm going to be getting in contact with Chris here and seeing if he wants to pop into the Discord. Uh, getting the spectator... Cool, 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 cool. Very cool. So yeah, I obviously uh, I think Case knows that he's going to want to ban out that Swain deck uh, because he knows that it's a very powerful deck, and I can't blame him. I mean, that's definitely the one that I would have banned. Uh. And, uh, yeah. Obviously, we haven't gotten the bands totally checked in yet. Uh, when we do, I will be sure to, um, start looking at the deck lists. But until then, hey, Chris, can you Hello. hear me? Chris, can Which you hear me? 
Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Welcome to the stream, Chris. Okay, hold up. I gotta I gotta mute in the stream. Okay. Okay. Hello. Yes, hello. Okay, cool. So Christopher, obviously he uh you are still in the tournament. You were not eliminated. Uh, good work, you yeah. know, that's that's not too shabby. You did uh take down Shay to stay for your tournament life, but you are gonna be playing later on today. How are you feeling about your uh, tournament so far? Um I think um so as everyone probably knows, James has been adamant about telling everybody that my decks are all conventional, very I I I won't say I haven't net decked all of my decks. Right. So and, and you know there's there's no shame in uh net decking. Obviously the meta stands for most effective tactic available, and if you're playing to win, you would often want to have the strongest decks at your disposal. Of course. Um so I think I think in a regular format, in something like normals or ranked in Legends of Rude Terra, just against random people, I think that the meta really um, is a good thing to follow. Um, but in a tournament like this, where people are playing non-conventional decks like your Snapfind deck or um, some sort of barrier deck that really isn't like a top-tier deck that many people are playing in ranked, um, I think it's it's not it's maybe not the best thing to follow and maybe there's some room for um, sort of like a variance. There's room for variance within, there's like everything has its own meta. So this tournament has its, uh, a known, its own meta. Sort of like barrier decks are more prevalent than in like ranked. And so I think while I, while I do follow the, the current ranked meta, this it's not ideal for right, this Right, I see what you're saying. There might be a little bit of uh, a couple of counters that people are running. I see what you're saying. But uh, we've got both the bands in here. Both Case and James have elected to ban the Sejuani decks of the opponent. James running Sejuani Swain and Case is running uh, Sejuani Gangplank. Both are banned, but we'll take a look at these decks here. We can start with James's Gangplank Anivia deck, which uh, we saw yesterday had good success. Uh, I do think it's a well-built deck here with uh, three Riptide Rexes on eight. Uh, so that's always coming down, and you really got to be scared for that. Uh, so James in the past has always said, like, oh, slow decks should always be banning... Um, should always be banning an aggro deck. So I really think that because both players aren't playing an aggro deck, that the Sejuani, um, Sejuani decks are both good to ban because they are um both relatively aggressive with some mid-range elements um i when i play against when i played against cases uh own sort of such one game playing decks it it feels like it's hard to deal with because of how effective uh bilgewater is in stealing and doing small points of damage but against another another sort of heavy uh heavy um uh, list like another sejuani deck um this sort of one one damage two damage is off parlay and uh make it rain don't seem very effective right that's a good point that uh uh, Bilgewater has a lot of tools not only to control the board early but also to keep gassing up with the nab package so I think that banning decks that put on pressure early is it's good bans. But we can move on here to the Lee Sin deck from James. This is a homebrew, I think his weakest deck. It's got a decent amount of anti-aggro and a lot of controly uh, removal spells like Thermogenic Beam and Mystic Shot, which I think are very effective in terms of controlling the board. As well as a Lee Sin leveled up late, late game uh, win condition where you basically just get four damage in and recall a minion every turn. Yeah, so I think... Um, I think Leeson is a surprising inclusion for this deck. He's sort of running the two, the two sort of secondary. Um, well, so he's running Vi. So usually you're pairing Vi with Heimerdinger. Um, Vi um, on a Heimerdinger turn, Vi automatically pretty much gets to ten because Heimerdinger is playing the zero cost turret. So I think uh, Leeson is a is a cool inclusion because. Um, He's sort of controlling the board in a different way. Um, I definitely I, I agree with you that it's probably not optimal because 
Um, both, you need to stick them both and sort of with Heimerdinger, you can, in, in response to maybe a kill spell, you can at least flash a brilliance a few times and um, get some additional like minion value. So um, I think that Leeson and Vi are like the secondary, if you're playing a control deck, they're sort of the secondary uh, champion that you would be playing. Um, right. I definitely where, think Lee Sin yeah. might not be optimal, but you know, as you were saying earlier, you bring in some screwballs here, some curveballs. People might not be expecting it, man. I don't know how to play against it uh, as opposed to some more meta decks. But now we can move on to some of Case's decks. We can look at his uh, Shen deck, which really there's not too much to talk about here. I mean, it's just a standard Fiora Shen. Uh, you have your win conditions with your getting your green glade caretakers really high. Uh, and then you can also win with Fiora. Shen controls the board mid game. And then you have your Brightstill formations and unyielding spirits to finish it out. I do think running four, eight, and nine cost spells is a bit heavy. Yeah, I think um, that this deck is very. It's, it's not like the other two uh, Shen Fiora decks that we've seen from one from Sky and one from Emma. Uh, it, theirs is very sort of spell based, um, trying to get a lot of value off Green Glade Caretaker with, with some one, two, and three drop sort of minions sort of around it. Mm -hmm. um, this takes a, a much more sort of uh, aggressive creature role uh, with the Grizzled Rangers and the the Laurent Pro Protege. Um, I think it's it's a good deck. Um, it might have some trouble sort of standing having the like so he just has a different win win con um, yeah yeah good point emma and emma and skies are very get green like caretaker to a hundred hundred attack right um, yeah he does have a lot more minions a lot more mid-rangey maybe stuff you don't expect to see normally with the grizzled ranger and lauren protege who don't have that much synergy with fiora and shen it's yeah. an interesting take on the deck but we can look at i think one of case's favorite decks his swain twisted fate deck um, this deck, uh, obviously you're running a lot of the staple Bilgewater cards with Make It Rain and Pilfer Goods and all those, but it's, there's also a lot of spells and a lot of draw trying to combo in TF if you can get that in, or you win with the late game Swain combo. Yeah, uh, of course he has the NAB package. If you're running Bilgewater, of course you're running a NAB package. Uh, Black Market Merchant plus Pilfer Goods is just too good not to run. It's just six cards out of your thing and it just... It adds so much value. Um, I, I, we've seen Monkey Idol do all right. I feel like it's a strong card against Oliver. I remember it got removed almost immediately. But if you can start getting the um, the Powder Monkeys out, it gets really strong, um, sort of letting it stick around. And the five health really makes it hard to remove. I think Oliver killed it because it had zero attack. Mm -hmm. So that, that made it easy. But... Um, if James isn't running any of those kill, uh, something with zero attack. In in theory, that would be kill something that was frostbitten, but for Monkey Idol, it rings true. Right, I agree that uh, Monkey Idol is definitely not the best card. It might not be the most optimal card, but I know Case really likes the card, and it can be really good for applying pressure early and getting your plunder procs off with getting some good value by summoning three uh, two ones turn after turn. But with, with that said, I think we can move on to the game here. If both of our competitors are ready, I just have to... This... Right, okay, we should be ready. I'm going to give the go-ahead to our two players here. Uh, ready. Right on. This is going to be a couple of pretty exciting matches, uh, I feel. Coming in, I, li I like both these players. I like both of the... Um, both the decks that they're bringing, uh, and I, I just, I think we're just gonna have to let the gameplay speak for itself here. Of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, so James starts with his Anivia Gangplank deck, and Chris, or and K starts with his Swain Twisted Fate deck. Now I don't know how much we've seen Swain Twisted Twisted Fate be played uh, so far this tournament. I think I banned it when I was going up against him. Yeah, I think I did as well. Mm -hmm. we'll Obviously, see. both are. Uh, playing a Bilgewater nab package in some form, so I think if you can get a nab or two off, that would be good here. Mm. 
Jazz um, with the turn one Jagged Butcher. That's good early for tempo pressure, here. Definitely nice. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, ideally, you play it with Plunder, but turn one, a turn one 2-2 two, two is just good. Yeah, it's quite strong. And here we see Case's hand is actually... Here's a uh, monkey at all. That might be good for him. But his hand is actually not that great. He does have the House Spider, which can help him stabilize the board a little bit. James is sitting on Make It Rain Parlay, which could definitely kind of do a full wipe here. But I don't know if he wants to use it on that. Yeah, I'm I think... Just looking at it, maybe increasing board. I know James likes to control sort of a little bit more. So he may just let the turn pass over and just save his spell mana so he mm. can do something a little bit. I think uh, he'll at least play Omen Hawk here because it's going to get that one drop out early. The later you play that, the less good it is. So he does end up playing the Omen Hawk. I think he'll just he'll probably... Mm, he can get a really good value block here into a Make It Rain next turn. Of course. Now, I don't know if Case is looking at this. Looking at his hand, he's probably going to just play a Monkey Idol, but James is going to be able to full clear here. Of course, it, he would be relying on luck to hit uh, both both one health minions and maybe hit Monkey Idol. Well, once. James is actually going to have the first action here, so he will be able to play it immediately. Case doesn't have any way to follow up, so yeah, he's going to kill all three of these and have the Plunder proc ready if he wants to play... Uh, uh, Pilfer Goods, which I think is good for him considering his hand size is looking small. If you can draw two cards off that, that's going to be really good. And Case running a, sort of a similar game plan, uh, mm. both with uh, if you can get the damage in from Leviathan with the Sejuani, that's always really good. And a, a second Maker Rain is never bad. Right, yeah, that was actually a really big plunder from James here. That means Case, more importantly, doesn't have the Leviathan to work with as a part of his team. Uh, the Leviathan works really well with Swain. Uh, James is considering making it right here, which wouldn't be too bad. It would deny the last monkey and save his Nexus 2 HP, but he opts not to. Instead, I think looking he's looking to play Yordle Grifter, right. yeah. Good call. I didn't even see that he drew that. And he does hit the Allegiance proc, getting a house spider. That's going to be good for tempo. Oh, but here Case has a really good uh, triple nab, um, discounting every card that he pulls, and he's going to have another one next turn. This is actually really big for Case. Yeah, of course you would have wanted to, on James's side, play your own pilfered goods with the Black Market Merchant, but um, a Case actually drawing um, two really strong cards out of James's deck right there. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Those are real and getting lower cost. Oh, this is a good make it rain from James, especially yeah, considering this is it, this is the ideal make it rain, honestly. Right, uh, I got all three minions, which is good. Case maybe wanted to have pilfered goods in response to try to get more value off the black market he, merchant, but he had to wait for his monkey to die so it would be plundered. Oh, I see what you're saying. I I think it's worth drawing two cards at full price than drawing one at a discount. Mm. Oh, and that's a decent one drop to pull if you want to put pressure on. Though it can't block here. And really, Case has no good blocks. Because if he blocks a 2-2, two -two, he's losing out on some attack. And if he blocks a 4-4, four -four, he can't kill it. Let's have, we yeah. have to see what he's going to do here. Yeah, Case's hand is looking a little awkward. Not as much removal as James's. He, he'll block the 4-4. Four -four. Uh, he could knock Shin Guillotine that. Uh, yeah, and I, th I think that that's a good play from Case, because if he doesn't block the 4-4, he brings his Nexus down to 9. And James has a Gangplank in hand, a Leviathan, a Warning Shot. He has a lot of direct damage ready to go. Instead, he's going to opt to kill the 2-2, bringing his Nexus down to 11. Yeah, and I think saving the Guillotine for something with a little bit of higher health, because Guillotine will kill anything with that's been damaged. So if you can get a Make It Rain on uh, the Leviathan, that might be coming up on turn 8. Um it's an easy kill for three mana. Right, right. I agree. And also, he he saves his mana uh, to play Wolf Rider, which had the Plunder proc. So Case is going to be up on the mana costs, although his hand doesn't have any big minions in it, unfortunately. But he's going to have a lot more mana to work with than James. This parley is actually super crazy. Oh three mana God. to or three damage to the Wolf Rider, and then three damage to James or to Case's Nexus is actually right here. Pretty insane. Yeah, and now Case, or James is sitting, he's just picked up another barrel. James is sitting on 
a Gangplank, a lot of barrels, a Warning Shot, and a Leviathan, he could just potentially try and burst down Case here. Of course. Uh, that Petty Officer definitely wasn't what you wanted to be seeing here. Mm -hmm. um, just a 1-1 one -one with Elusive and Fearsome. Another, I mean, it's summoning 1-1s, one or it's summoning a 1-cost minion. You can, I've seen Case roll high with the 4-3 Ephemeral, which was insane. Right, yeah, you, you get those kind of summons, it's good. I mean, obviously, two keywords is not terrible, especially considering what James got, but it's not optimal either. Both people going wide now, sort mm -hmm. of, just sort of building out. Um, but... See, looking at Case's hand, he can't really do much. I think this, I think this Noxious Fervor is going to fizzle. Oh, no. no, it doesn't. Wow. I've never seen that interaction before. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. Because you're, you're triggering the barrel to make it do four instead of three. Mm -hmm. and, but you're also killing the barrel. So, yeah. that, a that, weird that... interaction. But Case has definitely played this deck before and may have run into that interaction already. Mm -hmm, that's really good value. And I think that Case sees the threat here uh, coming from James and that his health is low. And he, he might be trying to put some pressure back on him, clear off some of these minions so that James doesn't have that kind of wide board state that he can swing around. But I don't know if it's going to... Obviously, James can get some good trades here. Yeah, and... Um, but little, little does Case know that... James just has a, a gangplank to refuel next turn. So uh, while those trades might have been nice, it's you sort of want to hold on to your hand. GP is very strong, and if Case can deal with it, Case actually just got a warning shot. So if he can warning shot Nox and Guillotine the GP, that would be honestly the best line mm -hmm. of play right now. I think yeah, make it rain. It's what you're talking about yeah okay okay yeah yeah that, that that would be good that would save him a little oh but it misses crucially um, the literally <laughs> the worst <laughs> that's the worst possible, because really. now he doesn't even get the plunder proc james is just gonna do this to uh make use of his barrel and put some pressure on case and now he's got another warning shot in hand and another barrel to be made james can just swing here with gangplank and it's 3-1 gangplank's gonna get in at least four damage and then he has the barrel and a warning shot for gg he says That's... no way to respond to this. Of course. Right, he's gonna have to try and get something out of uh, the nab cards that he has, but I don't think he could get anything that's gonna save him here. Well, James is just gonna warning shot and burst, um, hopefully next turn. And right. Just win. Yeah, and and Case draws the uh, black market James could warning right? shot burst right now. Actually. Right. Yeah, he can just win here. Oh yeah, because it's a burst spell. There's nothing Case can do. This is it. Yeah. Case is going to try and kill the Gangplank, but that's GG. We're going to be moving on to Case having an advantage here. Or to James having an advantage here. And of course, James coming in is a favorite for this match, for this whole tournament, really. So Yeah, you can't be... It's, it's really no surprise. You can't be too shocked at it. I agree with you. Uh, now James has to win with his lease and control, which I think is his weakest deck. But I think so, he still could yeah. do it. We might see Case take one game um, on this lease in control, but I don't know how good Case's other deck is against it. Right, yeah, the thing is, is that even if Case wins with his uh, Bilgewater Noxus deck, he still has to then win again with um, his Barrier deck, which he hates so much. Now here, James, yeah. has, <laughs> James has a Thermogenic Beam uh, early in the game, which is really good. I think it, it's a super flexible card. Also picks definitely. up a Will of Ionia. However, Case is playing sort of, uh, definitely a faster deck. Um, mm -hmm. Ideally, you would, James is keeping um, uh, Vi here um, in hopes to continuously power it up over the course of the game instead of um, playing it. Like, like you don't want to draw it because when you draw it, it's, it's a 2-5 automatically. Right, yeah. I, so you want to you want to be powering it up. Unfortunately, that's the weakness of this deck. Because if you're playing Heimerdinger in place of Lee Sin, you can sort of you can always mulligan a Vi because if you draw it during before your Heimerdinger turn, it will it usually will level up. And in this deck, you sort of have to power it up a little bit slower. Right. I still think that looking at both of the board states here i think james does have the advantage 
He can deny this and then use Thermogenic Beam if he wants to into his uh, uh, his uh, three cast spell next turn, which will get it going. And I think Case has all of these plunder mechanics that he can't activate here, which yeah, is it's, scary. Yeah, it's going to be definitely hard. Um, Twisted Fate is a is a hard champion to sort of block and get rid of, but against a control deck like James is running, it's sort of easier. James, or Case, does have this sway next turn, um, and he did draw a second, he had a second TF in hand that had turned into a pick a card. Right, and I do think dropping the Swain here is right, knowing what we know. James does have the uh, Will of Ionia to recall it, which would be bad for Tempo. Case instead goes for the TF. I think he's going to try and do the red card and do the plunder mechanics, but no. He goes for the Stun on Vi. Stun on Vi doesn't feel great here. I think you would... Ideally, it would have stunned and killed the Claws of the Dragon. Oh, no, hang turn. on, but Christopher has... Uh, or not, but oh, Case has Noxian a... Gigatine, and James has no mana to respond. Yeah. Um, definitely. That's actually a very good line of play. I yeah. did not see that. Yeah, good good C from, uh, from Case there. Now he's got his TF in play. Jeps has no more Vi to deal with the champions here. He does have a Mystic Shot, which really helps up against TF, but if he plays Mystic Shot, he can't play Lee Sin. Uh, it hopefully, like, ideally, Case gets to go off here with all of his plunder mechanics and ideally level up his um, Twisted Fate, um, drawing so many cards off of uh, Nab. Right, and I think that uh, here we've got a little bit of a... Okay. Ace was having some connectivity issues with the Discord, but yeah, he gets the he's gonna get the warning shot from the Yodel Grifter. Uh, at which point you can trigger your plunder effects. James opts not to use Mystic Shot this turn, which I think is probably a good play. Because oh, and he draws another one. Now this TF should not pose a threat. Case could recall it, but he could also in response burst a bunch of cards and right. hope for something else. Right, he could try, but instead he does none of that. That's kind of weird. Now I think he's looking to maybe play Swain this turn. Okay, that's a that's a good point. No, he's summoning a barrel here. I don't know. Is he gonna try and go for a kill on Lee Sin? I probably not. He doesn't really have anything in hand. James is gonna play his elusive unit. I do think that Swain is what Chris is or is what Case is looking at right here. The question is, will he play it? Uh, Lee Sin actually, um, there is one benefit versus playing Lee Sin over a Heimerdinger is that Heimerdinger is very easily killed. Nox and Guillotine, um, get excited, all one shots Heimerdinger, but Lee Sin's six health is um, very hard for some decks to get through. Right, and now Case actually plays his warning shot, which I don't, I don't think that that summoning the barrel. Uh, character this turn is actually what you wanted to do yes it gives you a little bit of a board state but i think that it just kind of goes to waste with a warning shot james still has 18 hp on the nexus in case it doesn't pose a threat so you do kind of throw that barrel away now i think uh, he's going to go for the preferred goods here oh, this no block actually might not be as good for james james might have wanted to pull out the uh yeah Pull out the black oh, market. Oh, wow. And Case actually not only deals three damage to Lee Sin, but he actually fizzles the spell also, so Lee Sin doesn't get barrier. That was big from Case. And Case can pilfer goods here. He could also Eye of the Dragon. Mm -hmm. He actually doesn't have mana for pilfer goods this turn, but he still does have that black market uh, dealer on the field for the pilfer goods he just draw another yordle grifter that's really good with the uh nab cards that are currently in play and we sort of we can look over at james's cards here and james is looking pretty destitute both of his champions were taken out uh and he's left with a little bit of draw that's super highly priced uh one three which can try and stave off some aggro but it's a bit late in the game for that uh he does have a little bit of cards, a couple cards that can get him gas, but the question is, will he find what he needs? Now, this doesn't really help by that much. Yeah, and Deep Meditation 
will get discounted uh, by two if if you've played two spells last turn. Unfortunately, James did not meet those conditions, so they will be at five mana, and they only draw two spells. So James will not be finding any gas off of this hand. Flash of Brilliance making the um, switcheroo card. Eye of the Dragon can sort of stave off something. James right. might look to play a, a deep meditation here just to try to get the the two one life steal right. dragon. Case is going to play the Leviathan here, unaware that James has a, a hextech transmogrifier in hand. He could use that to kill the Leviathan, but we do have to note that Case still does have two Swains in hand, and that Swain must be getting close to leveling up here after he's you know he's getting to the later portions of the game, and then it starts getting scary. Yeah, and Leviathan triggering that very quickly. We want to see James transform it into something else. This card is very difficult to use. We saw Oliver misplay it, misuse it one of the last matches. Um, the wording is a little weird, and you sort of got to pay attention, but James successfully transforms the 5-8 that keeps doing 3 damage into a 2-2. Two -two right. No yeah, and that Hextech Transmogrifier uh, is really hard to find value on because it actually doesn't hit champions at all. It can only hit followers. He draws two gotchas, which can help him maintain board uh, presence. But... And this 2-1 this life steal is going to help him sort of stabilize off mm -hmm. the health. Uh, Chaos could block with the 1-3, putting it down to 1 health. Um, but ideally, that's not what you would want to do. Right, I agree. I I do want to see Case drop a Swain here. I think letting James actually if Case drops Swain, it's just gonna get gotcha. I don't. This is a really hard match. I think for both players to navigate. I think both these decks are pretty high skill. Oh, he picks up a Plaza Guardian. That's pretty nice. Yeah, and Case casting so many spells this turn or this game really. Why are um, I th okay, so James is trying to play Claws of the Dragon in order to let Case have an extra turn so that he might be able to use both of his gotchas. I don't know if playing Claws of the Dragon straight up is ideally. I think you would want to play the gotcha at sort of um, discounted rate on the Yordle Grifter, and Case is going to take advantage of him not removing it with the... Uh, right. Just Keeping a large board presence. Yeah, James I, could could double gotcha now. Yeah, now here's the, where the double gotcha the starts coming into play. You get to kill the six six with quick attack. I'm pretty sure James was waiting for the Swain to come down to use gotcha, uh, which I think was a good play because if Swain comes down and James doesn't have an easy way to deal with it, it can start wreaking havoc. But I do agree, you do miss out on some value with the three two. You don't get your draw off. So we'll have to see how it turns out. James's hand is so small here. He does have that draw too, but I don't know if it's going to be enough against Case's, what, eight cards, and he's holding a uh, discounted progress day. James finds the Lee Sin. That's nice. Lee Sin is nice, but I don't think it's doing much against a possible Swain turn this turn. He could also progress day. We're looking mm -hmm. for a trade from some... From Case is looking to trade some minions away to make room for either something off of Gotcha or Progress Day or this lady that makes barrels or even room for just Swain. Right, I agree. Now, James does get some good trades here, but you have to think James is in a really bad spot here because Case has two Will of Ionias, one of which is discounted and it's gonna take so long for that Lee Sin to stick on the board if case just plays swain here and starts out tempoing james he's gonna be in a really good spot even if will of ionia comes down oh here so comes... we're gonna see the roll it up Lee Sin. right but i think it's just gonna get will of ionia back into hand and then james is gonna have very low mana yeah will of ionia can be used in so many different ways but Case with 10 mana can Will of Ionia and then Swain, um, mm -hmm. or effectively swing. nullifying James's turn. Right, and now James has to decide whether or not he wants to cast Will of Ionia or his draw. Uh, yeah, if, I... if, if he wants to keep the discount on his draw two spells card, Deep Meditation. <laughs> right, he has to play it right now. He has to play it right now. Now, um, I, I think he's trying to give Case uh, time to exhaust his mana because i don't think he he wants to recall swain 
into Swain. into Swain again, right? Yeah. Um, that was Swain's ravenous flock that he played on the the one three to kill it. So he doesn't have a second Swain in hand. Right. Um, but James might may not have caught that one. So Yeah, we'll um, we'll have to see about that. The thing is is that James has no real way to kill Swain, he can only recall it. Right? Yeah, Swain's Swain's stat line is very strong against James. It's similar to Leaston's in that um it has very high health and a good a good amount of attack to trade into some of the low cost minions. So you can take a free trade here or there against some um, some of the board. Mm-hmm. I agree. And uh I do think that if James lets Swain hit the face, then that's gonna be about it. And speaks up another Shadow Assassin, I think Lee Sin is really his only out here. James does have another Will of Ionia, which I think he's going to have to use sparingly in order to stop Swain when it looks like Swain's gonna be getting through. Yeah, and he can use this Shadow Assassin to maybe draw, but it feels like Case has got it in the bag. Right. He just drew a Leviathan. He can replace the um, the elusive two one. He could replace it the two two or the three two. Yeah. Any of his cards, really. Yeah, I agree, and I think that with that Leviathan draw, Case definitely just has too much for James to deal with. He's also sitting on the progress day to gas up even more afterward, and I think that at this point it's basically GG. I don't see any way for James to win this game. Yes. But he is going to fight it out. Maybe with some tricky Lee Sin plays, he's going to get some good recalls, good damage into the Nexus. Case is debating over what to play. He does decide to play the Leviathan. Draws another Swain, which is going to be beneficial toward him. And now if you don't deal with that Leviathan, James's units are just going to get permastunned. So I think you have to recall the Leviathan or Swain here, otherwise you're just going to lose the game. James plays Shadow Assassin. He's still going to have enough mana for Will of Ionia here afterward. And I think the Clause of the Dragon won't trigger, but yes, he's going to Will of Ionia, and he chooses the Leviathan. Because Leviathan. You if, you, if you block the Swain, it's, it's a Nexus Strike to deal three damage, so you're sort of hoping James can challenge something out just to sort of whittle down Case's board. Mm -hmm. and he's, he's actually, actually pulling out the swain right. so swain he doesn't so swain couldn't just attack next turn right and exactly. it would actually recall the swain mm -hmm. it will with... and you'll get actually a decent amount of damage in case is set to four and suddenly it's a lot closer than we thought we didn't see this line i think i forgot about lee sin getting challenger off of the uh will of ionia now case still does have a lot of cards in hand he has the attack chip he's in a good spot here we're going to have to see if he can make it happen. Well, Case can just... I think Case is looking to just attack with um, Swain here just to get off the stuns and the damage. Um, James could find something crazy off this Deep Meditation, maybe another Will of Ionia. You would have enough mana only going down to five. That's mm -hmm. what he's going to do if you can sort of slow it down. But that doesn't look like it's going to do much. Well, You can... Mystic shot and sort yeah. of take out James's other minions, but if this Swain just Nexus strikes, he wipes essentially all of James's. Board. Right. The thing is, is that all James has to do is block the Swain, and suddenly he's got enough burn to set Case down to one and two elusive units on the field, which Case only has the Will of Ionia to deal with one. Also, if you keep Lee Sin on the board, it's going to get a free uh, Dragon's Kick. So I think James is actually going to take it. This is insane. Right, yeah, I mean, I guess this is the disadvantage of Swain, is that if you have blockers, he's really just a 4-7. Well, uh, James, or Case does have this Revenous Flock, um, which will take care of the Lee Sin, actually. Mm -hmm. Fast, for damage, if if the Lee Sin is damaged, so... Um, right, I think... Right, that's true. But... Yeah. But the thing is, is that he's... Oh, James has another Shadow Assassin, too. He's got even more, and Case has no board wipe here. And there's the second Lee Sin, so I think Case will look to... Oh, never mind. Case is looking for something. I think he knows that if he doesn't find something good here, he's going to just be straight dead. He's going to go for the Flash of Brilliance. Maybe he can pick up a Ruination or something. Scrap Shot isn't terrible. It's removal, but it's so high cost. For such little value here, he is going to go for the kill on the Lee Sin which will connect. Little does he know that 
James just has drawn a second one. Right. I mean, he's he's got a second Lee Sin. He's got a lot of burn and more draw in hand. Honestly, I think Case is going to pass, and James is just going to full swing with... Oh, no. Hang on. I mean... Okay, so Case does have a way of dealing with two of the elusive units here. He has a recall next turn as well, but James can just... Case... Right. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll find out. <laughs> oh, James just drew enough burn to finish it. Actually, yeah, and he can't get any lifesteal value. He's going to go for the Will of Ionia here. And, um... Recall that unit. He doesn't have enough mana to also cast Scrap Shots, so these, one of these Elusives is going to get in, and then James just has... Uh, Mystic Shot for face. Yeah, he has Mystic Shot and two Static Shocks afterward. If that doesn't work out, I think this is just it. Yeah, Casey's is just going to lose. He's going to summon his Dreadway Deckhand, but James is going to Mystic Shot and finish it off. Wow. I really thought Case had this one in the bag, but James with some slick plays... Uh, on a turn that really mattered with the Lee Sin recall coming in clutch, he's going to take the series do well. Yeah, I think Lee Sin, Lee Sin, because he's not meta and because Case might have not been able to practice against it or maybe not completely understand the lines of play that are possible with Lee Sin, um, is an advantage that I think James is taking um, in strides. Um, yeah, that was a that was a really well played match for James, and I think we got to see that even with two decks that might be suboptimal, um, he he's still just a really high power player. He knows how to play the game. He knows how to play around others, and he knows how to swing when it matters. He knows you know how to take down the other guy right before he dies. Yeah, James was very excited to play in this sort of tournament and i know he put a lot of practice into all of his decks and he's been playing uh legends of runeterra since beta so i think james's experience coupled with his his um expertise in strategy card games with uh, a past in hearthstone and magic the gathering uh sort of helps him strategize better than others all right I, I couldn't agree more i think we're definitely dealing with a really high caliber player here but our next match is actually going to be you versus sky i believe how you feeling about that one um sky's lists are very um they originally like looking at them they didn't seem that strong of course uh but i think that because of the nature of my decks, my decks are all feel they feel very slow and they don't go as wide as many others. And I don't have like a, a mid range sort of strategy like she does. It feels like all of her decks feel very mid range and I have no real way to sort of spread out against them. So I think it'll definitely be difficult for me to pull it out. All right. Well, uh, I personally going to wish you the best of luck. We're going to say goodbye to Christopher here. Uh, as James and Case come come back, uh, Chris, it's been good casting with you. Of course, thank you. Yes, thanks for coming on. All right, and welcome back, you two. Uh, hey. I'm sure there's going to be some choice words here. Hey, some fun games. Some clo actually really close games, I would say. That, you, even both of them. That second game, we really thought Case had you, but you found a really good line with the with the double recall on both of Case's big units. Yeah, definitely. Which saved your skin, for sure. Yeah, my my, un my deck, that deck really excels against anything that plays minions that are cost more than five, because they play them, you recall them, and they can't replay them. Mm -hmm. Well, I gotta say, I feel pretty unlucky there. Um, I did pill for both of his Will of Ionias, so I have to say, I was playing my odds a bit <laughs> yeah. um, that he wouldn't have yeah. another one. I think right. you, you played it right, uh, but I, had, I, I think I had what I needed to barely scrape myself over the end after that. That early Noxian guillotine on my Vi really put a stop. And the Noxian uh, fervor against my Lee Sin. That was a sick play. Okay, cool. And so now, I mean, we're going to be moving on to our next match of the day, which is going to be Chris versus Sky here. Mm -hmm. How do you guys feel about this? Well, th first of all, who, who wants to step into the casting seat? So after this game, it's going to be Case versus Oliver. So, yeah, Henry, you would be commentating three in a row then if you do this one as well. Uh, okay, I can get out of your... If, no, if you, if you want to keep going, if you're fine with that, then by all means, I would, I'm cool sitting out but uh just just wanted to give you all the info that we have to let right. you know right yeah well uh here you you step in i won't okay yep all righty then henry is leaving for this match he will be back when case plays his elimination match against oliver later today 
Um, for now, we have a match lined up here. Um, Chris versus Sky. Thoughts, Case? Well, I have to say this is a little bit of an interesting one. You expect kind of strong play from both of them. Chris has those uh, net decks that we've been talking about all tournament, very strong in the meta. Um, and Sky has really been surprising with the amount of plays that she's been able to pull out with the decks that she's made herself. Um, so I, I think we're going to see an interesting uh, contrast that maybe Chris talked about in his cast just now, which is uh, kind of homebrews versus net decks. And um, will Chris maybe be caught off guard by these sort of unconventional... Um, builds. Yeah, we're going to have to see. I mean, again, I think that there was a ton of strength shown from both Sky's Darius deck and Sky's Elise deck. Um, but that, that Shen Lux barrier deck is just still, is, it's, it seems like it's this thorn in Sky's side that she just hasn't been able to shake off yet. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think we're going to have to see what Chris winds up banning uh, because that, is, that, that might tell like how the matchup is going to go. I'm going to let him know that he needs to get his ban in here. Well, if I'm Chris, I'm thinking I'm probably pretty scared of this aggro deck, just like everybody else has been. Um, obviously, the Shinlux maybe plays uh, too slow for to be able to deal with his um, elusive aggro, and I think the aggro deck is very strong against deep, probably. I agree. Um, I think we're just... Uh, okay, yeah, we have it in Chris is banning Sky's Darius deck to no surprise. Again, that's a very powerful deck, and we saw the way that she was able to pilot it. Sky is going to opt to ban Chris's Vimerdinger Control, which I think might be his strongest deck and the one that he's the best at playing, personally. Yeah, absolutely. I think he may have given that deck a little bit more attention. It plays more to his strengths, possibly. Um, that's just uh, speculation, of course. But And I also think that it's probably the best deck against her kit, um, I think Nautilus might have a, a tough time here dealing with the Elise deck, especially with some early possible aggression from Sky. Um, but again, we'll have to see how the Shin Lux performs. I, th I mean, it's it's kind of her weakest deck, I think we've all been saying, but if she can get that curve out, then maybe she has a chance. Yeah, I agree. Uh, with that, let's hop into some of these deck analysis, starting with Chris's Elusive's deck, which I had some very stern words about last time, the way that he was piloting this. Um, it seems like he was using the recall he, he, with this deck. I've never played this deck, and I haven't really seen it played that often. But it seems like to me, you never really want to be playing your recall units when you actually have minions on the board. I think that that sacrifices so much tempo. And last match against Henry, when he was playing this, he like played that four three. It bounced two of his units, and then the four three just died, and Henry was able to completely take over the game. I would like to see Chris focusing more on tempo in those first three first four turns and then transition that well into burst looking to get the imperial Demoli demolitionist on the crimson disciple getting those noxion fervors out for good value and being able to take out the game with decimates absolutely there is some value with the um with the recall uh with the card draw if you're playing that shadow assassin you attack with it it hits for two and you recall it again then you get another draw next turn uh, which can help to be sort of your fuel because obviously with aggro decks you do tend to run out of fuel every once in a while that's why i've seen uh sometimes in the pnz noxus aggro they include static shock as that engine for draw um, and in this case, it's no different. You include recall so that you can continually draw the cards that you want to be drawing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Um, I think we're just going to have to see if Chris is able to get the right draw and actually able to pilot it, I think, a little bit better than last time. Because after reviewing some of those games, I definitely see if he played a little differently, he could have had Henry, especially when he was playing some of those weaker decks. Mm -hmm. Moving on, let's look at Chris's deep deck. This is going to be the first time we see this one, I believe, in the tournament, unless we saw it at the end of yesterday. I We did see Chris's deep deck go up against Oliver's deep deck, Okay, I believe. Something like that. I think I think we did see it in the, in the Oliver matchup, but this deck is... Uh, again, a little bit unorthodox from other sea monster decks in that it's running Lure of the Depths to get that earlier pre-deep power. Um, and I expect it to perform pretty well against Sky's decks. I don't... Well, against Sky's Shenlux deck. Against the Elise deck, it might be able to get swarmed out. If he can't find the Tornitote or the uh, Dreadbloom Wanderer, then he might just die to an, an early game Elise or the mid-range pressure of the 
Hakarin, but if this deck can go deep, it definitely has a lot more staying power than either of Sky's decks that she's playing. Mm -hmm. And if he can make it to that round six with three spell mana, Ruination could become a significant player. Uh, you know, if Chris doesn't have that much staying power on the board, or even if he has a Dead Bloom Wanderer out, he can play that Ruination, heal his own Nexus up, and wipe out whatever wide board um, Sky might be playing with. Yeah, and it goes right through Barrier as well, so that card is going to be clutch in that uh, matchup, and it's good against those, because the, remember, Sky isn't running a lot of death effects in her Elise deck, so it'll be good to completely wipe the board on those deck, uh, w against that deck. For now though, let's move on to Sky's Elise deck, which she just saw, we, we just saw her completely take out Henry with this deck. Now, I, I think Henry's deck may have been a little bit weak after seeing it play a few games, but what Sky managed to do is, even though her They Who Endure was pretty weak, we saw it swinging with Hecarim, uh, put in a ton of pressure and work and the scar mother vena actually came out totally clutch in those matches if she can get an elise on turn two gets those myths those mist wraiths those mist callers and get into that mid game i think she has a lot of power yeah and i think um the strength that's evidenced by that scar mother vena is she has a really good top end in this deck um i i feel like you know we've talked about maybe it's weaker because she doesn't run that many ephemerals with the hecarim but she doesn't necessarily mind so much if the hecarim dies because of that rekindler in this deck um, so it's possible that she's aiming for top end, and then she has those mist wraiths, mist wraiths for some mid game pressure, some mid game staying power on board, and then obviously just the um, the Shadow Isles control package with Vile Feast and Black Spear. She does lack grasp, of course, but mm -hmm. I'm sure she has a good re reason for not including that. Yeah, uh, Henry and I actually talked a lot about too much top end yesterday, especially when we were commentating on Emma's matches, where she sees she seemed to only be drawing her top end, and that's unlucky, of course, but. That's also one of the weaknesses of including so much top end in your decks, is that sometimes they float up your hands and sometimes you just can't get the curve to survive or put on the pressure against those more mid-rangey aggro, aggro or even control decks that are able to, when they get into the late game, just get more value out of their cards and wind up winning the game through that. So For sure. So we might see a couple Desperation Glimpse Beyonds to try to draw that lower end. Yeah, I, I think this deck, she, we've seen some pretty good draws, and I'm hoping that it continues to draw hot, because this is a fun deck to watch, and I, I want to see it go further. Uh, next, oh, next up we have the Shen Lux deck that has been proven very weak. Um, not only I think the deck list is a little bit weak, but also the way that Sky has chosen to play it. She seems to not put that much value, she, in the past she has not put that much value on the Emerald Awakeners to keep her in the game, as well as not trying to go wide into those Scythia or Bright Steel Formation turns, and because of the early game decision making, she just gets killed before she can get to that wide, get to that even turn 10 where her Emerald Awakeners are online to get her back into this game, where the Radiant Guardians are online. I mean, she clearly has a plan for this deck, but maybe not the most practiced at it. Mm -hmm. And this deck is really one that wants to curve out, as we've discussed, but it only has uh, it only has three one ofs. Uh, usually, in a deck like this, you'd see Fleet Feather Tracker or something like that. Um, it has no four drop, and also it kind of forces her into an awkward mole. We saw in her last matchup that she kept the Scythia on Mulligan because it's the only copy of it in the deck, so that forces her to kind of include a little bit of top end in her very early hand there that might hinder her. Yeah, it's just, it's it's a mid-range deck that doesn't have those big finisher tools. It's lacking that um, bannerman that the deck is typically named out of to help get a lot of value out of those early wide boards and instead running this barrier package that just has not been doing enough in these games. We saw it take one win out of the, I think, four games it's played now just because she had double Green Glade Caretaker and managed to pick up barrier card after barrier card. But that seems like the only win con in this deck, aside from getting incredibly lucky with her draws and getting Scythia on six, Bright Steel Formation on nine, start healing up with those Radiant Guardians. But it's going to take some piloting that I don't think that we've really seen from Sky so far this tournament. I agree. And also, uh, something to think about, she has barrier options, but she it's, it's kind of weird how she's been using her barriers. I feel like she needs to use them a little bit more effectively, a little bit more surprisingly and more defensively um, to keep some of her critical units alive um, and not use them necessarily on other less value units. Yep, I agree. Let's see if she is able to turn turn this deck around going into this matchup versus Chris, who has proven to be a pretty, uh, you know, a, a challenger in, these, in that match against Oliver. And... Honestly, I, would, I want both of these players to be moving on, so regardless of who wins, I'm going to be excited and I'm going to be devastated because I don't want to see either of these players leave at this point. Absolutely, especially after Sky's upset with Emma yesterday. Mm-hmm. I would like to see her go far, but 
Yesterday, all day I was expressing that I wanted Christopher to put in a little bit more work in terms of piloting these obviously very powerful decks that he wound up bringing to this tournament. Let's see if the players can give us a nice match here. I've given them the go-ahead, so we are waiting for them to get started. Looks like Chris might be playing his Elusive deck first, trying to go under, but I think that this Elise deck is going to do pretty well against these Elusives if, if Chris continues to play it the way that he's been playing it. It's certainly her best chance, I think, uh, out of the two decks that she has available to her. The problem she's going to run into, uh, again, with that lack of Grasp of the Undying in the control package, I don't think she has a lot to deal with um, those uh, two health and three health Elusives. Yeah. I agree. She has the Black Spear, obviously, but Vile Feast, which is only a two of, by the way, just isn't going to cut it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've, you've got to think that this elusive deck is going to be powerful against both of, both of Sky's decks, excuse me, and ultimately she might just concede to losing to it here and then trying to get a 2-0 against Chris's deep deck against it. Maybe it doesn't, man it doesn't manage to get deep. Chris... With a strong one into two play here, gonna be starting the smackdown early. What do you think Sky's game plan is here? Do you think that she should try racing without those typical control tools to clear these elusives? I mean, she does have a lease into the fearsome two, three two spider. Yeah, I was gonna say I think it might be an intelligent play to play that elise uh, on turn two here. If Chris opts to go for the Legion Grenadier uh, rather than the other elusive, he won't have an answer uh, for that elise right off the bat. Mm -hmm. She does go for the three two fearsome here. Um, which uh, Chris could possibly answer with the Grenadier. Yes, that's what I'm thinking. I think that Chris, going into this, I mean, obviously he doesn't see the hand that we see, but he's expecting to kill Sky pretty early before he gets to that mid range. -y. Chris choosing not to play anything before Sky attacks. Now, I would have preferred to play the Legion Grenadier and trade it off with a 3 2. Well, what he might be thinking is if he plays the Grenadier this round, he loses some of that Green Blade duo value next round because that will become a 3 1 when he drops the Grenadier. Okay, and he's figuring that he doesn't really want to be playing the 2 1 now because there's no real point. Okay, yeah, that, you're right. That was his plan. He was waiting to get some value off of it. I still think that Sky's real win con in this game is racing. I hope that Chris sees that that might be a threat. Uh, I, I, for me, if I were Sky, I would hold up the mana, I would trade with the 3-1 and then use the Black Spear to take out that Green Glade duo, because that card is incredibly important to Chris's game plan, and just a really powerful card in general. Mm -hmm. Of course, the unfortunate consequence of that is then that opens up the Solitary Monk play for Chris. He doesn't mind recalling that 2-1, because it'll just become elusive when it comes out again. Yeah, and that 4-3... <coughs> It'll be really hard to deal with if Sky gives up this Black Spear. So he really should be attacking with the Grenadier here. Again, we're talking about he's not really getting on, piling on that early damage. Yeah, it seems like Chris is confident in his deck's ability to go late and continue to get in that elusive damage. He knows that Sky doesn't have a lot of super controly options. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, okay, I'm going to play this chill. I'm not going to let her overwhelm me by getting the good trades off. I'm just going to be swinging. Uh, with my elusives each turn to get the damage and then block with my non-elusives to stay alive. Yeah, and it's also possible that he sees that Elise coming out and he knows his Grenadier is the only answer to that. Now, one of the problems here is that Chris doesn't really have any plays. All of his minions are one health. He doesn't want to blow any of them away. He, doesn't, he definitely doesn't want to recall all of them. This might just be a pass from this Noxious Elite. I mean, it's very unfortunate that he didn't draw any playables here. Well, he, in, in lieu of this play, he could have gone for a little bit of a cheeky retreat, you know, block the Elise with the Grenadier. Um... Oh, never mind. I'm mistaken. He couldn't. Uh, he couldn't block the other two. Yeah, he did. He did hover over that solitary monk for a moment, which might have been a play just to block the Elise, because he can only get one block in this round anyway. And he just realized that he can't block those three twos with his two ones. And like I was saying, Sky is going to be able to effectively race this deck with this powerful Elise start. She has no way of saving her Elise, which is good news, because Chris does not want that Elise to upgrade and give all of those one ones fearsome. Um. But, okay, he decides to recall. Okay, so he is letting the Elise stay alive here. He doesn't have a way of killing the Elise after this. I think this is a huge mistake from Chris. He's trying to save his Grenadier, but... And the Elise will level next turn because of this play. Exactly. Sky choosing to not have her Elise level, instead looking to get in that face damage. I don't think that she realized that Elise would be leveled here if she just let that spider stay alive. I, I honestly think that that's a little bit of not so... Not very smart foresight from Sky. Well, it's possible that she's looking at this Wraith Caller and she's saying, you know what, I got this if I just hit face. Mm-hmm, and she also realized that that 
Sending one of her units to Ephemeral, now that Chris wasn't letting that Elistai activated the Black Spear to kill one of his only elusive units. And the transfusion wouldn't even work. Well, he could transfuse to kill his 2-1 to save his elusive unit. No, it wouldn't have saved. It's a... It's oh, a it deals three. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So Chris is just... He's down on health. He's down on board. We're seeing, again, the same situation. Chris choosing to not focus on tempo and not attack is really biting him in the butt in this matchup. I... I just am really concerned about the way that he's playing this deck. I think he goes from Monk back into Grenadier here, if he wants a hope. Mm -hmm. It's possible he tries again for the 2-1 elusive. I mean, Sky just summons a Mistwraith here next turn. She, if she blocks any, if she blocks any of this damage, then she can just summon another Mistwraith. Looks like Chris is gonna swing in for six. Now I would transfuse here for sure, just to get in that plus two damage, but he chooses not to. Chris bringing Sky's Nexus down to 9. He can survive this turn. And Chris can win this game next turn. Oh, he doesn't actually have another elusive unit. But he can twin disciplines on the solitary monk and then uh, sack the 2 1 with transfusion yep. if he wants. But he has to block here. Mm -hmm. And now, it is still lethal on board. He yeah, needs to use the Will of Ionia. He has Ionia. the Will of Ionia, one of the three twos. And then he would survive at 2. The only problem is that Sky then can Vile Feast the 4-3, forcing out Chris's Twin Disciples, which he needs next turn for that lethal setup that we were talking about. Looks like Chris is thinking about just Twin Discipling to save one of his minions? Or maybe kill the uh, Mist Caller. There's only one line of play that, Chris is, that saves Chris from lethal here, which is the Will of Ionia on one of the three twos. Oh man, he's choosing to kill Skies. This, I mean, this is not what you want to do here. Chris is Chris. Doesn't, yeah, he threw away his lethal. Yeah, uh, he it's also. Po it's possible he can still have it with Grenadier. No. That's well, a big right. problem is he also threw away his protection. He knows Sky is running Drain One, and now Sky can just. Oh, Sky is choosing to kill the Five One instead of. The elusive unit, this could give Chris a big break here. Well, I think Chris can have lethal next round. If he plays the Green Glade duo, he drops the Grenadier, and then he transfuses one of his elusive units. That's two from the when Grenadier, the and then it would be six plus three, so nine for lethal. Well, this guy heals up to ten, but Chris has the... Um, well, nine plus two. Actually, yeah, so Chris well, has the Demolitionist in hand to, to get him over the edge here. Guy has no way of blocking these units. This, If Chris sees this line, he could be... In a good position to win this game. Well, he could. He, I think what he's looking at here is Grenadier, uh, Imperial Demolitionist on the Grenadier, and then you transfuse from the Demolitionist onto one of your elusive mm -hmm. units. And honestly, if I'm Sky here, I think you want to glimpse beyond one of these one ones. You don't need to. You don't need that Wraith Collar. It's not going to be a good blocker, and you're losing value. Glimpse beyond, and then draw. See what you can find. Maybe you find a Black Spear or something to help. And it looks like that might be what she's doing, but she doesn't save up mana for the. Blackspear, instead of opting to draw last, a bit of a rookie mistake, you always want to draw first. And if she picks up a black spear here, that could be potentially game ending. The Oblivious Islander and the Rekindler. The Rekindler will bring back a non-leveled up Elise. And if she casts this Islander on the Ledger, that's a smart play, but it won't be enough. It's mm -hmm. too little too late. Now, let's see if Chris spots that he has lethal here. Oh, and she's gonna cast it on the I mean, I don't think that it really matters here. Either Chris is going to win the game this turn, or he'll lose it next turn. Well, it doesn't matter, of course, but I think we're getting kind of a glimpse into her brain if she, uh, you know, and she does reduce its cost. Mm -hmm. A little bit helpful. Yep. Ledros goes down to eight. Chris draws Solitary Monk, so he has lethal setup, and Sky doesn't have anything that she can do about it. He plays the Legion Grenadier. Now, you want to Imperial... You, you could Imperial Demolitionist first. Return this guy just opted to play a 4-4. Four, four. Yep, let's but see. But that Elise is going to get... Uh... Yeah, it doesn't come out. Chris sees it. He's going to... Yep, that's the play. Very smart. Yeah. And she's out of mana. Yeah, and Chris just has lethal here. He doesn't even need to transfuse. And I think you're seeing the strength of this elusive deck even after a couple of very you know, sus plays. Chris winds up going up 1-0 against Sky here. I'm honestly a little bit surprised to see that. Because um, I felt like that, Eli that Elise deck was really picking up steam, but... It was looking great at the very beginning, and you have to wonder, uh, 
could she have won this game if she didn't use Mark the Isles on the Spiderling? Yeah. Her get... Elise would have leveled, she would have had Challenger units to deal with as elusives. Mm-hmm. Exactly, yeah. Granted, that Black Spear was pretty big, but obviously that's something that you should be thinking about. And Sky chooses to keep a Vile Feast in hand against this deep deck. I'm not sure if that's right. You don't really have anything that you want to be Vile Feasting early. Oh, I stand corrected. The Draw Challengers means that that keep might be correct, especially if she plays Elise turn two. And I think uh, maybe a little bit of a bad mulligan from Chris here. He uh, did mulligan that away that Jettison. Mm. Uh, he did mull away Maokai. Not necessarily a priority to get out, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe Chris is just thinking that against this deck, he's not gonna be able to go deep before he's dead unless he has some sort of control tools like the Grasp of Undyings that he's been picking up. Let's see what he plays here. He just opts to just straight up grasp the Elise, which is you know, he could have played the draw challengers, but that would have died to the Vile Feast, so it winds up being right here. He heals up to three, and Sky is going to be, I think, realizing that this Vile Feast is not going to get a lot of value, so she chooses to cast it on her own at least to summon a Spiderling just to try and keep up that pressure. Well, I think it's a little bit of a mistake here from her to sacrifice a, a good control card, especially against Jaw Hunter. Uh, or no healing, just for a spider -like. Yeah. She spends two mana there on a 1-1 one, one spider -like. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you've got to... Yeah, that, that, I don't know if that is right. Um, she can summon a Mist Collar here. I mean, the good... That also, there's a little bit where it gasses up her They Who Endure a little bit. But... Oh, she misses the Mist Wraith trigger. And she swings... Okay. This is this is not looking good for Sky. This, you might see an, a very early victory from Chris here. I feel like that if she had something to deal with this draw hunters, this game could be very different. And she picks up something that she can't even play, and she has no way of getting her black spears ready. Chris meanwhile just gets to swing draw a card. He has double jettison to get deep. On the bright side, Sky can play Hecarim and go right into a they who endure. But I just don't know if that's going to be enough. She also has the Atrocity in hand. Which is, I mean, some pretty decent damage. Oh, and the Rekindler. Well, the good news for Sky is that she's going to have a really powerful couple turns here. She has a lot of 7 drops going into turn 7. Plus those Black Spears that are going to be triggered from this... Uh, Hecarim summoning units that'll die. She's going to get damage through the Hecarim. I mean, with this Atrocity plus the... Uh, they who endure in hand and almost a full board here that are, that's going to be probably getting cut down. And I think Chris should be looking at Deadbloom Wanderer. He's going for the salvage, but if he blocks the Hecarim with the Wanderer, he can then Vile Feast it to kill it off. Yeah, how close is Chris to deep? He just hovered over it, but I wasn't looking. He's 14 away. 14 away, so he, can, he can't get there this turn, but with the... He has essentially 12 toss, or 13 toss and 2 draw in his hand. I don't think he wants to be dropping the Wanderer. I mean, the, the Jaw Hunter is, is a fine play as well. Uh, however, it will lead to him taking more overwhelm damage from the Hecarim. Yeah. Unless he chooses to block like this. Maybe he he can't get deep. And that elusive unit... Okay, so he's, he's, he's deciding, okay, this is... The way that I'm going to be losing this game is if I get low and I get Atrocity, right? Uh, he wants to take out that Hecarim, and, and he wants to preserve as much life as he can. But I think the better way to do that would have been to play the Wanderer. No, I agree with you. It looks like he's hovering over it now and realizing the mistake that he made. And Sky going to Black Spear, the Draw Hunters, to just get it out of the way. Now, I, I believe this is a good play. There aren't that many good targets to hit with the Black Spear. This life steal that Chris is going to have might just seal the deal, though. I feel like... Oh, the second Hecarim and Rekindler... Okay, Sky can just swing in with Hecarim turn after turn after turn here with the attack chip, pump up the They Who Endure, and get ready to kill Chris with an atrocity. The only problem is Chris has a Ruination, which will be able to kill that They Who Endure if he has mana for it. But it looks like he's hovering over it, ready to use it next turn. Which might be a bit of a mistake here, knowing what we know about the hands. If Chris lets the attack go through, then casts the Ruination, that's going to be his only way of really killing off one of those Day Who Endures. He's out of healing. 
opts to swing in here. I don't think this is right. Sky can just block with every Kindler. Chris doesn't have any way of pinging that off. And now he's, he's missing the blocker against all of this damage coming through. And she'll have... 14 on board attacking, I believe. Yeah, Chris can obviously... Okay, Sky needs to swing here she before playing first. anything. Yeah, there we go. Sky opting to swing with a Hecarim first, which is also very intelligent. But it's possible we see Chris try to make the same play that he made against Oliver, which is the, the Ruination bait, and if Sky is smart, she might just pass that off. Yeah, I mean, if... Wait, hold on, is Sky... Chris is gonna be almost at... If Sky has enough mana to atrocity, this Hecarim off in response to the Ruination, and just win this game. Just completely steal it with this Hecarim plus Rekindler combo. Chris casts just, Ruination. If she sees this. Yeah, she, if she just needs to see that atrocity is lethal, and she does, she's hovering over it. Casting it, targeting Hecarim, targeting Chris's Nexus. And honestly, this deck from Sky is proving to be so incredibly powerful, tying up the series 1-1. The only issue is she now has to play her Shen Lux deck against Deep. I think Shen Lux has some strengths. Uh, if you can get good face damage in before Chris goes deep and before he finds that Nautilus, um, I think it really has a, a good chance in the early to mid game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, your barriers counter his grasps, which are really the only way of removing, and, and the Jaw Hunters, which are really the only way of removing the minions. Uh, that Sky is playing if she gets some Green Glade Caretakers, but we're gonna need to see a really aggressive mulligan for some 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 of those early cards here because as we go into the mid and late game, as Chris gets deep, this deck has no answers to that. And Sky has a Green Glade Caretaker in her opening hand. She chooses and she gets the Bright Soul Protector with the turn two attack chip. That's a pretty mm -hmm. strong combo. Yeah, Chris plays the Dredge Judgers, which is good for him. It allows him to stave off their damage, but seeing both the Grasp of the Undying's tossed, those are the only two Grasps in Chris's deck list. And now Sky is gonna be able to just go off with this Green Glade Caretaker. Chris has no real way of dealing it, no real way of dealing with this Elusive until he plays his own. You're covered. I mean, if Sky can keep picking up barrier minions, or barrier givers, then she's gonna be in a great position this game. Chris choosing I think Chris should chump block here. I agree. Six face damage, I don't think, is something he can afford to, to lose right now. Yeah, and the Judge Judges really just isn't getting anything else done. Obviously, he could hold it back for future chump blocking, but... And that's not a good draw for Chris. He doesn't want that Ruination right now. Obviously, he can go for the card draw. That's good for him. Uh, I'm going to think that that Ruination is actually not so bad for him. If he can get to turn 6 here, he's going to be in a really good position just to reset the board. The hands I'm looking at right now, I don't think it comes to turn 6. Yeah. And Sky is going to have the attack chip, so she's going to get a swing in right away. And there goes two of his Jaw Hunters. Those are two of his low-end cards. He's going to be really hurting for blockers here. He might even mm -hmm. have to end up blocking with Maokai. So Sky is going to choose to key Guardian here so that next turn she can buff up her unit instead of just playing the 3-2 to swing. No, or the 2-2 to swing. I think he really wanted to just play that 2-2. Especially knowing that Chris has Maokai, so now it's going to be a lot harder for Sky to swing in against this Maokai to get it, to get in a lot of damage. So I'm wondering if she swings first or if she plays the Bright Soul Protector. She will go for the swing. Okay, I think that's that's really smart by, by Sky just to swing. I, I also believe that she may have wanted to play out that elusive minion last turn just to get two more. Let's see if that two damage matters. I don't know if it's right to play the one with Barrier here. You do buff up your Green Glade Caretaker, but at the same time, that Barrier is just going to waste. Now, this is a stage where I think we might see those saplings from Maokai putting in a lot of value. They can kill the caretakers, they can kill the elusive unit, um, and she doesn't have any of her barrier spells. Um, of course, she, she just, just picks one up. Just picks one up. So she can actually protect both of her Green, green Glade caretakers here this turn if Chris decides to play a minion, get the Maokai. He decides not to play an elusive unit. He's only going to get one sapling here. Now, I think what Sky wants to do is barrier her elusive unit that Chris is probably going to want to eat and uh, then cast Spirit's Refuge on whatever he, one he then decides to target but he's hovering over the Shadow Assassin instead. You can only play one card if you play that 3 drop and that is just not what you need right now. No, Sky! Play the Bright Steel Protector, target the Shadow Assassin. This. Oh man, okay so she plays... Okay, the Key Guardian is good. It gives her ways to, to spend another card here. And I think, actually, maybe lucky for her, he um, he goes for the Elusive, you know, that keeps her uh, Caretakers alive for one more turn to level up. Yeah, but honestly, those Caretakers, they're not going to be able to get in for a lot of damage. Uh, 
especially against this 1-4 and this 1-1 that are just gonna be able to block them. I really would have preferred to see the both the or an elusive stay alive here and have a full board that you can just swing with. And so she's just gonna swing and be ready to spirit's refuge. I think it might be smart for her to swing, because he will have that obliterate card, and he's probably gonna obliterate that 5-2 with barrier now. Or does he just cast the Ruination? If he casts the Ruination, that's gonna be a big mistake. Sky has three denies in hand, and she can get rid of this. Sky immediately seeing that she can deny it. She could have denied the... I think Chris just wanted to play the 6-6 six, six with Elusive. Now, suddenly, Sky can just full swing here. And of course, she doesn't have mana for that Spirit's Refuge, but it won't matter because both of these units have one attack. Yeah, Chris has to block the 9-9, nine, nine, which means... And he probably has to block the 5-5. Five, five, which means his Maokai will die. Instead, he's choosing to go down to 1. Against... Now the the good news with for no grass. The good news for Chris here is that Sky really doesn't have a lot of options in terms of pushing direct face damage. Now I'm wondering, can you deny the obliterate? Yes, yeah, you can. It's a skill. So Chris can only if he I think he needs to play Thorny Toad plus a six six here. Sky can just go on ahead and drop another elusive unit, and then Chris is gonna have to pass the turn over. She has both denies. She's hovering over both denies, realizing Chris really can't do anything. Sky might get a huge upset getting a win with the first game that she plays with this deck. Sky, I mean, she might move on to face the winner of Viewer Oliver in Loser's Semis. Chris goes for the 7 7 to devour. Sky can just deny this if she realizes that she can. And then she can cast through 2 2. Chris has nothing here. And this is certainly game. Yeah, Chris just has no way of responding to this. This is just going to be it. Sky doesn't even need to play a minion. I mean, she can just full swing next turn. And the 20 health to zero. Yeah. What we'll be seeing here. Sky opting just to pass, leaving up the mana for the deny very smartly, just in case Chris had something up his sleeves. And she's just going to drag out her minions, hit attack. Chris is going to let this happen, I, I believe. I mean, there's nothing he can do. Well, he is a fan of surrendering first. Now, that's interesting that he chooses to draw the sea monster instead of just drawing two first. He could have maybe... Oh my god, the third grasp gets milled. And Chris is crying. He knows that if he had those grasps of the Undying, this game would have gone differently. He's now milling himself out of the game. And he has nothing but Nautilus left. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And Maokai. And that's just it. He, he has no way of solving it. Uh, he, he passes the initiative over to Sky. Sky just has to hit okay, and yeah, that's it. Sky takes the series 1-2 against Chris. Uh, I, I mean, th I think that this is surprising. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was expecting Chris to win this with his decks, but especially after he got that win with the Nox Elusives, and he just needed to get one win with Sea Monsters, which I thought had a pretty favorable matchup, especially against Sky's barrier deck, but we saw the power of Sky actually going wide and playing around going wide against that deck. Well, I gotta say, this isn't uh, entirely unexpected for me. I kind of expected it this, to go this way. Um, I kind of talked about this. I feel like uh, both of her decks have significant advantages against deep here. Um, they're both early game to mid-rangey decks that deep maybe can't contend with until it goes deep. Um, and then she has, you know, some answers for those elusives, which uh, we saw in the form of Black Spear and the, and the Vile Feast. Um, and she can also simply out aggro it with the Elise Hecarim deck, which is exactly what we saw. Um, so well, I yeah yeah. That's true. So I think uh, maybe I'm a bit less surprised than you. I might have expected uh, this to happen. Yeah, I mean, personally, after seeing that the the Elise deck, obviously, it took a loss to the Noxus aggro deck. Surprisingly, Chris Chris managed to sneak a win there. But then after seeing it be almost completely, you, you got to say down and out against that deep deck. With no minions going to turn six, she finds the draws, plays Hecarim, plays Hecarim, attacks, gets the atrocity off. I am really excited to see this Elise deck compete. And with the Elise deck and the Darius deck both proving to be massive threats in this tournament, baiting bans, I, I just don't know if Sky is going to be able to be stopped here. Well, we'll see. She has to take a run through loser's bracket. Uh, she has to contend with me, eventually either you or Henry. Um... Uh, both with very strong decks, so yep. uh, we'll see how she does. Yeah, or Oliver, of course, if Oliver manages to eke out a win. We can't count him out quite yet against you. Yeah, Chris is a case of making a face. Um, so with that, we have our next match, Oliver versus Case. One potential issue is Oliver might not be ready to play. Oliver uh, gave us a text a little bit that he may be having dinner. So we have tried to get... 
Yeah, 550. Yeah, I know. I'm surprised. We tried to get in contact with Oliver, and we will let you know his response. As Go for it. Uh, Henry, did, were you watching that game? I was watching that game. That was very well played from Sky. Yeah, I mean, seriously. Mm-hmm. Do you want to uh, maybe give some thoughts that you had on the matchup? Well, I do think that Chris... Does have he does have some some stuff to learn about how to play elusives. I do think that you may have been in your in your calls too reluctant about recalling other units. I think that four three being on the board is quite beneficial, especially up against an elise, which you can block and live and then still remain on the board. But yeah, I mean, I I think very solid play. Other than that, from from both. Um, Competitors, I think Christopher's Sea Monster deck might be a little bit weaker than the standard set. I, I saw a lot of Lore of the Depths that were kind of no goes. I mean, yes, you draw a Sea Monster, but they just seem to slow down your progress so much, and they don't really help you stall either. Yeah, I agree. Um, we, I mean, we saw him go deep really early and still kind of fold under the pressure of Sky's wide style Demacia. Just almost now it's like a Demacia mid-range beatdown deck, honestly. Right, yeah, and as you were saying, mulling away, or milling, yeah, mulliganing away those Grasp of the Undyings really came back to bite him in the end. Because after Sky runs out of mana, she's got no way of protecting her low health units from the Grasp of the Undying, and you get to heal a little bit. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we did see Sky pick up three denies in a row in that game. Right. Like, those draws, I thought the game was just down and out, but Chris opting to play that, um... The uh, the one that kills all the minions. The nine right, the Ruination. The Ruination there. Um, a, a great play, if if it resolves, then you basically locked Sky out of the game, especially with her hand being kind of poor. But uh, when, when that deny came out, that was kind of like the death knell for Chris. He just didn't have enough mana, resources, or time to catch back up and build up a board that could defend against Sky's elusives. Yeah, and that's when you start to see how some draws might seem really bad. Like, if you have three denies early up against aggro, it's GG. But if you can stave off early aggression and have those three denies, you can basically just take away all of your opponent's mana, especially if you get the lead early, and just steamroll the game if you have that kind of draw. Yeah, um... I, I Honestly, I would love to see this deck a little bit more refined. Maybe you cut some of the clunkier cards may i honestly i i have not been impressed by the 2-2 two -two that gets plus four plus four at 10 mana right i think that that card is a little bit of a bait yeah i think this this deck wants to get a lot of early game power you know one bright steel formation fine maybe put in another Sithria so that you can curve out into that mid-range a little bit better fo focus down on a little bit more aggro maybe cut a deny mm -hmm. cut a purify and i think sky might have one of the most powerful uh, lineups brought to this tournament after seeing the Elise deck and the Darius deck both perform to great success. Right, yeah, and I did hear you talking trash on my uh, Quinn MF deck. I had two pretty bad draws today, uh, but we'll have to see when I go up against you in an hour or two uh, if that that shit talk can uh, really <laughs> come to fruition. Right, well, even yesterday against Chris's aggro deck, he could have um, knocked knocked your MF Quinn deck out if he had played it a little bit better. I want to say. Well, he didn't. So. Yeah. No. I, I. I'm just saying. I. I. I think maybe maybe you have been getting a few tough draws, but even with the good draws, it seems like it, the deck has its cracks. A little bit, maybe, but we'll have to see. I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to go up against you later. Yeah. Uh, still no response from Oliver. I guess that we're just gonna assume that he is not available to play right now. Unfortunately, we have a break scheduled um, after match 13, which we're going into match 12 now, but I think we're going to have to take a break here uh, and just hope that Oliver gets back sometime soon. He tends to take very long dinners, but we don't really have anything that we can do about it. No, that's correct. Yeah, I guess we would just have to uh, wait a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but if you are watching, you know, stay tuned for later when we, we return with our regularly scheduled broadcast. Mm -hmm.
Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Cool. All right. I'm going to go ahead and start the stream. Okay. All right, you guys, and we're back. Um, we are going to be starting this one with the Henry versus James upper bracket finals, I believe. Uh, is that correct, Chris? The winners bracket finals? Mm, it could be. I'm not sure. I think that's correct. And um, I know that the casters at the top left here say uh, it's going to be me and Emma, but we will have Chris joining us instead. Uh, Emma had somewhere to be. Um, so thanks for being here, Chris. Hello, thank you. So I do already have their the bans from each of them. Uh, James will be banning Henry's Yasuo deck, and Henry will be banning that Swain Sejuani, the infamous Swain Sejuani. Um, so let's go ahead and start talking about their decks really quick. Um, what are your thoughts on Henry's Quinn deck? Uh, I think it's, it's quite fast, and it gets wide really quickly, um, which I... Which I couldn't deal with, but I'm sure James will be able to. Um, War Chefs is a good card to be played. Just a two mana, two three. That's adding one damage and one defense to anything it supports. Um, surprisingly, like Island Island Navigator and Grizzled Ranger are both two really good cards, sort of on the mid game that make the board really hard to deal with. Uh, four toughness and three toughness sort of are hard numbers to sort of remove. Yeah, for sure. And I know that uh, when James was here on the caster's desk, he uh, was saying some pretty negative things about the deck. Uh, I think he sees some some weaknesses in it um, in that it doesn't necessarily have a lot of direct damage, so it doesn't necessarily have uh, the board clear when you need it. Um, so he uh, James might be pretty confident playing into this one. Yeah, I definitely think James is confident, but... His hubris could be the best, like, take the best of him, so... We'll have to see. And now we'll take a look at Henry's uh, ugly deck, that is the Snap Vines. Um, obviously, you know, as we've said in the past, this deck is, is pretty good because it has a number of win conditions. You know, you have the whole spider package, um, you've got some early face damage possibly with Professor Von Yip plus one drops. Um, including the Cask Salesman, which I think is a good combo. And then finally, you have the Wincon with Snap Vines. Uh, and also Maokai. Um, yeah, I think I think Snapvine is definitely a... It's not a meta deck, but I think it has some staying power. Definitely the first Snapvine turn is something that's important to try to deal with. Um, of course, you never want two Snapvines, but um, like in hand. But if Henry can resolve one, and have it stick on the board, he can always just blight a caretaker and make like four snap finds instantly. It's insane how fast the deck can close out on turn seven or eight um, if he gets the chip on uh, evens. So it's, we'll see, it has early aggression and a way to close out late uh, with control in the middle. Uh, one of progress day is a little awkward, but I think it's, it's good all around. Yeah, I think he might run into some trouble up against Lee Sin Control um, on that first Snapvine turn. Uh, it'll be in danger to Gotcha, to Get Excited, to Thermo Beam, uh, double Mystic Shot even. Um, but uh, I mean, if he if he can make it past that first turn and survive and, and stick on the board, then he should be looking good for the Snapvines. There are also some weird interactions where you can kill your own things with Vile Feast and um, quickly play something. Uh, Maybe a Jerry Rig. I know that Jerry Rig really in prelims got me because I was going to remove Snap Find with something, maybe a Thermo Beam, and he Jerry Rigged it and instantly got another Snap Find in response to me trying to remove it. So I think it in in response to removal, there's a lot of things that Henry can still do at low mana instantly on or on burst or fast speed that can. Um, keep a snap around where it seems like he shouldn't be able to. Yeah, 100%. Uh, 
Um, now we'll take a look at James's decks here, do a quick analysis. Uh, first up, his Gangplank and Nivea. A little unconventional, we're used to seeing Gangplank with Sejuani, usually when it's a Bilgewater and Freljord combo. Uh, what do you think of the deck that he built? Um, I definitely think he's... He's sort of like... You're sort of not ramping so much as... Like, you, you can maybe Wolf Rider, but there's not like a ramp package with like uh, Crystal of Aeon, so... Um, I think you're sort of you have a strong early and mid game and then you're finishing with Anivia, maybe trying to get a just Anivia by itself is just such a strong card if you can stick it and make it to enlightened which is 10 mana um so if if james can do that with the help of a wolf rider early or something i think there's a strong chance that uh, a late game Anivia um could do well it does not kill um, the Snapvine, though, so Henry still might have um, some agency in the late game if he can stick maybe four or five Snapvines. Um, and Nivea's biggest like selling point is having such high health and then also having to remove its egg, um, and Henry doesn't have that much sort of like double removal you need you need like six forms of double removal to deal with all three anivias and obviously you're going to want to be using removal early in mid game as well um so it's sort of hard to hold a double removal for anivia later mm -hmm. uh, so i think that this deck uh, with its plunder and nab package is just gonna wipe the floor yeah i i expect the same and then uh, last but not least, uh, James's lease in control that he built himself. Um, you know, I've said that this basically plays like Vi Heimerdinger, just with Lee Sen instead of uh, Heimerdinger, which possibly makes it a, a weaker deck, but it is kind of his pet card. So what are your thoughts? Um, I definitely prefer Heimerdinger and Vi over Lee Sen and Vi. Uh, I just feel like... Um... Hold it. like it's very hard to level up Vi in this deck. I don't think we've seen James do it once in this whole tournament, but um, Vi with Heimerdinger is definitely much easier. Uh, Leeson is um, it's a good include, I think. Um, it protects itself with its own barrier and it has uh, three more health than Heimerdinger. Um, and Evolved, it has four more health, so I think it's definitely harder to remove than Heimerdinger. Um, and it has definitely a higher skill ceiling. Uh, so we'll see how it works out. Um, yeah. All right, we'll have to see here. I'll go ahead and tell our players to ready up and we'll get into it. Yeah. All right, so it looks like it'll be Henry's MF Quinn up against James's Anivia Gangplank to start with. So this one's interesting. Henry can definitely get on the board early and sort of stick. If he can stick um, MF on three and Quinn on five, I think he might have a really good chance, but unfortunately he did not mulligan into those cards. So his curve is a little high. He's got a sort of one t turn one play into a turn three play, and then he has some choices on four. Yeah, and that's so we'll see. unfortunate for him. I think he really needs to be seeing um, some more early aggression here. Obviously, uh, James doesn't really have a play here. He is he does drop the Omen Hawk, which is good for him. Um, but you know, as it starts to get later and later, uh, if if James draws that one of more powder uh, with Make It Rain, he can start going for some pretty heavy board clear against uh, Henry. Yeah, and James does have that nab and plunder package to sort of just find extra value off of a one attack minion hitting. Mm -hmm. um, Make it rain is pretty interesting here. He can, if Henry plays green ward, uh, green fang warden, he can just make it rain to knock off the um, barrier and have a better block with something else. Yeah, and I think he'll be feeling good about that Make It Rain as well, because it is, uh, in fact, Henry's Make It Rain, so now he knows that Henry is missing one in his deck. Yeah. 
obviously Henry wants to hit face, so we're starting with uh, an attack from the Green Fang, trading off with that Omen Hawk. Second attack pulls in the three two to trade with the two one. A good trade. Uh, James can't play the make it rain right now, so he sort of has to let all of this happen. Mm -hmm. And Henry's turn four is looking very strong. Turn four, he can play uh, one of his good four drops, and then turn six, we can see a Genevieve come out and just finish it. I'm interested to see if Henry will play the Grizzled Ranger or the... Um... The Island Navigator here. Either one is pretty good, but if he gets uh, the Island Navigator Summon, uh, he can wipe out both the uh, Greenfang Warden and the Island Navigator Summon with a Make It Rain. Yeah, we'll just have to see if James hits what he needs to on this Make It Rain. Uh, if it goes towards face. If Henry blocks here poorly, we'll see. Oh, so he doesn't block at all. So. At least one thing will stay alive. Uh, Make it rain will be doing two to um, three targets here with the barrel. James also has access to some nab cards. Black Market Merchant will come down. He's That's also a got great a great nab. Yeah, he's also got a uh, pill for goods in hand. Everything on Henry's board also has a uh, scout, so he can definitely get in some damage. He also drew a relentless pursuit, which gives him another rally. So we could see possibly even three attacks on this turn. Mm -hmm. Scout base, uh, scout the regular attack, and then a rally from relentless pursuit. So I'm sure we'll see a Make It Rain come out here, um, which might even be a uh, enabler for the Pilfered Goods. Mm -hmm. We don't really want to see it hit face, though. We want to see it clear minions off the board, preventing at least four damage and possibly saving a 2-1. Okay, so it doesn't save the Black Market Merchant, but we're going to remove four damage off of... Henry's born. Mm -hmm. And because of that, uh, Henry will not be doing any damage to face on that first attack. We could see a rally here, um, but I doubt it. James can just um, sit on this three spell mana, or you could play this hired gun and pull out the, uh, the bear. I think Henry wanted to play the Island Navigator on this turn, maybe, just to be wide for... Actually, he'll play it on this turn, probably, and then be wide for turn seven on uh, Genevieve. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a strange Anivia play. I think this hired gun is going to do some work against it. I think the Anivia is actually pretty strong in this position. Um... I mean, James knows that I think Henry only has one more Make It Rain, possibly. Um, so there's really not anything to deal with the egg uh, before James is enlightened. Yeah, and Anivia making it so hard to block. Whatever you play, you sort of gets instantly removed, which never feels great. Uh, we might be seeing, though, a Genevieve into a rally turn here from Henry. Henry can also challenge out the Anivia. Um, he can... So, ideally, you want to vulnerable, um, like, pull out the vulnerable, but you you would also lose the challenge. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Well, if he pulls that Anivia into his Navigator or his Genevieve, uh, and he does go for the Genevieve here, then they won't die. But he can also just rally. Everything... So he could, if he, the hired gun shouldn't be attacking, so he can attack possibly three times this turn. Um, but he might also choose to rally here. Henry will be doing six at least. 
Yeah, I think the reasoning behind attacking with the hired gun um, is to see how James is going to block before yeah. he decides if he it wants looks to make like, a It looks like Henry definitely misplayed there. He wanted to attack with all of his scout units first. His hired gun was not part of the plan. He will rally, so I think that Nivea is going to die here after, on the rally turn because he can challenge the egg out with the Genevieve. You see a heart of the fluff or a roller polyalis, which is not really what you want to be seeing off of the, uh, yeah, off of the make a six cost spell. But this is the this is the sort of strength of this misfortune deck. It's you're sort of like using your creatures to remove and forcing blocks that. James definitely doesn't want to be taking because you can attack so often. And we can see a, even a third attack here, which is crazy. So J Henry has attacked three times. I think pulling in the the Siren with the Genevieve here with Challenger and then just forcing the removal instead of allowing James to maybe just uh, make it rain. I think that was a misplay. I yeah, think I agree because making James... sure the siren comes, like making sure it dies, mm -hmm. and making sure important. that the um, island navigator connects there, and knowing that James had uh, no mana, there was no way to counter it. Yeah, but we're gonna see a more powder into a make it rain, probably. Henry could back to back, and prevent his creatures from dying. That but might is have been he gonna point. save mana for it? I don't think Poros Nax is correct. Yeah, I think... I, I think playing Aurora Porealis at almost any stage of the game for him is the wrong play. Oh, but I mean, it makes Heart of the Fluff and a Sinister, so he can make one, he can make probably a 7-7 seven, seven or an 8-8 eight, eight Heart of the Fluff, but James is just going to remove this board, I think, building it back up with... Um, I just think that that play wasn't the strongest. I think a back-to-back -back would have been better. Yeah, because James can now make it rain into either Wolf Rider or Yordle and get some pretty heavy face damage in. Yeah. And um, plundering off of both. Mm -hmm. We could also see a... I would like to see a Wolf Rider Pilfered Goods play, actually. But well, he, he does only have either. the five mana, right? So he could either double pilfered goods or he can wolf rider. And seeing that Poro, I think the wolf rider is the is the correct play uh, for the overwhelm. Yeah. Henry doesn't want to block to make part of the fluff. Maybe do the most. I think I think he was blinded by the Pora uh, Dora Porealis. Um, that last turn, I think. It was definitely not what he wanted to do. I think uh, holding back to back up would have been much better. You yeah, see, uh, Quinn and Valor, you can challenge out the Siren, you can challenge out whatever. Okay, so Portal, uh, Yordle Grifter does not make a one cost. I think it might be time for Henry to make a play with uh, back to back. If he casts that, on uh, on Valor, he can kill the Yordle Grifter for free, and then swing back in and kill the Wolf Rider or the Siren. Um, and his, his Quinn would live in, in both cases. So I think yeah. that's what he's looking for here, but he attacks... See, now he doesn't have mana for the back-to-back. -back. Yeah. And given how low his health is, I think he really should have wanted to go more for board clear. Yeah. Again, this the strength of this scouts deck is forcing blocks and an Anivion uh ten mana is gonna uh destroy Henry's chances of winning, I think, here. A Genevieve could pull it out. Um, but it's so hard to block and it's just gonna wipe Henry's board. It's gonna wipe this Poro and this the uh, Crackshot Crusader. Mm -hmm. And I, I bet he is wishing now that he saved mana for back-to-back. -back. Yeah, I think there are some misplays with keeping the Siren alive. Uh, 
three one that he now has to pull out instead of just removing it last uh, a few turns ago definitely doesn't feel good mm -hmm. and now if he swings with the queen it just dies to anivia for free yeah so i think he knows now he's looking at a bit of a dangerous situation um and james although low on cards has the warning shot into double pilfered refuel yeah and taking from henry's deck just um they share at least one um region which is surprisingly strong because we saw the warning shot not the warning shot the the make it rain from uh henry's deck stolen by james i think that synergy with the others like synergy within henry's deck that synergizes with james's is like hidden op make it rain from henry can't do much here. I think James is just going to go for a win. Warning shot, double pilfered. If he finds any direct damage that does two, he can just win with Anivia. Yeah, and and James has the potential here to go just incredibly wide. Fleet Feather into Jagged Butcher, into uh, Warchefs. Uh, and after that, he would still have mana left over even for the Green Glade Warden. Um, so I, I really don't think there's much hope for Henry. Yeah, and Henry hold, trying to hold out for um, Heart of the Fluff, but I don't think it was the correct play. It's only going to be a 4-4 four, four for 6 mana, and you're not gaining any keywords from any Poros. If James just plays Green Fang and Scout attacks, um, Henry automatically loses, I think. Because he has to block with the Quinn, and then Anivia just kills Quinn and crack shot, and James has a full board ready to kill. Mm -hmm. And Henry has to know here that if any of these uh, followers connect, that uh, James has lethal with the Anivia effect, so he needs to play either his Genevieve or his uh, Fluffed. So he goes for Fluffed. So we'll see what we'll see what happens. But then with this follower coming down, that's lethal for James uh, with certainty. Yeah, and he can always just attack with it on scout. A scout attack will force a block, and then the attack from Anivia will kill whatever blocks it because Henry doesn't have more than a four cost or a four health minion. So Henry surrenders. All right, so we see James <laughs> up 1-0 in the series so far. Yeah, sort of Henry not letting James have the satisfaction. I and if I was in my if it was my game, I would also have surrendered, I think. Mm -hmm. It's so sort of it's it's definitely tilting for your cards to be stolen and used against you to such effect and um, I think Anivia is just such a hard card to deal with if you're not like a full control deck. And James has built that Anivia deck really well, mm -hmm. I think. So Henry has a really strong curve here. He can go Fleet Feather into Hired Gun into Misfortune. Um, especially Fleet Feather Tracker into Hired Gun with the attack token on two, I think is a strong curve. Yeah. Definitely a one, two, three, and then a rally on four. Ooh, and a Quinn on five. This is ins an insane draw from Henry. Mm -hmm. And James might be looking to just thermo this uh, early just to get some early board clear, um, but he doesn't really have that much removal in his deck. The Mystic Shot can't contend with either the Hired Gun or the Misfortune. Yeah, three, three health is definitely more difficult to deal with without... Well, in in this uh, situation, I have the dragon can definitely stave off some aggression, but 
right now it just doesn't feel great to be playing a 1-3 into a 2-3. And as soon as Henry drops this misfortune on the attack, the 1-1 one, one will die. And all of Henry's, like if Henry even, or if James makes the 2-1 dragons, you sort of can't deal with it. Um, but we do see a gotcha from James picked up off of the Shadow Assassin, so he can at least deal with the misfortune. Mm -hmm. um, Green Fang Warden is a good pickup too. I think you want to just see an instant attack. If if you know what we know, you want an instant attack. But we're not going to see that. Gotcha is four mana though, so James that would be James's only play this turn. While Henry could still play a Chef's or a Green Fang Warden. But it does uh, certainly disrupt Henry's curve out a bit here that his Misfortune dies. That's kind of a critical card um, that you want to get leveled as early as possible, and it's a lot of your main Nexus damage in the early game. We're going to see a lot of damage, I think, come out, though, from Crackshot Crusader. Or, yeah. I think he's just getting the... That was two attacks for three damage, essentially. Mm -hmm. Six on one turn. Yeah, but I also um, think he missed two free damage there by not attacking with the hired gun. Um, James seemed really reluctant to block with his elusives, um, so James could be down to 12 if Henry had done that. We could actually see a rally here from Henry um, getting in for a lot of damage. Chooses not to, which is fine, because he can... If he next turn Quinn with Valor and then pulls out some of the Shadow Assassins, we might see... Um, a lot of damage come through with a rally as well. Mm -hmm. Of course, James... we can see a we can see a scout attack into a rally into mm -hmm. a double regular attack, and Henry might have it right there. Yeah, of course, James does run double Mystic Shot, so he can take out Green Fang and Valor if need be. Oh, he has yeah, triple he Mystic Shot now. He could also yeah, so you could take out Quinn and Green Fang, or he could go Green Fang Crack Shot and Valor. I think so you double double on to Quinn, but Henry's going to block one of them. And this is going to be sad for Henry when that third Mystic Shot comes out. I don't think... Yeah. I mean, but Henry still has a whole board. So I think making James waste all of that and then challenging some things out is going to do a lot more damage. Of course, you would want the Quinn to stick around, but this next attack is going to be... You could attack with a 2-3 and a 3-3. Three, three. Mm -hmm. But even though uh, Henry had the wider board at the beginning of this turn, I think that James is not going to care because he's going to get really big value from the double Dragonling uh, next turn, so he'll have four of Lifesteal. Yeah. Yeah. Removing the the triple Mystic Shot is definitely sad for Henry. Henry can Island Navigator Green Fang and just prepare for next turn. He could also Island Navigator into uh, Relentless Pursuit and rally out. So we're going to see a four health swing from... James. And then he's potentially static shocking Corsair and Ooh, Face. Okay, we're gonna I think we're gonna see a rally. Wasting this 4-3 ephemeral is definitely not what you want to do. I mm -hmm. think you definitely rally on this turn. Yeah, and uh, once he sees that James has no uh, sort of uh, followers to play um, he'll know that he has a board advantage as well. Uh, however, James will probably play that clear. Uh, I imagine. Oh, and he's gonna gotcha the um, Island Navigator after the Static Shock. Yeah. So we're going to see a rally in response just to get it out. Um, yeah, but what I don't think uh, Henry is realizing is you do kind of lose some value with the Ephemeral because it has Scout. Uh, if you attack first, it just simply dies because it strikes. Yeah, but you still might force a block. I think it's still better. It's still okay to Scout first and then attack with the what will be a 2-2 two, two and a 3-4. Because James won't want to lose his lifestyle units here. I think 
though James has the winning position, he can just refuel so easily. And a Vi, a Vi in hand is going to really take over the game, I think. Mm-hmm. And the 2-2 two, two ones is actually insane. Well, Henry does actually have the attack. So if he Genevieve's, um, he has some... Well, I think really uh, James trade. is looking at that Will of Ionia, and he knows that if he does that, then Henry can't play Genevieve again. He will flash a Brilliance first, and then recall the Genevieve, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a very damaging play for Henry. Because in, in that line, you can... Um... Actually, no attack from James. I think Henry, if Henry attacks there, James just blocks with the ephemerals that we're already going to die, and he just gains two for free mm-hmm. while damaging Henry's units, I think. An island navigator would be pretty good right here. Just widen his board for a Genevieve next turn on his attack. Be best. I think you just play Island Navigator and Green Fang and then Genevieve and hope to close on that last turn. And certainly not a terrible summon from the Navigator. It will give uh, Henry a blocker for the Dragonlings, and then he can summon another unit. Yeah, um, this Challenger from 5, though, feels not great, I think. So we're going to see a Thermo Beam onto the Green Fang. We might see a challenge. Just James making it harder to block the uh, the two ones. Henry could always just <laughs> block with the two threes. Um, and I think, but this, I think is, this is a good block. He's maintaining his board presence. Okay, so he's holding back minions to play with Genevieve, um, but I think James just is able to block so much. Chris Keeper, not really what you want to be seeing off that. I mean, it just delays Henry's plans by so much. You ideally want something else. And James's board is just so wide, you, it's, it's so hard to deal with. I think we see a Genevieve come out and then you're going to challenge um, you're going to challenge Vi out and you're going to support the the bird with war chefs okay so actually we're going to see a, a scout attack turn I'm um, challenging the, mm-hmm. and the eye of the dragons I'm first. not sure it's correct to attack with the Greenfin Warden, but I think it, it turns out to be all right because he blocks with Dragon Link. Yeah, if James just blocks with the Vi, I think it's not as good. And James is leveled up least soon. Is going to be very hard for Henry to deal with. He does need to keep in mind where that War Chefs is positioned. Yeah, ideally you want it next to the challenger. Kill uh, the bird. five four. Yeah, or to kill Vi. Because ideally you want Genevieve to come through. He's actually not pulling any of the high damage targets, and he's maybe playing for the next turn. Okay, we're gonna see a reshuffle. Make sure the support gets onto. The challenge burn. I'm really surprised he doesn't pull in the Vi. I think that's definitely higher priority. Yeah, I think... Yeah. So James just gets off some easy blocks. His Vi and Leeson are going to be alive, and Henry has no hand while James has a deny to block anything that Henry could play, and a um, 
progress day to just refuel next turn. I think if Henry might have had a a rally there, that would have been crazy, but mm-hmm. well, James, James is, is going to win off of this. Progress day into the gotcha on the Genevieve, uh, and there's just no path back, or he just uh, hits face straight off the bat. Well, he kicks, um, he's going to kick the Genevieve into the Nexus. Mm-hmm. And he had lethal with Vi anyway. So, James takes that series 2-0. Yeah. Uh, I'm not surprised. Uh, I think James is... I think James is going to win the whole thing, unfortunately. Yeah, I not think unfortunately, it's... I think I'm. he's built some very strong decks, and he sort of cornered the meta just playing half mid-range, half control decks is just very strong at the moment. Mm-hmm. And Henry just couldn't get onto board with... Well, I mean, he got onto board, but James just... With the Eye of the Dragons, I think is like the the card to watch out for. It's just gaining James so much life and preventing, like, getting such a wide board for, like, just James by... Just for James playing cards. So I think that's, like, the the card to look out for. Mm-hmm. So, so do you think it was really uh, just a deck differential, or was there anything that Henry could have done differently here to kind of claw it back? I think Henry could have won that first game if he had... Um, traded differently with the siren on that turn. If Henry's like watching it back, mm-hmm. that's like something that I think he messed up on. And also, he I know he knew he messed up by attacking. He like tried to attack with all of his units and forgot that the um the gun for hire um the one that makes every one thing vulnerable. I know that he knew he messed up on that card. So I think um. There was a little bit of misplay in that first game that um, could have led to him just having to play Snapvine, and I think his Snapvine deck um, had a better matchup into um, the Lee Sin. So I think Henry could have won with one deck, maybe traded with the... Like, given one back with Snapvine versus GP, and then won it with the Snapvine versus Lee Sin. Yeah, I agree. Well, thanks for casting with us, Chris. We now have uh, Henry and James back at the caster's desk, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and bow out, but uh, thanks for your commentary. Yeah, thank you. Well, and we're here. We are here. Actually, a truly ridiculous uh, turn five, three mystic shots yep. on the Quinn, and also turn three gotcha on the misfortune. Actually, only lucky. That's the only reason why James won. Well, to be fair, it was a turn four gotcha, I believe. Truly wasn't. Yeah. But this is ready. You know what? You can feed your propaganda to the people <laughs> all you want. <laughs> okay, that is fair. That was a. It was a fun series. How many? I think both no, the wasn't. games. Not even close. <laughs> to being fun. I should. I should comment. <laughs> I think both the games are you know kind of close. I feel like I could have gone either way, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing you play. Whoever wins this next matchup, mm-hmm. Case versus Oliver. Right, yeah, Case versus Oliver. I won't. I do believe that there's another losers match before that. It's going to be Case versus Sky. And yes, that's right. The winner of that. Yes, that is that is correct. But yeah, this is going to be a, a match for sure. I do think Case is pretty heavily favored here. Um, yeah, I mean he has better decks, played longer. Yeah, I would say so. I, I think that, I mean, Case's decks uh, are both sort of, or the, the, his two decks that he really enjoys are definitely two decks that I have had to really struggle with every single time that I've played them, and each one was sort of a nail-biter. Um, and even his uh, Shen Fiora deck, we've seen have a little bit of success um, throughout the bracket portion. Uh, and it's kind of built like Skies, which... But, but a little bit more focused on that wide, mid rangey going into the turn 6 Cythria style, which we saw was the way that Sky's deck really had any sort of success. So, yeah, for sure. Uh, I agree with that. Uh, with that, well, we don't actually have bans, so we, we can't dive into decks quite yet. But as soon as we get the bans going, we will be uh, diving into these decks and seeing what we really think about these matchups. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, uh, I think it doesn't really matter which deck Oliver bans because both the decks are pretty equivalent in power. 
Uh, I think Case is going to probably want to ban that Sea Monster deck because it is the most uh, meta deck that Oliver has. Probably the most powerful deck uh, just from a actual perspective. Yeah, I agree. I think that it's... Uh, the, the, we've seen the Teemo Sejuani deck, or the Teemo Karma deck also have a little bit of success with that Teemo Dawn and Dusk combo and then just sort of grinding out the games while Shrooms finish off the opponents. But even then, those were pretty close matches, so I definitely wouldn't be surprised to see a Sea Monster ban here from Case. Um, Oliver, on the other hand, I would really doubt if he ban. I mean, the big mistake would be banning the Shen Fiora deck. Uh, for me, I have been banning the Sejuani deck mostly against Case. I, uh, I feel like that's a, a little bit more powerful variant. It feels a little bit more consistent with the bilge water effects. Whereas the Swain deck techs in a few uh, heavier cards. It techs in uh, and then and then Noxion removal, which can be good. But I I personally am really afraid of the. Uh, for the Sege. Yeah, I think Sejuani is a really powerful champion, and I think paired with Gangplank is good because they both have the same level up condition, so you can really tech around that. Uh, I do think Swain TF also has the ability to really go off. I think both those decks are pretty good, and I even think his uh, Shen Fiora deck isn't that bad either. I think all of his decks that he has uh, probably going to be playing with today, which is his Catastrophe deck and his Teemo deck, are just pretty grossly inconsistent. A Teemo deck really requires Teemo early to get off the ground, and if you don't draw a turn one with the attack chip, and if your opponent has any sort of removal, then you're kind of in hot water. And the Hybrid Dinger deck we saw had a lot of trouble getting online, except for one match against Riley. Yep, I agree. I feel like these decks are definitely, that Oliver are bringing, are definitely more along the lines of high Um But uh, we have this in Cases banning Oliver's Deep deck, and Oliver is banning Cases Sejuani deck. So let us get into the decks themselves now this is the shen fiora deck the dreaded one that case doesn't really enjoy playing we didn't get to see it earlier on in the day but i will say after seeing a little bit of success with sky's deck this one might well it actually is lacking those shadow assassins that allowed sky to get in with a little bit of elusive damage and it doesn't have any cythria yeah right with all this uh with all this demacia you really think maybe he should have included bannerman because uh, that's a pretty uh highly desired card in these heavily demacian based deck lists um yeah i mean i think he also is specking into the late game uh in a different way as sky with the unyielding spirit which is really only good if you cast it on fiora and even then it's a pretty bad card and the bright formation obviously is pretty good but running two of them along with unyielding spirit i've said it time and again is just it leaves you open in the early game for if you accidentally draw those cards, Unyielding Spirit's going to be sitting in your hand like the whole game. Yeah, definitely. Even finding one of those in your opening hand is going to remove your options for the early game a lot. And this is a deck that really cares about curving out. I mean, that's where you're going to see a lot of success. At the same time, I do think that Oliver's decks can be very punished by cases, by, by, by this deck if it gets off to an aggressive start because he really doesn't have... A lot of means of the, the early game control. He's running a lot of those weaker units early. And Case has Challenger to deal with Teemo. Right, totally. All right, let's move on to Case's Swain deck, which we saw played earlier. Swain, Twisted Fate, kind of control-y style going into that mid rangey with the uh, Twisted Fate and Swain. Uh, this deck can be powerful if you can manage to drop a Leviathan. I mean, if Oliver isn't running that much hard removal, which I don't believe he is, and he doesn't get off to an early start... This deck is just going to have so much value as it gets to its heavy 8 drops with Riptide Rex and the Leviathan. Yeah, I mean, we see time and again how powerful actually Bilgewater is with that nab package. If you're running a slower Bilgewater deck, I'm pretty sure it's basically um, unmatched in how much gas it can get, you know? Aside from maybe Progress Day, but even that's a way less inconsistent than the nab package. Yeah, the only thing would be that all of your decks we've talked about aren't they're they're unconventional and they aren't really the most powerful decks in the world so if case nabs some useless cards that aren't really going to be doing him that uh doing much for him in his gameplay and win conditions you know oliver might be able to stabilize against this deck although i do think that this deck is uh, in terms of power level a lot higher than any of oliver's more unconventional decks right all right with that let's move on to oliver's pursuit of perfection deck now this deck Managed to get a few wins, but it still has yet to summon the 30-30 cat. It's just winning on as a singleton Heimerdinger control deck. Yeah, right, and I think that that's kind of what you want to see from this deck. You don't want to crutch your whole strategy on drawing Pursuit of Perfection. You want to have multiple win cons. 
and having six cards that you can draw and win with as opposed to just three really adds consistency to the deck. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I still don't think that it's the best built Pursuit of Perfection deck, but it certainly has been working out with this Heimerdinger getting in those flashes of brilliance just soaring the board. But I don't think that those are up against the best decks in the world. Usually this Heimerdinger kind of snuck wins against uh, lesser decks that, that did, also didn't really have the best draws. And against Case's Swain mid-range deck and the if, and if he can get his Fiora deck to draw well, I just don't know if this deck is going to be able to keep up in terms of pacing. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's move on to Oliver's Teemo deck, which I feel like might have a little bit of a better chance with those... Early Claw of the Dragon, Eye of the Dragon, Puffcat Peddlers, things to help, you know, kind of a, a little bit beefier with, with stronger effects than some of those Poros or Yeti Yearlings. Right, yeah. I mean, this deck is built a little bit better than some of the other Teemo decks we saw, uh, like Shays yesterday. But um, it is, as I mentioned earlier, a little high rolling with the Dawn and Dusk running two of those with Teemo. You really want to see that early, and without Teemo, the only other champion you're running is one of Karma, mm -hmm. and this deck honestly doesn't seem powerful enough to actually take down any of Case's decks without a big champion, and you don't have that. Yep, the win condition here is really just Teemo, Dawn of Dusk. If he doesn't get that combo rolling pretty early into this game, he might be screwed against any of these any of Case's decks that have kind of a faster start, can get into that mid rangey power, and just you know, sort of take the game over, you gotta feel like. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the one big inclusion here is the Cloud Drinker, which you really don't see often at all. Cloud Drinker does synergize well with the Teemo Shroom cards, because they are burst uh, speed, and he does have a lot of other burst cards, so if you can get the Cloud Drinker on, you might be able to start snowballing by playing tons of spells a turn, but honestly, that just seems like Cloud Drinker can get removed, it just seems like you might as well be running something else that can help get you there, as opposed to something that can help finish because I feel like when Cloud Drinker gets effective, it's the game is basically already won. Yeah, I gotta say, Cloud Drinker is the it's the most sort of out there card I gotta feel like in this deck, and uh, from what we've seen so far, it really has not been impressive. It's just looked like a six mana three five. That extra mana that you're saving doesn't really wind up mattering. Like he's never really had a chance to get Twin Disciples off for two, where he wouldn't be able to get it off. Otherwise, it gets it nets you a small amount of tempo, I guess. Um, because you can save up more mana to, for spell mana for maybe Denies or Wills of Ionias, but for me, I've been really underwhelmed with it so far. Right, yeah, I think it's a cool card, but not very good. All right, well, with that out of the way, we are going to send Ready to our players and get this game underway. Yeah, and I mean, I'm looking forward to this. I do think Case is pretty heavily advantaged here, but Oliver did take down Emma yesterday and Riley. So this guy definitely has some tricks up his sleeve. We'll see if he can use it effectively enough to take down Case, though. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, I, I, Case, obviously here commentating with us, um, has put in a lot of work into this tournament. I definitely am expecting him to win here, but I definitely was expecting Emma to win before. Uh, you've got to think, though, that it, it's, it's going to be really hard for Oliver to take this back. It would be really exciting in terms of storyline. He would then go up against Sky right. and then against you. To yeah. see if he can make it all the way to grand finals. Oliver all uh, obviously has a very hard road ahead of him no matter what. But we're going to see if he can make that uphill swing. And now we'll look at his hand here. It's a little underwhelming. That uh, chump, or clump of wands helps. Oh, it, it definitely helps. Um, Case has a really aggressive hand here. He has part of the NAM package. He's got the barrel plus death's hand combo, which is pretty good. This 2-2 two -two is going to buy Oliver a decent amount of time. Um, instead, he chooses to pass, not play the 2-2. Two -two. I'm not. Maybe he's a, afraid of a parlay here, but he does play the 2-2 two -two after. Now, I would have liked to see the 2-2 two -two play just to trade off with that other 2-2. Two -two. I'm not sure why he waited. Right, Oliver's deck is definitely a more control-y, later game kind of deck. So, oh, you know what? He wanted to destroy that barrel. Mm -hmm. but here comes the Death's Hand, and it's just going to be very effective here. Yeah. Uh, I, it would have been good to trade it off uh, earlier and save himself two damage and that minion on the board, but I see where Oliver's head was. He's going to play Entreat here, which <laughs> it draws him as Heimer. Yeah, which... finding that Heimerdinger by turn five is really important, you, I feel like, for Oliver's deck. Case doesn't really have a great means to remove it. He would have to Twisted Fate plus Death Hand right now, or Death Hand plus uh, Ravenous Flock. 
Right, and this Twisted Fate right here is really underwhelming, I feel like. Yes, Twisted Fate does draw you a card, have some AoE, or do some damage and stun, but it really oftentimes just feels like a 4-mana 2-2 two -two with Quick Attack, which might as well just be a 4-mana 2-2 two -two at this stage in the game. Oliver opting to cast one of his 1-mana Burst spells, which is a little surprising for me. I think I would have liked to see that be saved for Heimerdinger. You don't really have any reason to cast it now, aside from maybe to just get... Say, free up that mana for future turns. Yeah, that's true. And uh, Case actually picks up a Thermogenic Beam. We see the nav package in its true overpowered glory <laughs> here. Uh, and this is what I was going to say earlier, Jens, when you were saying that Oliver's decks might be a little unorthodox and weird to have the nav package. Well, when you're nabbing out of uh, Piltover, a lot of cards do the same thing, which is burst, or not burst, but quick damage removal. And so you, you have a plethora of options, you have recalls, uh, thermogenic beams, obviously, mystic shots, these kind of uh, direct damage spells, which are really effective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Case gonna go ahead and thermo beam this Heimerdinger. I, I agree with you. Uh, I think Case is very fortunate to find a thermo beam or any sort of removal from Oliver's deck. His deck is incredibly diluted because it's mainly one-ofs. Um, but taking out this Heimerdinger is really gonna slow down Oliver's game plan. He does have a Plaza Guardian in hand that he is... Uh, reducing and these zero cost minions are going to help get online those subpersibles, which could wind up just winning the game by swinging in. But this Swain has fearsome. Oliver chooses not to play the zero mana to drop. He has patrol wardens plus frostbite. Now, if Case gives Oliver the chance, he really wants to frostbite this Swain here. Does not want to give it a chance to swing in and damage the face because that's really going to set Oliver's clock even lower. Yeah, and here comes the barrel, which after uh, Case plays his three mana spell or Twisted Fate, his swing is going to level up. Yep. At which point it will regain one attack and be able to swing again. Yeah, this deal two to all is really devastating for Oliver. I mean, it clears his board. It Does it level up his swing? It's going to deal seven and yeah. he's already dealt five. So yeah, it, it will level up his swing. Oliver doesn't really have any way of dealing with this. He could buff up his minions is what he's looking at right now just to get some blockers. That would stop the swing from, from hitting the face. Right, and I mean, I believe that that red card also hits the Nexus? It does, yeah. Right, so maybe the Swain here will trigger uh, and stun one of the units. I, I'm i not sure. No, what I, order think it's that, uh, be. I think that he'll lo only level after all the damage has been done. Mm he needed the 7 to level. That makes sense. So okay. we see Swain evolve here. Right, and we see Oliver buffing up his three uh, attack minions, keeping them alive. And it is a blocker for Swain here. We're going to have to see. Yeah, this okay. is definitely going to deter Swain from swinging in. Oliver has to decide what he wants to block here because he is at 12. If he takes all this, he goes down to 8 with Twisted Fate and Swain both on the board. Right, and Swain's already leveled. Twisted Fate has a long way to go, and uh, he doesn't really have any draw in hand except for that other Twisted Fate, which he might opt to do some drawing with yeah. in order to keep the heat on. Oliver can't really get any good trades here. He's going to be trading his 3-2s. For two twos, one of his three twos is also elusive. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, he has the subpersibles and the uh, Plaza Guardian to back that up, but this isn't the trades you want to see. Yeah, it. it I mean, I don't. I don't think Oliver is going to be able to get there with the hand that he has currently. He's really going to need to pick up some nice, big removal with his draws to try and stem the bleeding of this Swain and this Twisted Fate that's going to be swinging in. No, I agree. And now once. Case gets up to uh, eight mana. I think it's about time to try to try and use pick a card to find uh, that the swing synergy card with overrun that deals three to the nexus, uh, the Leviathan. Mm -hmm. And if you find that, you can just drop it, and it's going to be so hard for Oliver to deal with here. Yep, I agree. If, if Leviathan gets drawn uh, for next turn, then I don't think that there's any chance that Oliver can come back in this game. Not only does it trigger your swing rendering Oliver's board mostly useless, but it also deals three, and frankly, Oliver is at eight right now, effectively six now. Right, and... Five, even, with the warning shot. Right, and with both the warning shot and the, uh, I think, what is that, Death's Hand or something? Yeah, Death's Hand. Death's Hand, he's going to be able to stun not only the Subpersible, but whatever else Oliver plays here. Mm -hmm. And then he'll be able to swing, obviously, I think Oliver is going to be going for the... Oh, oh okay. This is a, no, he sees instead what he wants, I mean... Yeah. Obviously, Death's Mark is better here. Next turn, all uh, Case can just warning shot the face. That'll stun the sub Percival at burst speed, and he can still swing immediately. Oh, so. right. Case doesn't have the attack chip. I've been assuming that he has. No. I've been commentating. 
Now, Kesa likes to play the Monkey Idol, which I think is a decent play. It does help him get there next turn. I think Oliver has to hold his Frostbite for next turn here. Yeah, there's, I mean, if Case plays this right, there's nothing that he can do. Case is just going to burst speed, stun the sub Percival. Oliver sees it, he realizes he has to play the Ice Veil Archer to just try and stop that um, stun from coming out against his 5-5. Five five. Right, but the thing is, is it could just get Death's Hand, and then you get a 2-for-1 special, stunning the 5-5 five five and killing the Ice Veil Archer. Right, it does give Oliver a chance to respond with a card of his own, because it's a, it would have to be a fast spell used to Right, that's that. true, but... I, at you that have... point, you could then just warning shot. Yeah, this this if Case plays this right, yep, he sees the Death's Hand. He's going to stun up the 5-5. Five five. Right. Oliver will play a minion. It'll get stunned by the warning shot, and then that'll be it. Yeah, that's this is just about lights out here. Even if Oliver has uh, some sort of keeping him alive, keeping himself alive at 1, you have the Mystic Shot to finish the deal. You have the Nab Package to get even more gas. Yeah, Oliver needed to draw something that would Frostbite case's whole board or something of that nature but at this point he's going to be spending four mana to just draw one with the static shock and he won't have enough mana to have any sort of effective play to stop case from just swinging in as soon as all this resolves right there really is so little oliver can do here in this game and it looks like we'll be going to a quick game two here if case can manage to Weasel his way to victory. Yeah, Oliver doesn't find anything. Right, um, Pursuit of Perfection is still eight cards off. He's going to play the sub Percival, maybe, and, and Case is just going to stun and swing. Right, yeah. Yep, Case is showing us that he has the Warring Shot and the Mystic Shot all available here. Mm -hmm. No matter what minion Oliver plays, it's just going to get stunned immediately, and then he's going to get full swung in. Yep. This one's looking just about done. At this point, he, he wouldn't even need direct damage. No matter what Oliver plays, Case can still get by with uh, 7 damage. Mm -hmm. He's going to Warning Shot to stun it and swing on in. And that is going to be a pretty quick game one. I mean, like we've been talking about, Case brought some pretty powerful decks to this tournament, and, and Oliver may not be prepared, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we've got a... Uh... We've got a, a Case's last deck here, the Fiora Shen combo with Barrier. Uh, this is a deck that Case has, you know, not had a lot of confidence in, but I do believe he'll be able to punch the victory here, especially because he has two chances, once against the Karma Teemo, which Oliver is electing to play right here. Now, obviously, it doesn't matter which one he plays first, because he has to win with both decks. Mm -hmm. But I do think this Karma Teemo deck is not as powerful as the Heimerdinger deck. I personally prefer the Karma Teemo deck. It might just be because... Okay, well, when you draw two Teemos and a Puffcap Peddler and a Mystic Shot as your opening hand, you might have a chance here. Of course, Ace's opening hand is equally as powerful with a Fleet Thunder Tracker on one, Warchest on two, and Fiora on three with the attack chip. Yeah, Oliver's Oliver gonna... choosing to shuffle a Teemo back into his deck. Now, I'm not sure that that's right. Well, that's not right if you don't know what your opponent's hand is, but Case has three challengers here, so even if Oliver had that second Teemo, that's just fodder for the Fiora. Now, Oliver, Oliver opts to hold on to the Teemo. I think he's going to try and play the Teemo and kill the Leaf of the Tracker, but he doesn't know that there's more, and Case picks up the Shen here. It is just, you know, it's gone from bad to worse. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, just even from these opening hands, I'm not sure if Oliver is going to be able to recover from what Case has in store for him. He can play the War Chefs this turn, next turn he can summon Fiora and kill whatever Oliver plays, be it the Puff Cat Peddler, or if he just decides to Mystic Shot, he can't save his Teemo at that point. Right, and he, I think Case is considering playing the single combat here just to get rid of Teemo. He doesn't know what Oliver has in hand, mm -hmm. but I think the right play is to just play War Chefs and bide your time, there it is. Now that Teemo, there's no buffs in hand, so that's kind of fodder for Fiora. Of course, the Mystic Shot is available. Deal some damage to Fiora, but if you buff it with War Chefs, it will live through the Mystic Shot. Mm hmm. I can only imagine that Case is going to play Fiora next turn. Oliver might respond by not playing any. Well, he has no Spellman to play Pupcat Peddler plus. Oh, Case just not even. Okay, so Oliver can now Mystic Shot the bird and keep his Teemo alive. Yeah, that's correct. I think this is a misplay from Case. I think he didn't want to greed with the Fiora. Oliver, or he has single combat, actually, which does help. Yeah, but now he's stalling out his Fiora turn. Uh, I, I don't know exactly what's in Oliver's deck list that would warrant such an early swing um, without just playing out your Fiora to try... I mean, Fiora has challenger, so you can punish any potential units that come out. 
like this Puffcat Peddler that Case would have been able to kill. Yeah, and I mean, Case is obviously still in a winning position here with Shen into Fiora. Uh, he's going to be able to just continually chip damage and kill off these smaller minions that Oliver has available. And with an Unyielding Spirit here, now that's a really interesting card. You could play Fiora. I guess that can't really get online onto Fiora until turn 6, but... Oh, and Oliver has a little Ionia in hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta see. Oliver's curving out here. You might, you know, start to feel a little bit worried about if Case gasses out and Oliver finds some removal to stop. You know, he doesn't have a play until turn 9 or turn 8 right now. If he, could, if he draws another one of these heavy cards, Case could be in for a world of hurt if Oliver keeps on curving out like this. I mean, Karma's coming down on turn 6 to keep on generating even more value for Oliver. Yeah, I was going to say that this Karma is a really big drop for Oliver here, and it is a blessing that he got it when he did. I mean, obviously, oh, single combat helps to take out that Karma because that's really basically all the gas Oliver has. I mean, he's going to be able to plant a lot of shrooms in his opponent's deck, but honestly, I don't think that that's good enough. Okay, so now Case drops the Fior, which I think is a good play. Uh, Oliver has Will of Ionia in the back just in case the Fior gets too scary. James, if you recall the Fior, do, does her uh, takers go away? Yeah, they reset. Um, but if Fior is already leveled up, then obviously she already has two. Okay. So if she... So, I mean, Oliver can let Fiora kill you in here. The, the scary part would be Fiora then could kill another unit with single combat. Let's see how Case decides to order this. I think you might want to... Have war just swing how it is right now. Have warships buff the fleet feather tracker. The fleet feather tracker pulls in the four three. Then Shen gives Fiora the buff, and Fiora can pull in either. I mean, I guess this works as now, well. No, I think this is a better line from Case actually, because now you have to choose between killing Fiora or rather stopping Fiora and saving your puffcat peddler. You know, you don't want to have all your value eggs in one basket. If you attack the puffcat peddler with Fiora, it's a two for one. Yeah, that's true. I just figured that it would be easier to kill the Flea Feather Tracker with with some sort of Mystic Shot, so... Right, that is true. Here comes the Will of Ionia, and it looks like Oliver is going to opt to try and save his uh, Puffcat Peddler, and this is the kind of dilemma I'm talking about. He's kind of got him on a, uh, on a fork here. Yeah, really smart foresight by Case. If this was his, uh, if this was his intention all along... Um, but he can always single combat with Shen to take, or with, even with the bird now. Okay, yeah, that'll cause Will of Ionia to fizzle. So that will stop his uh, deep meditation from even being able to be cast yeah, next that's, turn. Yeah, that's a really good line from Case here. And if he wasn't winning already, now he certainly is. I think he, maybe because he doesn't have a play next turn, you might look at it as a disadvantage. But he's holding up that mana. For the uh, Unyielding Spirit, which you can drop on Fiora, Oliver no longer has a Will of Ionia in hand, and honestly, he doesn't have a good play here at all. Yeah, and the Lord Protege is a great draw. You know, it not only does it save you your three spell mana uh, perfectly, but it also just puts another Challenger unit on board just in case Oliver has an answer to one of these and gets that Teemo Dawn and Dust combo off. That's got to be the only way that Oliver wins this game at this point, is if he maybe. I, I don't even know. Yeah, even if he plays Karma, Karma's just going to die to Fiora. Right, yeah, and I think that that recall, it was a really big misplay. Yes, keeping a Puffcat Peddler up is good for the Teemo part of your deck, but you don't have any Teemos in hand. You might be generating a couple Shrooms, but that just isn't going to win you the game in the end. Especially if your Teemo had already leveled up. Oliver had already planted a decent amount of Shrooms into Case's deck. I don't think he needed to keep that alive so much as he needed to bounce the Fiora. Yeah, the thing about it is, even if Oliver recalled the Fiora there, Case would have just been able to replay her with the Laurent Protege this turn. And it wouldn't have really done much. Oliver decides Karma just isn't powerful enough. He needs to find some sort of other option. Well, the thing is, is if you play Karma here, it just gets insta-killed by Fiora. And now Oliver's stuck between a rock and a hard place. Because if he plays a minion, it'll just get killed by Fiora, furthering that win condition. But if he doesn't play a minion, Case is just going to full swing and kill him. Yeah, what do you think you do here as Case? Do you think you play a minion first, or do you think you just I think, swing? I think you just swing because you have lethal on board. Do you? Yeah. Two plus, four plus four plus three. Yeah, that's eleven. You can swing, and Oliver doesn't really have any way of responding to it. So Case is now just thinking, okay, do I want to? Which is safer, right? If Oliver has some sort of removal in hand, then. Well, I think if you're looking at the deck list, actually, I don't think Oliver has removal other than, um, 
The Mystic Shots? The Mystic Shots, and all these units have more than 2 HP, so I think this is a really safe bet. Yeah, Oliver's fishing for maybe some sort of answer, but he just doesn't find any right. some buff cards that are useless because he has no minions out on board. Right, and I think at the end of the day, this deck just over-indexes into having that Teemo, which Oliver did have, but like I said, if you go up against a deck with removal, you're in a real tight spot. You're in real hot water, and that's what happened. In case manages to clinch the series 2 well. Yeah, I just feel like Oliver's decks kind of lost those games. It didn't even feel like Case really needed to try with it, like you know, and just knocking him over like a house, house of, of cards. cards. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't know. Totally. I mean, I think that this is what we kind of expected to happen yesterday uh, during Oliver versus Emma. You know, we do we do see Oliver bringing probably some of the weakest decks to the tournament, and he also didn't spend a lot of time practicing. So it would have been very weird if Oliver had managed to succeed here. It would have been cool, but I think, honestly, this is the expected outcome. Yeah, and I, I personally am glad to see that Case moves on. Uh, so, uh, of course, I'm sad to see that Oliver is out, but you know, Case is a real competitor, and I think that uh, even in our games, he brought us to the edge. So I'm looking forward to seeing him play Sky and maybe seeing if Sky can make another upset because those decks are scary that sky was playing and she clearly you know if she if she if she, she if she pilots them well ace might be having to sweat a little bit here yeah that's what i was gonna say i think that case versus sky is a very very close matchup i honestly don't know who to give the favor for sky has really good decks and she knows how to pilot them well save for maybe that shen Fe or that uh lux uh shen, shen deck we're going to have to see, James. I'm really looking forward to seeing these matches. Yep, I am too. For now, though, we are going to be going to a break. Um, and then after the break, we're going to finish out all of this. We've got Losers Semis, Losers Finals, and Grand Finals still left to play. Right. And uh, looking forward to it. It's going to be pretty exciting here. Yep, I am too.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the final segment of the TRC Legends of Runeterra Invitational. We are now on to the final four competitors left, that being myself, James, uh, my co-caster here, Henry, hey. Case, and Sky, all fighting it out. Let's take a brief look at how exactly we got here. Right, yeah, and here we see the bracket. We see a pretty, obviously, James is the only non-grayed-out name left. We see him sweep through the competition. And we've got some pretty interesting matchups here. We see, obviously, the Sky upset was pretty big, and she almost honestly took me down. Uh, I think, other than that, it was pretty expected. We had James beating Case. Case beating Shay, James beating Riley. I beat Chris, I beat Sky, and then James beat me. Not yeah. shocked. What's interesting about this bracket is the top four that are remaining are also the four that were in the winner's semis. So maybe that's telling of people kind of performing relatively consistency, consistently, aside from Emma's performance on the first day uh, of round robin versus her performance in the bracket. I feel like everyone's been doing about how they expect. And now let's check out the loser's bracket, where we're going to have Case versus Sky as our next match, and the winner of them will be facing against you. Right, yeah, and I do think that this match is very, very close. I honestly can't even say who I think is favorite. I know Case is a very strong player, but Sky has been shocking, and she's gotten some really sneaky wins. Even even when she didn't uh, win the whole match, like against me, she still got in one game, and the other games were very close. So I do think Sky is a really competitive player here, and I'm really excited to see who can eke out the victory against the other one in this matchup. Yeah, I agree. We it looks like Case is going to be banning Sky's Darius deck, which I mean, you know, that's it's a smart ban. And Sky is going to be banning Case's Twisted Fate deck, so we're going to be able to see the uh, variant that is the Gangplank Sejuani, which is more heavily Bilgewater focused. Uh, yeah, and I don't know how much we've seen this so far, this tournament. I do think it's a very strong deck, and I do think it's definitely going to take a win at some point. Uh, I, and it is a shame for Sky that she got her Darius deck banned, because that's obviously her strongest deck. Well, not obviously, mm -hmm. but that's what we think her strongest deck is. Yeah. I do think that with the Elusive deck, we'll also probably end uh, in a win. So I'm predicting this will be a 2-1 series, with the last game coming down to... Uh, Shen Fior versus Lux Shen. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Let's let's hop into deck techs real quick here. So Case's Gangplank Sejuani, it's pretty much purely Bilgewater with Sejuani in it. I mean, you see the Riptide Rex for the top end. You've got the full Nam package, the full Barrel package. You got parlays, warning shots, things to help trigger your plunder. For me, I I mean, I like this lineup. I'm not sure exactly how much you could optimize it. I'm not the biggest fan of Hired Gun. I don't think that he's really running that many minions that capitalize on the vulnerable. Uh, I, I will say I disagree with you a little bit. I think Hired Gun is just a solid card, especially uh, up against decks where that they rely on their champion living, like a Teemo deck or like a Fiora deck. And it allows you to tech against them and get a quick kill on a champion if you're not running that much uh, removal, which this deck doesn't really have. Of course, it does make it rain, but there's a little bit of luck there. Yeah, I, I don't know. I For me, I'm just not the biggest fan of Hired Gun, just as a card in general. So that might, I might be just undervaluing it yes. based off of personal biases. When it's played against me, it doesn't feel the best. But um, overall, I don't think there's that much to say about this. I feel like this is a really powerful deck, and I would be surprised to see it take a loss. I think that Sky's Elise deck will really have to pop off to beat it. Right, yeah, I think it's quite strong, especially uh, ramping into the late game. You have those Riptide Rexes. I think you might want to take one more in because it's such a powerful, consistent card on turn 8. And you also have the Sejuani's and the Ganklings to help get you there. Of course, uh, we'll be able to talk about Sky's Elise deck more, but I think with the Ladra's Atrocity finisher, she might be able to sneak in a victory before Case can take her down. Yeah, yeah, for that, let's move on to Case's Shen Fiora deck. Now, we've already seen this deck be played a lot, uh, and we've talked about it a decent amount. It, it completely demolished Oliver, but you got to think that Oliver didn't really have that many tools to deal with what this deck was bringing to the table, whereas Sky's deck decks might be better equipped to deal with it. Yeah, I think that we've talked about it a lot. This deck just kind of lacks focus. You've got uh, mid-tier uh, minions are going to be playing like the Swiftling Lancer and the Grizzled Ranger combined with the 
a really barrier dependent green glaive caretaker and you got bright silver i mean it's just i mean you don't have a lot of ways to give barrier right it's just a little bit of a hodgepodge here and i personally don't think the deck is optimal but i think it still has a chance especially up against a lux shen deck yeah i think that the big thing for me looking at this like we've talked about so many times is the late game case has the four big late game huge drops sky only has one uh now granted there's not that many things to deny you can deny the single combat and the unyielding spirit so if she picks up denies then that's not really going to be that good for her but i feel like you might be able to get a more consistent powerful mid-rangey draw if you're if you're on sky's side well now i kind of disagree about the denies because repost and spirits refuge are pretty high mana spells and they're some of the only things aside from the bright seal protectors that give barrier here so you might run into an issue with leveling up your fiora if the enemy has denied so those are actually burst so they can't be oh, denied they're burst. Wait, okay never mind that's My the mistake. big reason yeah so they're just it, there's just not that many things that you can right you can yeah I, I i agree yeah all right so let's move on to sky's elise deck which i am just in love with this deck i'm really glad to see it that case didn't that case opted to ban the darius deck rather than this one and i'm really excited to see it played more right yeah no this deck does have a lot a lot of top end and sometimes it gets off to a weaker start if you don't have a lease on two you don't really have that many powerful minions to drop of course you do have one bark beast and a couple of arachnid horrors then you have the mist wraith package which is pretty clutch at getting you through the early game but if you drop poorly this deck might be in some hot water. Yeah, and I feel like Case's champions in Sejuani and Gangplank are really well equipped to handle the Hecarim, to handle the Scar Mother Vrenna with the, the, the kind of act as removal, and they're big bodies that won't be able to get through, but I feel like if Case doesn't draw an early game, a powerful early game start, or a Sky does draw an early powerful start, then I feel like these decks are really gonna go toe to toe with each other going into that late game, and I do think that atrocity Without Case really having a way of stopping that from happening, no Will of Ionia's, no hard removals. The only fast way of killing it would probably just be the uh, deal one to ev deal one to three random units, um, and that's not going to kill what whatever Sky's trying to atrocity. So, right, yeah, I'm talking about the shortcomings of this deck, but at the end of the day, this deck sees some very clutch wins, even in the matches she's lost. So I don't, I think this deck has legs to stand on, and I think it might be able to take down Case at the end of the day. Yep. So let's briefly touch on Sky's uh, Shen Lux deck. Uh, for me, I just, especially against the two decks that Case is playing, I, I, I'm not so sure about this one. Again, she's not running as much top end, so maybe you can consistently slam minions uh, and, and go wide, but these Emerald Awakeners are just a thorn in Sky's side so far this match. The Vanguard Sergeants aren't really doing enough, I want to feel like, and every time, I, I feel like I've seen Vanguard Redeemer played so often without just getting a draw as a 3 mana 3-3. Three, three. Right, yeah, I think that this deck, going specifically into Case's decks, uh, are not as good as optimized as just totally uh all around because of course you have the denies uh which are very good and do other decks not so much as cases but i do think this deck is pretty well built um the lux is a weird inclusion and i think you'd be better with other champions but you have these uh, an appropriate amount of late game with one serthia and one bright so you maybe want to have two serthias and then also you have these shadow assassins which we've seen sneak in some really good victories which we know case is lacking Yep. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure that Sky is getting into the spectator, and then as soon as she does, we will be ready to start off this series. Right. Yeah. I mean, when you look at Case's uh, barrier deck, how does he kill uh, Shadow Assassins? He has three single combats, but not much else. Yep. I agree. I. Uh, I mean, I think it's just gonna come down to if this deck has enough strength to force the Shadow Assassin to block. Also, he has the Challenger. Right, right. That can take okay, it out. well, that's enough from us. Let's see how these decks are in action. I'm really excited for this match, guys. Let's see if uh, one of these uh, players can really take him down. Yep, we've given the go-ahead here. I, I can't imagine... I, I mean... Uh, oh, Sky's starting with her Lux and Shen deck. Yeah, now that's a weird call. I think she knows what Case is going to be starting with. Mm -hmm. Maybe she has some sort of meta read here that uh, this deck will be able to counter Gangplank, and I don't know about that. Of course, we see Case with a really clunky opening hand. He actually opts to mull all of it, which could be dangerous here if he doesn't draw right. Yeah, I just don't know if he has another option with the hand that he's been given. Um, and now this is what you want yeah, to see. This is a really good hand here, if he can get that plunder off. You're going to want to play Dreadway Deckhand on two into the Make It Rain, which should end. Sky's hand is just no good at all. Shadow Assassin is okay, but seeing that one of Bright Steel Formation in your opening hand is just not very good. She's slashing the sad Porto face. She knows that 
with this opening edge is not that good. So I think she may have chosen to play this deck because she feels like it's her weaker deck and she doesn't want whatever winning matchup it has to sneak by her at least deck. Yeah, yeah, that, I mean, that, that's a fair read. I do think that putting Barrier on her Shadow Assassin helps here as you can sneak in, kill a barrel without it getting that much value. Yeah, but I mean... She's still in a tight spot here. Emerald Awakener, I don't know if that's the play here. Yeah, she goes ahead and drops the Shadow Assassin. But she didn't give it... Oh, she did give it Barrier. It just took a little bit to show up. Yep, and Case realizing now that she has Barrier, almost targeted it with the Parlay, but instead taking a little bit more time to decide, gives it Vulnerable. Now see, this is where that uh, the flexibility of the hired gun is uh, quite... You know, you can see it. She opts not to drag in the barrel. Yeah, that's very surprising to me. It is going to allow Case to keep the barrel alive and use parlay next. She could have forced Case to pop the barrel. On the other hand, if Case had a good use of that barrel, then it wouldn't have been good because you would have been denied two damage. But you know that Case can't make it rain to kill your 2-2 because that's barrier. So, I, you got, I mean, I'm right. questioning her decision on whether or not to pull in that barrel there. And here comes the kill on the Shadow Assassin. Obviously, you would have, you don't, I don't think that two damage is really going to matter as much as the barrel is because now she's under a pretty big threat of this make it rain barrel combo, which she could have avoided by just play, uh, by destroying the barrel last turn. Yeah, Sky plays the 3 3 that is going to help her draw a card but with this second barrel case can just parlay it and take it out while dealing three damage to the nexus wow and he has enough mana to play his black market dealer here yep this and is a pretty powerful turn from case here this guy has no way to stop this she's just gonna let it go through Case gets some pretty meaty damage onto the nexus and he's gonna be able to, to use that nab to draw a card the radiant mm. guardian is pretty big here that's a big body and discounted onto four mana that's really powerful yeah, and Case was really looking for... Well, maybe not so much anymore. I feel like he was looking for gas, but the Sejuani draw is really good for Case. She's not leveled up yet, but that as soon as she does get leveled up, that warning shot is going to be huge value. Right, and Sky has so many cards in hand, but she just can't play them here. Yeah. Looks like she might be able to curve out. I think she wants to play the Shen into the Scythria. Right, I mean, even then, you you don't have the attack chip. Obviously, the Scythria is going to be a good blocker against Sejuani, against Gangplank, and against this Radiant Guardian. But I, it just doesn't seem... She's not in a good spot here, clearly. Yeah, I think Case just plays the Gangplank. Uh, Sky might want to drop Lux next turn, just because it has barrier, as just as a means of defending, because her Nexus is at 13. There will be a barrel on the other side of the field. Well, right. actually, she can take out the barrel with Shen here. Right, and I think that that is the right play. Let's see if she sees that line. Maybe a bit harder to see if you're not as practiced in the game here. Yeah, I mean, if you don't play against Bilgewater that often, then she might just be thinking, okay, I don't want to swing with my Shen because you can just block it with the Gangplank and kill it. But if she drags in that barrel, then she'll be able to avoid Gangplank from hitting, and yeah, she doesn't look like she sees it. Right, well, the thing is, is that the in the long term, the barrel doesn't really do that much. Yes, it allows you to hit for two instead of for one, but, you know, where, where is the effectiveness there? The Shen is going to be... Shen goes over there. It's then you did it, but she can't use it because there's not another ally on the field. Yeah, she's just going to give a barrier to block the five damage. Right, but uh, Case is just going to use Make It Rain here. Pop the barrier, kill the Shen. That isn't lethal, is it? Mm, it's gonna be close. No. Oh, oh Sky has the deny, deny, which helps, but it really doesn't get that much done. Yes, your Shen's still alive, but he still has a gangplank. He's going to drop this Sejuani. Well, he Case can't. can also play second, make it rain. What I really would have liked to see would be Sky letting the Shen die so that she can get her 5 5 with tough and lifesteal down this turn. Right. That would have been a, a great way to stabilize in this game, and Case didn't really have a big answer. I mean, he could have played the Sejuani next turn, but. She could have just swung immediately, and now Sky doesn't have any other options. She just has to pass the turn. Right, Sky has basically nothing here. Case is going to drop the Sejuani, and I would drop a warning shot as well to get that leveled up quicker. And, I mean, honestly, Sky's Nexus is at one. Case is going to have two big overwhelm units. How does she get out of here? I don't think she does, James. Yep, she's just going to play the lifesteal. If she plays Shen, then she can swing in with the lifesteal. And the... Uh... And give a barrier to help it stay alive, but Case can just frostbite it as well. Right, and this is looking like it's going to be a pretty early. Case just opts to pass 
Not sure. Maybe she's he's looking for a more effective frostbite target, but I think frostbiting the lifelink is your best bet here. Well, the thing is, uh, Case has minions with overwhelm, so utilizing Sejuani's uh, ability to give an enemy uh, vulnerable allows you to swing in with free damage. She actually uses it on Shen here. That's pretty bizarre to me. Well, it allows... Well, yeah, I guess he probably should have done the lifesteal and then blocked the Shen with the Sejuani. Yeah, and Sky is debating whether or not to sack her Shen to get two extra health or Nexus. I think that that's theoretically the right play, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Okay, so she's just swinging now to try and get two more. Case can just... Case should block to avoid... Yeah, block with the Sejuani. That works. Right, and this does... Uh, get Sky up pretty high on the health here, well, but... Kind of high. Right, I mean, she's up against six units. Case has the attack totem in the first move. He also has two warning she shots in hand. Guardian, right. Two warning shots in hand. And this is just going to be curtains here. Sky's going to try and block the Sejuani. But uh, that's it. She's right. going to draw, and uh, she, I don't think she has anything that she can find here that saves her from this situation. No, I don't think she does at all. Purify could theoretically help, but it doesn't at no. all. Nope, and the, this is just it. Case is going to go up with a quick 1-0 here in the series, and Sky is on her, she's on the ropes fighting for her tournament life here. Yeah, I think that we are seeing the weaknesses of this deck now that it's going up against a very serious contender playing a very serious, seriously powerful deck. Right, I, I agree with what you're saying. And uh, Case takes the victory. Uh, we did expect Case to win with that deck, uh, and Sky did run her weakest deck first you know i guess it doesn't really matter in the end but maybe for momentum's sake maybe she wanted to get case feeling cocky getting getting him to misplay a little bit yeah if we're know. talking about momentum i feel like sky is definitely or sky has the winning side i feel like this is her hecarim deck has proven more powerful than case's shen uh fiora deck so if she just wanted to be going into that last match with a win uh, we're just going to have to see. I mean, yeah, you, you, like you said, it doesn't matter. Oh, Case has an excellent draw. From Case. The thing, the one thing I will say, oh, and there's that. This guy has a lease on turn two, which is pretty good, but it's right. just going to get eaten by this green glade. This is this is not looking that good for Sky. I no, feel like yeah, it's looking a little dicey here. Case has the tools necessary. Now, the one thing would be that she has that mark of the isles to maybe kill a Fiora if Fiora tries to pull in the Elise. Yeah, and it is a burst spell, so it, it does come out fast. Now, what do you think? Do you think Sky attacks here? There's no way that Sky attacks. It would just, the barrier would just eat it alive. Right. Uh, yeah, that's true. You do, you do kind of want to hold it. Now, she's looking at mark of the isles, trying to get some sort of sneaky kill here, but she needs to save that for Fiora if she wants any sort of chance at this game. Yeah, and it doesn't do anything against the barrier. I think Sky is just... Thinking ahead for the future turns, I she can't seriously be consider. She can't seriously be considering attacking. She's mousing over the Elise. Well, when your hand is looking like Skies does with another wow. Elise in hand, you might want to uh, that, attack, but it really gets nothing done aside from a little bit of chip damage on that three two. Wow, and Sky chooses to attack, and Case can just block yeah. with she's the three two. Mark of the Isles, I think she might want to kill that three two with her spider but it, I don't think it's worth it here yeah sky is using way too many resources to kill this three two she's kill she's killing her lease she's killing the spiderling and the uh mark of the Isles from her hand is just gone now all to take out a three two you didn't even like that barrier wasn't even going to amount to anything she can replay Elise, but now that Fiora is here... Right, Elise just gets instantly killed. You can't play it here. And if she is too gung-ho and plays it immediately without even thinking... Case oh, is choosing Kay to attack, so he, he relinquishes the attack token, giving Sky the opportunity to play Elise. And now that is pretty nice here. Now, Sky does have the Mist Wraith next turn, which I think is a pretty... These Mist Wraiths are hard for Fiora to take out while surviving. I will say they are pretty... Uh, considerable stat line. Now Case is debating whether or not to play Fiora. Hmm. Yeah, the thing is Case has a repost in hand. Right. So, I mean, regardless of what Sky does, Case is going to be able to get this Fiora online. Right, and an unyielding spirit. Now, Sky has atrocity to deal with it, but Sky is just, she has such little gas. Now, we might be seeing the disadvantages of this deck that she may have just been lucky enough to avoid. Now, here comes 
they who endure, if she can stall out till seven, uh, it's possible, but it's not looking good here. Yeah, I think Sky might be struggling with nerves or something. Um, choosing to give this 4-3 ephemeral is, is not really doing anything for you because you could have just played the four the four mana version this turn. I mean, it saves you one spell mana, but with a hand like this, that doesn't really do anything for you. I don't know about the way that she's playing this deck right now. Right, and Case found the Shen, and now I think he's debating whether or not hold on to it or to... And now she's going to full swing here. This is probably going to block the 2-2 because he knows he's got Unyielding Spirit the next turn. Oh, but he might be thinking about the Vile Feast here. That, that That's something to always consider. Even though Sky doesn't have it, you might want to hold back just because of that chance. Yeah, the thing is you, you have her post still. So he's he's feeling pretty confident. He just wants to get this Fiora going. Sky right now is gassing up her They Who Endure. She has They Who Endure and Atrocity in hand. Another Mistrafe will come oh, down next Case turn. Case plays the Shen, giving Sky an opportunity. If, she, or if, if, if Case had held on to... Uh, that mana and played Unyielding Spirit this turn, he would have had uh, Sky dead to rights because that Fior would be unkillable. Now yeah. you gotta... Now, hmm. It looks like Sky is thinking about throwing the Oblivious Islander in front of one of these units and then using Atrocity to ping off that barrier. Right, and now that's a decent play, but at least Sky with not only no minions on board, but barely any tools... To help her get through the rest of the game. Yes, you have they who endure coming out in two turns. Guy choosing not to atrocity quite yet. And is she waiting for Case to do something, trying to bait it out? She is might she... be baiting out of her post on this five two, which will then be a waste practically because yeah. it won't push any more damage. Case is considering his his uh, choices here. He opts not to do it. Now, this guy still does have that atrocity in hand, but she yeah. has nothing to play with it. And I think Case was expecting something more from Sky because as soon as you swung with that Green Glade Caretaker, Sky can just go and go ahead and chump block with it, or, or actually like trade with it. And Case doesn't really have a great response to that, not wanting to give up that repost, knowing that Fiora is going to be well on her way now to leveling up. Right, but now Case can play Lauren Protege. He can play his War Chefs and really start putting the pressure onto Sky here. Sky doesn't have much left. She's got no cards in. Well, she's got three cards in hand, but she's got low cards in hand. And drawing that Oblivious Islander is not something you want to see here. Yeah, one thing that might be good is that she can give her they who... Well, she wouldn't want to do that. If Sky can survive the next few turns, then they who endure can come out, swing in, and then atrocity it to, to get lethal. Now that that is a possibility, but you have to consider Ace has bright steel formation ready to go. Uh, if Sky lets him get that out and doesn't have a good answer for it, which she probably won't, well, he won't really have mana for it. Now, it's, yeah, you really do not want to be using this Oblivious Islander here. I don't even know if you want to be attacking because... Well, these actually trade pretty favorably against um, Case's board, but right, you want do. to be playing on the defensive. Now, Shen gets a good attack here, and she's hovering over Atrocity. I think she's maybe thinking about using Atrocity to kill one of Case's units, but I don't think that's right at all. I think the only way you can win here... It's with that uh, they who endure atrocity combo that you mentioned earlier, and I think swinging with the four three is correct here. Buy yourself a little bit more time, get rid of some health on the board. I mean, the only way Case can actually stop the damage coming in from they who endure is with that Shen five health. But if you knock this Shen down to low health, yeah. But do you see this? He can repost the Fiora, buffing or getting her up another one, and then next turn just swing in with Shen Fiora, and Fiora kills a unit, and then wins the game. This is gonna force Sky's hand. She needs to atrocity. Now here's the thing, do you trust the 4-2 hitting Fiora, or do you trust the hitting the Nexus? Because if you trust the hitting the Nexus, you are they who endure it has, it's going to be a 10-10, it's going to get the swing in. Yeah, you could actually. Eight, and I'm, then maybe you draw something else that helps you get there. I think that Sky is just afraid of this Fiora. Now if she kills the middle 4-2 and goes to Nexus, that's going to be a really heads up play, but instead she decides just to kill the Fiora. Right, killing the middle 4-2 would have been extremely good, she would have probably just won next turn if she did that. Well, she could have. Um, I, well, 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 the problem oh, yeah, is she case, won't have the, case has the, the attack, attack token. Chip. That's correct. So at this point, Sky wants to drop They Who Endure. I don't think that there's... Yeah, just drop They Who Endure. Right, and there's the Black Spear. That would have been very good last turn. And Case has Unyielding Spirit. I don't... He's, she opts not to play it. He opts to play his grizzled uh, Ranger, which I think is a good play here. Warshefs comes down. 
Now, Sky's gonna need to pick up an atrocity right now, or else I think, or another they who endure, maybe, or else I think she just loses. Right, and you should, uh, yeah, buff up your nexus here. Yeah, and even if she does pick up that second they who endure, Case has the Bright Steel Formation coming down as well. You gotta save your nexus here. I mean, at the end of the day, Sky only has one way to win. Oh, oh I think that might just be it. I think yeah. Case has enough damage now. Sky may have just given Case lethal. Right. And with the protection too. Now let's let's do some counting here. Yeah, that's gonna be it. Two, three, for four sure. plus three. That's yep, that's enough. This guy needed a block there. It would have given her one more draw with which she could have found atrocity, but Case takes it in a very convincing 2-0, -oh, and I'm honestly kind of sweating playing Case next. Yeah, I'm also I'm a little bit surprised to to see Sky kind of just roll over. I mean, she she had that win condition in this deck and she just didn't didn't see that case was gonna have lethal. She she didn't buy herself any more turns. Um, I I'm a little disappointed to see it go, but I am excited for case to be yeah, uh, moving on to top three. And I want to see you guys play because I feel like you two have I are a pretty even playing field here. You guys have brought pretty competitive decks and mm -hmm. are both great players. So I, I'd like to see how you guys match up. Well, I am definitely a little nervous. Um, but yeah, that that was a pretty entertaining series, despite the fact that uh, Sky didn't last very long. Uh, still, a very formidable uh, performance from Sky, getting the top four. That was pretty good for her. I mean, I don't think she expected to get this uh, high in the tournament. Uh, I don't think we expected to get this high in the tournament, so good on her. Yeah, I agree. Um, looking forward to our next match is going to be you versus Case. Right, and this is going to determine... Who is going to be in the finals uh, against you? And, yeah. Uh, so it doesn't really matter who wins here because uh, <laughs> I think we both have a pretty similar shot. But uh, I believe I'm going to go downstairs here and uh, join Case while I'll leave you to cast. Yep, sounds good. Uh, I just sent a message to Christopher seeing if he wants to cast. If, if he doesn't respond, then we'll just move on ahead. And if he ever gets here, then uh, we'll go. But otherwise, I'll just solo cast this one for now. Mm -hmm. Um, they've got a decent amount of stuff that they need to do downstairs in terms of solving computers, so I got a little bit of time to talk about this matchup. And for me, I think, I think that I favor Case. In terms of whoever has the stronger three-deck lineup, I think that Case has the stronger three-deck lineup. But the one thorn in the side is going to be this Shen Fiora deck that might not be able to find the crucial win that it needs to against Henry. Um, Henry, on the other hand, has this Yasuo deck, which has a lot of potential to just go off and maybe take Case's other two decks um, without him being able to uh, put up a defense. Sorry, yeah, all right. So I'm going to be solo casting this one. Uh, and as soon as we get bands in, I'll talk about specifically the matchups. But we don't really need to discuss these decks because I feel like we've discussed them all already quite enough. Uh, in terms of what bans I'm expecting, uh, obviously Henry's going to be banning one of Case's Bilgewater decks. I think, honestly, after after seeing the last one, I believe that the um, I believe that the Swain deck might be the stronger one. It has more more big late game threats with that the Leviathans um, and the Sez, the Sejuani and uh, Gangplank didn't really do all that much. Okay, so Case is going to be banning the Yasuo deck. I think that this is smart. I think that that Yasuo deck is the most conventionally strong, and I, it's one that I was the most afraid of because it has a lot of great combo potential with that Minotaur, Reckonar, and Yasuo, and Yone. I mean, it's just a really powerful mid-range deck that might just be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Case's Bilgewater decks. Um, but now with it banned, you know, it, it's going to be a lot tougher for Henry to do what he needs to do. Granted, if this Snapvine deck can go far, then, you know... He always has the potential to outvalue those Bilgewater decks, and when it comes to the Demacia Ionia deck, uh, again, like that Brightstone formation might be able to push Case over the edge, but the Snap Finds, I think, are just going to be able to eat that deck alive unless it can, can really roll out the Divine Sheet or the Barriers, which we've seen in the past that that lineup, that, that Case's deck list, doesn't really have the tools to beat. All right, I'm going to let the other people know what they banned. All 
All right, so uh, Henry winds up banning Case's Sejuani deck. Um, now that is not necessarily too surprising to me. I've been banning the Sejuani deck. Uh, let's see how these matchups go then. Let me set this up. Sorry, I usually have someone else here to, to talk while I'm doing all of the work on the overlays. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and give, give them the go ahead because I don't have anyone to banter with here. Let's see what decks get queued up first. Okay, Henry opting to play his Quinn Misfortune deck. Case going for the Swain TF Bilgewater deck. Uh, I, now, I think this is going to be pretty heavily draw dependent. Um, and Henry with a really tough opening hand here. Case has a monkey idol that he's tossing away. He's going to keep that make it rain. Henry, oh man, this is not looking good. Case has that early two drop into the into the make it rain. Uh, okay, the war chefs is is that's a sign of life. It looks like he's gonna play it, and now Case can't really play his two two because he doesn't have a way of capitalizing on the barrel without Henry just killing it. So Case is gonna pass. Henry's gonna get two free damage, and Case is gonna play his two mana two two. That'll summon that barrel. Next turn, Case can play another one of those and still have mana to use. Uh, make it rain. Henry could just place Green Fang Warden here, which has that barrier that would be protective of the Make It Rain, and Case is going to do exactly that, summon another barrel. Now, Henry has played against these Bilge Rider decks long enough to know what is coming. He's determining what to do now. I think that he wants to just play his 3 mana 3 3 with barrier, the 3 mana 2 2 with barrier, but he doesn't really have a play for next turn, so he might just be waiting. See what he draws, and maybe pass over some of that mana, the spell mana, with back to back. I mean, if he passes, he might force Case's hand to just play the Make It Rain to get value here without... Mm. Case can just wait, though. He doesn't really... He's not really pressured. And he would have to use the attack chip next turn to pressure Case into casting Make It Rain. But if he just casts Green Fan Warden here, he might actually get really punished. Because... Case can just wait until that barrier times out. Next turn he can play, make it rain before anything else and just clear Henry's board. Case deciding to swing. This is telling me he wants to cast make it rain. I think the, the smart move here would be to pass and just try and get another uh, thing out of this make it rain. You know Henry's going to be playing a mini next turn. And if he doesn't, then you still have those barrels. I mean, there's no way. Okay. So Henry plays the Green Fang Warden right away. Case is just Case. I think you can you can afford to play the Petty Officer to summon just a one one, but he's just gonna opt to make it rain right now. Uh, Henry doesn't really want to be swinging in with this two two against Case's other two twos because his is a higher value. It's a three drop with Scout as opposed to just a vanilla two two. And I think Henry just has to pass the turn here, not off to the fastest start with this deck that's kind of reliant on that. And he has a pretty heavy hand, these uh, Genevieve, I believe is the card, the 5-5 five five that gives your board plus one plus one and has Scout and Challenger can really, really swing the game. Especially with Quinn out, let's see, and, and a rally saved up from spell mana. Henry might have a couple very powerful turns here. If he plays Quinn next turn, plays Genevieve, gets the triple attack, and actually le gets very close to leveling up Quinn. And the Siren is even more gas for Henry. This is a pretty powerful hand. On the other hand, Case has Swain. He's got two of the Leviathan, which is going to be able to carry him throughout this late game. Right now I'm favoring Case. He has the board. I think he's got some pretty powerful cards in hand. Plays the Petty Officer, summons up a 2-2. Henry just going to play Quinn, get her on the board. He doesn't have anything else to do with his mana, really. Um, that wouldn't just be a complete waste. So what Henry could do is choose to rally here. He could then swing in with Valor, 
and the tutu but he would have to take so much damage if he wanted to do that but it could it would have uh quinn leveled up next turn with the genevieve because you could get two attacks here with scout units and two attacks next turn with genevieve instead chooses to block he values his health a little bit more which knowing what i know about the hands is good because those the leviathans deal a ton of face damage And Ravenous Flock takes out the Quinn, and, and Henry's not really going to have that much to do here. Uh, this is kind of rough. He has heavy minions, but they just don't do enough right now. That Make It Rain is okay. It can take out the 2-1, and it, it is the source of dealing Nexus damage for Rally. It looks like he's just going to cast this to give Case priority. He wants Case to play a big minion, maybe like a Twisted Fate or a Swain, so that he can play the Genevieve and kill it. Next turn, setting up for the Siren into Misfortune. Case doesn't really feel pressured to play the Swain, though. He's okay with wasting this mana, maybe? Just going into these, this triple Leviathan turn. I mean, that Leviathan was honestly a pretty good draw. It makes it so much harder for Henry to deal with this going into the future. Ops to play the Swain. Now, Henry could Citrus Courier here just so he doesn't lose value from that Cythria, or from the, the Genevieve, I, I believe is the card, but the 5-5. Five, five. He chooses the Citrus Courier just for the heal, which I think is pretty smart. I mean, he doesn't really have anything else to do with his mana because he doesn't want to sacrifice that minion. I'm not... Mm, this is a tough spot. I think next turn is just, just the Siren... The Playful Trickster doesn't really do much for Henry. And with this Might pickup, Case can get Swain to hit the Nexus and take out that 4-5. Henry considering just casting back-to-back. -back. If Henry blocks here, Case uses Might and Henry uses back-to-back, -back, that's going to be a huge swing. And that's what he's doing. He's playing it patiently. He, he may see the Might in Case's deck list. But it comes out, I think Henry definitely back-to-backs here. Yeah, if he takes out the Swain, then those Leviathans are not nearly as good the turn that they come out. And it saves the Citrus Courier. Granted, it takes this whole turn, but he wasn't really doing too much with the mana otherwise. That Siren was not a super powerful play. And Case doesn't really have any way to respond to it. And now Henry can play the Hired Gun, get out another minion. Granting that thing vulnerable is actually pretty good because any... Attacks that he wants to get in with any future misfortunes or quins. He really needs to find more champions, though. He really wants to get. Hmm. Chooses not to play the siren first. I guess there's no point in playing the siren first. Pulling back, this, I mean, what Henry should do here, knowing what I know, is he should swing with both and, and hook in the 2-1, because Case is just going to drop the Leviathan. That's going to level up his Swain, I believe, after one turn passes. He has two Swains in hand, two Leviathans. Henry is just, his deck is just not equipped to deal with this sort of value. And, I mean, what is he going to do against this? I guess he can actually get... 11 face damage in here. He doesn't have enough mana to rally, but next turn he can. Do you full swing? That's the question. Or what do you buff with the War Chefs? He's choosing to buff the Genevieve to make it so that if Case decides to block it, then his Leviathan is going to take more damage. I think Henry may have wanted to prioritize damage on the Nexus, though. I'm not sure if he did the exact math. It's going to set Case down to 6, so Case could be at 5 right now. We should keep that in mind. And Swain does get leveled. The Crackshot Corsair plus the Siren actually makes a pretty big deal here, especially with that recall in hand. Now, I'm going to have to look at Case's hand to see what options he has to stun up Henry's board. Because if all he can play is this Swain... Okay, he actually has, he's going to be able to have two warning shots in hand. This might just be curtains for Henry. That Leviathan is just going to start stunning up his whole board at the start of each turn. And Henry going to kill the 4-3. 
or Kay's gonna kill the 4-3. Henry is gonna respond by playing this uh upshot Corsair. And Case plays the Yordle Grifter, so Henry can actually get an attack off. If uh no he can't, he doesn't have mana to rally. Case warning shot so that his Swain gets in, and Swain's gonna clear the board with his attack. Henry has no way of blocking this. And he can swing in with the Leviathan as well. And the 3-3. Three, three. Well, actually. This is really bad from Case. Killing off that Leviathan means that the Siren won't be stunned at the beginning of the next turn. And he only has one warning shot in hand. Oh, but the Leviathan trample damage gets it. Oh, the, the trample damage gets through because Case deals damage. He kills off Henry's unit. Okay, yes, that makes sense. <laughs> My bad, I, I didn't quite spot that. And Case takes the series up 1-0 against Henry. Henry still has Ugly, and it looks like he's queuing it up. I think he has not found the success that he's looking for with this uh, attack a lot deck that he has with the Quinn and Misfortune. And of course, I think we, we know that that was Case's strongest deck. He's now running... Oh, and this is a pretty, pretty good draw from Henry. He's going to toss away his threes. He's just looking for a Baron Von Yep, I believe. Seeing Progress Day is not... Good news, but that Blighted Caretaker, I think he's actually happy to see another one of those because that's a means of removing some of those powerful two, two health units that he knows that Case's deck is playing. The scary part about this is that Case runs Fiora, so all these low health units before he gets a Snapfinder or the Baron Von Yip out, it's going to be fodder for that. Let's see if Case decides to attack with this one too. I think if he does, then Henry definitely wants to block. He chooses to not attack, which I believe is smart. Henry can just swing here. He doesn't really have anything else that he's doing. He passes instead of swings. He doesn't... He doesn't want... He, he wants to keep that death trigger alive for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe he's thinking down the long road if he finds Baron Von Yip or if he manages to play a snap find, then he'll be able to get value out of that. But that seems so far away at this point that not really a point. Henry going for the Blighted Caretaker to ward off Case's attacks. This is going to leave him with a 2-1 and a 2-2. I think he might have wanted to save that to try and swing in with Challenger against Case. He doesn't have the attack to... It's, it heals his Nexus for 3? Case can just pass and, and Henry can't do anything here. I guess he figures he, he has Maokai, so Maokai will be able to generate even more saplings as the game goes on. Which is kind of what Henry needs at this point. Kay's gonna lure in Protégé. He also has the Riposte in hand to kill off that Maokai with the Challenger unit. He has a single combat, Unyielding Spirit. It looks like if Case can manage to get over these kind of medial units that Henry have, but the Baron Von Yip plus Crawling Sensations combo at the ready. I think Henry wants to wait to play this Baron Von Yip until after Case attacks because otherwise he can kill it with the Challenger. He does summon a buffed up sapling in this case. Henry just worried about dying to Case's mid-range power, but he doesn't know that in Case's hand he has tons of tools to help him remove the, the Baron Van Yip. And Case has played against this deck. He knows the power of this card. He can opt to either pull it in with the Challenger and buff up the Challenger, or he can single combat with a 3-2. Looks like he's choosing to spend all of his spell mana reposting the Baron Van Yip. And Henry has no response to this. The good news for Henry is in just two turns, he'll have a snap vine at the ready. The bad news is Case will again have that attack chip. Henry picks up the black spear. It can be used to take out the Shen before his stuff gets too bad. And summoning these saplings per turn is really going to prove worrisome. Case just tossed away one of his biggest tools of dealing with his Maokai, but at this point, Case can just single combat to take out the Maokai right now. Opt not to. Instead, holding up mana to try and save this Caretaker if it gets dragged in. But he won't have enough mana to cast two, so Henry will be able to Black Spirit afterwards. Another issue, though, Case can just single combat in response. 
I think that these are some pretty at intelligent attacks from Henry. Whatever case blocks here, Henry can just clean up with the Black Spear however he wants. The 3 2 can't be blocked by the 2 2. So if Shen blocks there, then he will be putting himself at risk of dying to this Black Spear. And Case is running out of removal. If this snap fund gets dropped and Henry's able to play a Crawling Sensations, I don't know if Case's deck is going to be able to deal with it. He needs that Fiora Unyielding Spirit combo. Granted, Henry doesn't have a great way of bouncing that Fiora afterwards. And that might be enough where he can just keep on killing the 4-3s that Henry has no way of getting rid of. Okay, Henry decides to just let it go through. The Black Spear may be coming next. Case can just pass here. Black Spear targeting the Caretaker. Case is going to respond with the single combat. I assume he doesn't cast single combat. This gives Henry a way of quickly summoning a snap vine if he just plays out the Overgrown Snapfind here. Because Maokai will summon a unit. Mm, but Case has a plan. He can pull in the Snapfind with a 5-4 and with a 2-2 and cast Repost to kill the Snapfind. Henry will be out of Snapfinds at that point. But Case will be running into an issue where his hand is completely gassed out. Henry still has a Maokai on board generating that value. Case deciding to leave the Snapvine alive. I think that that's a huge mistake. Henry's going to summon two more with Crawling Sensations as soon as his minions die. Next turn he has Vengeance to kill this Shen before it levels. Oh, but Henry Case can single combat in response to this. With either the Shen or the 3-2. The 3-2 goes in. Okay. Unfortunate that Henry didn't have enough mana to play a Hapless Aristocrat, which would have not been able to be respond, responded by that. Okay. Baron Van Yip is a... Uh, Henry just slams it without even thinking about vengeancing the Shen. He knows that he wants that sapling. He wants to swing in with the sapling and... Maybe set that Shen's health down to low, but Shen's going to be leveling here. I'm not sure if Henry maybe wanted to think about what he was doing a little bit more before just slamming the Baron von Yip. Henry taking out the Challenger, you know. Okay, so this is actually pretty smart. He knows that he wants his Baron von Yip to stay alive. Case has two repost in hands, though, and he can just swing with the Shen and the Laurent Challenger next turn and just kill that... Uh, Baron Van Yip, it looks like Case might be taking this pretty soon. If Henry doesn't have a way of dealing with this Challenger unit and the Shen, he only has one Vengeance in hand. Granted, he does get to summon a 3-3. He does have Progress Day. Let's see here. Maokai is on the way to leveling. I wonder how close Maokai actually is to leveling here. 22 out of 25. If Case, So Case has to kill this Maokai. Henry finds a way of summoning a unit quickly next turn. He could toss the Bloody Caretaker. Case has to attack now. If he plays that, then... Okay, so Henry can create chump blockers. Henry needs to play the Bloody Caretaker on this 1-1. One, one. Not only will that create two big chump blockers, but it'll also level up his Maokai, sending Case's remaining cards down to four. Otherwise, Maokai can just get challenged and killed. The problem I think Henry's thinking about is, after this... How does he deal with these huge minions? Yep, there it is. Maokai transforms. He only needs to deal with two more attacks from Case after this one, I believe. As Maokai is going to be summoning chump blockers each turn that are going to be buffed up by the Von Yip. And Case's hand, honestly, is not going to do enough, I don't think, to maybe take out this game especially with this vengeance henry can opt to vengeance the bright steel formation the shen or the Laurent challenger here maybe he just wants to do scythria because he needs chump blockers to to win this game and let's see i think henry should either trip i think henry should double block and cast vengeance 
instead chooses to triple block and I, 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 and then a progress day must come out here. Okay. He's gonna vengeance. I think you want to target Scythria. Yeah, okay, he know okay, so he's gonna kill the Shen off. This makes it so that if, if Case winds up getting in with one of his units, they won't have a million attack. And Henry needs to do this now, otherwise Case is gonna be able to respond to this later with an unyielding spirit. Henry really thinking about how maybe he's checking Case's deck list one more time, thinking about just how he's gonna be able to win this game. If he targets the Blightsteel forma Bright Formation, he needs to make sure that that Hapless Aristocrat goes in front of whatever he's not vengeancing. Oh, because that Sapling is just going to go to waste. And this, and he, he basically loses one potential Chump Blocker there by forcing it in front of the Shen. I think that's, a, that's actually a misplay might cost him huge if Ace winds up getting enough gas to, to, to push forward here. Progress Day obviously comes out. I don't think that it's a question. This is this. Okay, that's another. There's our, that is very good for Henry. He finds not only the grasp to help heal and ping off a divine shield, but also just chump blockers galore. Again, he just needs to survive. Case is going to deck himself in a few turns here. That Maokai leveling up was absolutely huge by Henry. And Baron Vernip actually buffs up the Elise because Elise's cost was reduced. To one, summoning a four five. Now I think Henry might just want to play the skitterer here and pass the turn. He has no real he has no reason to attack. He's not gonna be killing Case's Nexus by the time that Case decks himself, so that damage is pretty much pointless. And Case has enough mana to respond to whatever Henry does with a uh, either unyielding spirit or repost. Jury Rig is a great draw for... Well, it's an okay draw for Henry. It gives him another chump blocker. Henry needs to put Elise in front of this, you, I think. He says two more draws left, and that's an unyielding spirit. Hmm, Case thinking. Not having a sixth minion to drop here really is hurting Case. He would want to be getting through with some damage right now. And Henry needs to let through whatever damage that he can. This is a game of survival at this point. Okay, Case choosing not to swing with the, the Grizzled Ranger Scout first. I'm not sure if that's right. I think you really want to be maximizing the amount, the amount of chump blockers that you can take off the table here. And Henry going to be able to block this pretty well. Summoning the jury rig to make it even easier to block. And he can put a 3-3 in front of this Green Glade Caretaker. Oh, okay. Henry's putting on the pressure on Case right now. You really want to block this Green Glade Caretaker. Okay, and then if it gets uh, buffed up, then he can just use his ping to take off that. And he's going to be... Oh, he's, he's just going to be pinging the Laurent Challenger. He decides that the green, green glaive is not important enough, and he needs to take out that challenger unit. Case now will be able to save Scythria. I think you want to unyielding spirit the Scythria. I think that you want to be using the repost. Oh, he could actually use the repost on the uh, the loyal badger bear's companion, and that would buff his attack by seven, knocking Henry down to three health. Okay, instead he chooses to cast Unyielding Spirit, saving his... Oh, and Henry loses the 1-1 one, one, crucially! Down to 10. He really needs a means of reloading this board right here, right now. And used cast sales and is not going to be it. Not buffed up by Baron Van Yip. I think those are zero cost. He actually deals two damage to his own Nexus here. Glimpse Beyond doesn't do it. I think that Case can just swing in for lethal here. Especially with this single combat able to knock down 
Oh, Henry can actually glimpse beyond in response. Case may have just given Henry another lease on life here. If Henry finds a crawling sensation or some other card that summons more minions from uh, multiple minions, he could be going down. Or he, or he could be surviving. Maokai, I think, would do it. That would summon a... Uh, if, he, if he draws two Maokais here, not only would he get Sap Magic, but also uh, summon a Sapling plus a 2-5. I believe that level that Maokai summons a Sapling when he uh, summoned. Another Glimpse Beyond, isn't it? A Vile Feast might be, though. I mean... You need to Vile Feast. You, you needed to Vile Feast to get a blocker here. Henry just doesn't cast the Vile Feast. He may have had this game if he had another blocker available here. Yeah, he would have. And now the, uh, Henry just completely tossed this game away by not summoning the 1-1 one -one before Case could attack. Uh, it would be a 3-3 three -three so it could block a fearsome unit. Wow. I mean, Case, uh, Case could have played the Grizzle Ranger in response, actually. So there wasn't really a way for him to get out of that. But Case just going to Unyielding Spirit to stop that drain. It doesn't matter. Henry is... Would only still be at 9. And Case is going to take this one over Henry. 2-0. And I personally am a little surprised. I mean, Henry made a great showing in his... In his uh, round robin stage. This is going to bring Case up to grand finals. Where he'll be facing me in a best of 3. If Case wins, he resets the bracket. And he needs to win another best of 3. Whereas if I win then I guess I take the whole tourney. So I guess Henry will come up here to solo cast the following game, and I will go down to meet Case as soon as he gets back up here. That was an intense game. Um, really went down to the wire. Case actually had a lot of strength with that uh, sort of mid-rangey bannerman style. Um, but Henry was just... Almost got through with the Maokai alternate win condition, but just barely was not able to make it. Very sad. That's a very sad way to way to go out there, Henry. I gotta say. It says he needs a minute to recover from that game. I think All I right. need a fucking minute. Well, we will give him a minute. Um, but as soon as he's ready, we're gonna launch into grand finals. Me versus him. All right. Uh, we are solo casting this. Yep. Chris was not available. Take on. Yep. Not much to say there. That was uh, pretty unfortunate. Pretty brutal, I would say. Maybe even saddening.
so we did see this matchup earlier today. Uh, James won in a 2-0, uh, as is pretty expected when you're dealing with James. Um, it appears as though Case is going to be banning the... Uh, well, I actually I haven't heard Case's uh, ban yet. Uh, but we know James is banning... Um, Sejuani. So we're gonna have to see if, uh, if Case is going to be able to, uh, melt a comeback here. I mean, it's gonna be a tough one either way. I think going into the tournament, everybody kind of knew James was the strong favorite. He does have the cheapest decks and the uh, most game knowledge. He's the most practiced. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we're just, we're just going to have to see. I, I don't know how. Case is going to have to get a really um, lucky draw, I think, if he wants a chance here. Um, just telling the players their, ban uh, their bans right now. And so let me see. James is not straight. He's not. Uh, he hasn't got his spectators. I think. Yeah, by the way. Inspect. All right, so we are, without further ado, just about ready to get going here. Um, I'm gonna let my competitors know, because we've already talked about both these decks uh, to quite an extent here. Obviously, Case has had uh, one of the more tumultuous uh, runs here, getting knocked down to losers uh, by James pretty early on, beating Sky and then beating me to get back to uh, Grand Finals. Let's see if he can make a bracket reset happen. Uh, they are both starting with their uh, Bilgewater decks here. James, this has been a common trend. He starts with Bilgewater, and after winning Game 1, he goes to Least in Control. I think he thinks that Least in Control is the worst deck, and you start with your best deck, and I think that he's correct there. Now, he's got some nab here. Oh, and there's a Jagged Butcher on one. Now here's a question, do you want a warning shot into Jagged Butcher for Tempo here? Um, or do you want to try and um, use warning shot for Plunder later on to get your Black Market Merchant? Now Case doesn't have a turn 1 or turn 2 play, so getting the 3-3 would probably be optimal here. Um, Case is passing, James opts not to do that, he's a little bit playing it on the safer side, trying to ensure that his punter gets through, and here comes the Death's Hand actually punishing that decision. Uh, if you had had a 3-1 here, Case wouldn't have been able to kill it. You would have remained with a 3-1 on board, 3 damage up. Instead, James opts to just pass, giving up tempo completely, and now Case has a pretty powerful 3-drop. Now he can choose to summon a barrel here, and he does in order to level up or power up his... Um, Make it rains. Now, I think this is the right call. These make it rains, as we saw in the last match, they give you so much board control, not just from being able to cast it, but just the threat of having it ready to go. Uh, you just hold on to it, uh, and, and the opponent can't really play any of their low cost minions as 2 3 health so threatened by the make it rain combo. Now, here comes the warding shot into Wolf Rider. It's a pretty decent play from James here. Case can't kill the Wolf Rider with his Make It Rain, which is a blessing. Uh, he might actually have to play Twisted Fate here. That might be best. And then you can kill the 4-3 with the gold card. Instead, he's going to play the Dreadway Deckhand, buffing up his uh, barrels. Good play. And now, with those upgraded barrels, he can just drop one of his two Make It Rains and actually kill both units. Uh, just for two mana and deal three damage to James's Nexus. Now, James does have that Anivia coming out, and he does have another um, Plunder uh, 
mechanic here with well not plunder but he does have another warning shot he can get into his hand with that nab card case is going to full swing here nothing james can do about that setting his nexus down to eight he'll opt to play anivia straight away instead of that yordle grifter uh this is probably a pretty decent play here um case really doesn't have any good way to deal with it at the moment he's got the leviathan in hand which can put on pressure which is an alternate way to deal with the anivia but it looks like he might just go for the piltered or the pilfered goods here in order to try and find a better response to that anivia it comes out at burst speed he draws two cards he draws another pilfered goods now that is something you really do like to see when you're playing a game where you have the pressure advantage because it allows you to draw even more gas here comes a jagged butcher to be a 3-3 and man case just did a huge swing turn i wanted you to get another make it rain but he just drew uh, a one mana 3-3 straight from james's deck Okay, so obviously it looks like he's in the upper hand here. Maybe dealing James's first loss of a game since the bracket started. Uh, James is going to just attack with Anivia. Obviously, Anivia can come back uh, in egg form if it dies. The thing is, is that Case has another barrel maker in to make it rain, and that can kill the egg. And that's something you have to deal with uh, with Anivia. You always want to make sure you have a chance to kill the egg. Now, Case might opt just to take the two Nexus damage and keep his 3-3 three, three and his two... Uh, it's 3-1, it's 3-3. Three, three. Uh, yeah, just keep all of his minis alive. Instead, he's going to up to block with what would have been a 3-1. I think that that's a smart play. If 3-1 isn't accruing that much value other than alt pressure. James is going to go for the make it rain, keep his Anivia healthy. And now this is an interesting play. But I don't think it hit that 3-2 actually. And this could be a big deal. It didn't. And Nivia is going to be taking the damage. Uh, now Case has a 3-1 on the back as well, although it is good that he managed to kill that 2-1. Uh, now he's got a 2-1 Anivia. That's really scary. Case can actually do a 3-card combo here with Make It Rain into the Barrel Summoner into another Make It Rain to kill off that Anivia. And suddenly it's looking really bad for James. And even if James plays something else, he's still in a tight spot. He ought not to do that. He ought to play his House Spider here. James steals the Riptide Rex. Now, the next uh, next turn, that's going to be uh, disastrous. I think this is... Oh, no, he goes for the red card. Now, that's a smart play. But James is going to play his Yordle Grifter, nab one more card, and have the uh, Warning Shot for next turn. Now, does Case... Is Case opting... Will he go for the lethal here? Because if he goes for the lethal... If he doesn't go for the lethal, his board is going to get totally wiped by this Riptide Rex that uh, James just stole. But I don't know if he has lethal. He actually doesn't he only has hmm he can push through three damage minimum maximum five damage but james is gonna let that get through he does opt to do that now let's see because case does have the leviathan next turn james is gonna block there and there now case is gonna use make it rain here to make it so that his twisted fate lives now James is really on the ropes here. We have seen him get out of some other tough situations. He does manage to hold on here with a little bit of Nexus health remaining. But you gotta think, he's not feeling too good about his odds here. He's gonna get to clear the board, but the Leviathan gets dropped next turn. And what happens then? Case just has to hit past turn, and he wins, because the Leviathan is gonna proc for three on James's Nexus. Now, this is a well-played game from Casey. He did get extremely lucky with those uh, nabs, but but he has been making the right calls here. James does have that 7-4 in play. He is going to get a free swing in and bring Case's Nexus down very low here. Oh, no, Case still has mana left. He's got plenty of blockers here. He's going to drop the Monkey Idol, adding even more pressure onto James. And I'm the Omen Hawk, trying to figure out if he can find something on the top of the deck that will bail him out here. But Case is going to have three blockers, one of which deals direct damage to James's face. And if that goes through, actually, Case should probably just use... Oh, well, what does Case want to do here? Wolfrider is dropped to get a little bit of overwhelm damage in, but I think James is just straight dead here. I mean, he did draw his pilfered goods, which is not terrible. Case is going to play the monkey idol, and that's a really interesting play. I don't know if that's optimal, but all he has to do here... Okay, so James is going to do this he's gonna get his plunder down now case is gonna go for make it rain it actually doesn't hit the wolf rider it does kill the omen hawk and it does get two damage out of the nexus and if james doesn't win here he actually just loses if he doesn't win on this turn case is down to eight uh 
What does James do here? He's going to play Black Market Merchant, get a discount on the Yordle Grifter. Now that gets case down to 7, but I don't think it's going to be enough, frankly. Now he gets a Noxian Guillotine. It doesn't help. Death's Mark isn't, or Death's Hand isn't terrible here, but it's just not enough. James plays Yordle Grifter. He's going to now one more. It's going to be the Dreadway Deckhand, but it's just GG here. Case takes a game. Now, this is not what I expected. I expected a, a quick 2-0 sweep, but suddenly... Case has jumped up to 1-0. and oh. Now, of course, this isn't awful for James because he, even if Case wins this series, he has a bracket reset and he has to win again in order to beat him out of Grand Finals and actually take the whole championship. And James still gets to play with Barrel Midrange again into Case's deck, which he doesn't like that much, his um, Shen Fiora midrange kind of deck. Case is kind of stalling. I think they might be exchanging some words downstairs as they are in the same room. This is going to switch over to his Shen Fiora deck and get ready to see if he can reset the bracket. Now, I would, I really want to see Case uh, get that early game damage in because Anivia is a late game character. James draws three Black Market Merchants and an Omen Hawk in his opening hand now. I think you want to send some of those back here, James. All three of them, he looks like he wants to mull. Case with a turn one. Uh, that's pretty good. He's got Grizzled Ranger also out, ready to go. Uh, but that doesn't come on until turn four. He might opt to mulligan that. Looks like he is. He is going to hang on to the Shen, though, I think. That's a good play. Now, James's hand, he has the Omen Hawk on turn one. Not terrible. You have the Parlay, which can hit the Fleet Feather Tracker, which helps. Now, Case draws his 9-drop Bright Steel Protector. Uh, obviously, that card has an immense amount of power late game, but early game, it's really just, it's not enough. Uh, you know, it's going to just eat up a eat up a slot in your hand and just not do anything. Now, Case doesn't have any 2-drops here. This is pretty good for tempo-wise for James. James can't, he, uh, he just opts to pass. He wants to get that um, blunder in for one here. No. Now he summons his, his uh, two drop. Oh, he didn't want Case to be able to swing in and kill the barrel is why he passed there. Okay, Case is going to drop down the Lord Protégé. That's not terrible. I think James is going to go for the parlay into Pilfered Goods here. Try and find something else to play early. Because if he doesn't, he's going to be in a little bit of a world of hurt. Now, he is going to try and bait on an attack or a block from the Lord Protégé because he re understands that that's a better kill here. He will swing with the 3-3. Three, three. Lord Protégé comes down. James is going to let this attack resolve and then cast Parlay on it. Case doesn't have any barrier givers in hand that he can uh, cast for two, and James knows this. Here comes the Parlay for two. Onto the Lord... No. He casts it onto the Fleet Feather Tracker, and now suddenly I don't really understand his play of swinging with the 3-1. Because if Case blocks with a 2-1 to deny the parlay, that's a big move. Um, here comes the Pilfered Goods. He has to find something to play soon. And he does take a, he does take a um, Spirit's Refuge as well as a Green Glade Caretaker. Now, both these cards... Are pretty decent. Obviously, you play the Green Glade Caretaker next turn. It kind of ruins your curve because you leave open three spell mana. Now he draws another Dreadway Deckhand here. Shen is dropped down. What does James opt to play here? I don't think the Barrier card really does enough for you. I think you want to play the Green Glaive Caretaker, let Case attack, and then drop the uh, Deckhand. Instead, he's going to let that Lorne Protégé uh, swing in and take out his 3 1. Now, this is a combo that Case had. Pretty effective last game with the uh, barrier under the Lauren Protégé. Uh, and you just keep accruing value there. James doesn't have that much chip damage. Of course he does with the parlays. Those are slow. And the make it rands. Uh, and he's going to drop the Green League Caretaker here. Now that's a decent play. He is having the Gangplank coming down next turn. But you are sitting on a lot of barrels here. Petty Officer is another option. But he is going to drop the uh, uh, buffed up Gangplank. 6-6, six, six, you have two barrels on the field. Oh, you get Gangplank's Parlay here. What is Case going to opt to do? If you play the Challenger unit, you get a little bit more tempo, but he might just go for a smaller unit, holding mana for Spirit's Refuge. And if he plays this Food Feather Tracker, I'm worried that James is going to see right through this plan. James, if you can predict that the enemy has a Spirit's Refuge in hand, you can play around it pretty effectively. James just has to figure this out. Now, if he plays Gangplank's Parlay, that's not a terrible play because he can bait out the Spirit's Refuge. 
uh, which does no healing. It can save the Laurent uh, Protégé, yes, but that's four mana traded for one. And Case has to keep that in mind if he wants to drop his uh, Spirit's Refuge here. He opts not to, takes three Nexus damage, opens up Plunder. James obviously doesn't have anything to use Plunder with, but it's not like James doesn't have anything else to do this turn. He can uh, attack. Well, actually, James is out of mana here because he did play the Gangplank. Now, Case is probably going to be using his Barrier here with Shen in order to half health Gangplank, which is a pretty good play. It also stops the Overwhelm damage from coming through and heals him back up to 17. James has Anivia coming down next turn, and Case is all out of combat tricks, although he does have that um, hook in uh, uh, Challenger unit that he can use to kill Anivia. Of course, Anivia does go to the egg form, and here's a Riptide Rex. Now, the thing is, is James actually doesn't have any warning shots, nor does he have any cheap spells in hand to try and trigger this Riptide Rex. I think James is going to want to see what Case does here. Case is going to opt to attack first to try and kill this Gangplank. Now James can go for a Spirit's Refuge play here, uh, save his Gangplank, hold open some spell mana for next turn, uh, heal up. Now, what is he thinking here? He's thinking he wants to sh set Shen to one by blocking with this Greenglaive Caretaker, and I think that that's not too bad of a play. You get that chip damage in on Shen. Oh, but Case has this single combat he can use with the... Uh, War Chefs knocking off Gangplank's barrier for free and killing Gangplank. And then we have to look at what James has left in hand. Yes, he has the Anivia. Yes, he has a Riptide Rex. But Anivia, you really want to have that online when you have 10 mana, not 6. He still has 4 more turns to get there. And Case has a pretty commanding uh, hand right here with his uh, Bright Steel Legion. Uh, and Shen about to be upgraded. And now, then you start swinging in for really big damage. You start swinging in for like 20, 25 damage a pop. Here comes Gangplank. Now, that's a good mid-range card to have. James is going to play Anivia. And now this, he can use to kill Shen. Ace actually, he's going to drop his 5-4. Which can kill the Anivia and then challenge it next turn. And uh, thus offing it. But he has no way to save Shen here. So I think that this is a good play all in all for James. Yup, here comes, and it's just hitting me now that Ace actually high rolled and got Surthio the Bold off of this uh, Silver Ring Protector, and that's the only reason why he actually won Game 2 of the last series, and that's kind of pissing me off right now. But you have, um, you have James with this Egg Nivea that's going to get obviously easily killed. He does have two Gangplanks in hand here. Uh, no way to trigger the Riptide Rex still. Now, Case is going to get some plus one, plus ones going on in the War Chefs. I think James is going to opt to trade with one of the War Chefs and then play Gangplank for a solid body. And you get the 3-2 three, uh, three with the one drop afterward to get a wider board. Now, the thing about um, Case's deck is that unless you have uh, Surthia the Bold, unless you high roll Surthia the Bold off of this Challenger unit... Uh, you don't have very much overwhelm in your deck, so if your opponent can keep on getting these chump blockers out, they have a way to stop the Legion in its tracks. Although, you do put down a lot. Now, here comes the uh, Challenger unit. That's going to be pretty valuable, especially with the War Chefs. Petty Officer is going to be coming down. <sighs> James, I really think he wants to get that one-cost follower here. I don't know how much the barrel does. Yes, you can kill that Green Glade Protector. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, that'd be really good considering what's coming up next. He gets a 2-1 off of it, uh, which isn't that helpful. It does give you one extra block, but it's not a really good stat line. And that attune he already had. You now, here's a warning shot. He can trigger that Riptide Rex, and he's got the attack totem. He's going to wipe Case's board the turn before his 9-drop comes out and level up Gangplank for even more AoE damage. Now, this is actually probably... That, that's such a lucky draw. Like, that that might actually just secure James the victory here. He's going to wipe Case's whole board uh, off the map and deal two damage to the Nexus to boot. He's got a 6-6 six, six with Overwhelm, a 7-7, seven, seven, and two smaller minions ready to swing in. I think Case has to play his Legion here in order to threaten the Gangplank, but this is it. This is GG. Case can only play one minion, and he can't block enough damage. James is going to even the scoreline. Case knows he's beaten, and he hits Surrender. Uh... And we bring the series to a 1-1. Now, that's a very exciting match. You're very well played from both. Honestly, if James doesn't have that warning shot to bail him out, it might be GG. Actually, you know what? Uh, he did have the par Gangplank's parlay in hand, 
which would have leveled up Gangplank and it would have uh, allowed for the Riptide Rex to come down. But at that point, the Legion Protector comes down and you don't have any confirmed kills. You're not going to wipe the board like he just did. And then you have that basically infinite about, okay, now we have to think about what decks are being played here. Uh, and if James wants to keep this hand, uh, Will of Ionia, he does end up keeping the whole hand. And I think it's going to work out well. Case is going to play this one drop, which is just going to get Thermogenic Beamed. And then he has the War Chefs on two, which can also get Thermogenic Beamed. Yes, Case, and now Case is sitting on a worthless, unyielding spirit. Uh, if he elects to play it, it's going to be even worse than if he doesn't, because James has that Will of Ionia ready to go. He has the Gotcha ready to go beforehand. And this is just looking good for uh, James. Now... <sighs> Turn three is going to be a pretty pivotal turn. Case is going to have the attack totem, and he's going to have the tempo on the first, and now Case has two eight and nine cost units, or not units, but cards in his hand. Uh, now, does Case go straight away for the uh, Fiora here? No, he goes for the Lord Protégé. Now, James has to consider what he wants to play here. If he plays either of his units, they just get instantly killed, but if he plays neither, he lets Case get in for five damage, and I think one of the only ways Case can actually win this is by... Uh, he might just go for the straight thermogenic beam or hold the thermogenic beam and go for the gotcha. Now, the gotcha doesn't kill the Lord Protégé. I think you might want to thermo beam the Lord Protégé here because you, you've seen how deadly that card can be with cards like Shen. So you want to kill before the Shen gets on the field. Now, you've got the gotcha on the War Chefs as an alternate uh, route here. What is he thinking? If he plays Eye of the Dragon, I think he's in a tight spot because he can't then kill the Lord Project. Yeah, he's going to go for the Gotcha on the War Chefs. Now, I don't know how I feel about this. I think you really wanted to kill that Lord Protégé. Obviously, James doesn't know what I know, which is that uh, Case has a perfectly valid target for that spell, Fiora in hand. Uh, They're both going to skip turns. He draws another gotcha. Now, if Case plays his Fiora here, it's going to be disastrous. He might not be expecting the three uh, mana because, or the, th the three damage because he might be thinking, oh, well, actually, he does have four mana here, which is enough for a gotcha on a good day. Now, I think Case is, or James is going to go for the gotcha on the one two, and then he still has, no, he won't have enough mana to do it. We'll go for this. Now, Deathsmark can be good for a finisher. He's going to go for the gotcha value. On the one two but this is potentially really bad because this leaves open case enough mana to get his uh spirits refuge out in case sees this he's gonna drop the fiora now that james has nothing else to deal with it and his patience has paid off here now james does have that will of ionia to bounce it back to hand if case draws in it now he, he draws a second will of ionia now that is good this is gonna hook in the one three here and we're gonna have to see if james is gonna go for the will of ionia here it's not a bad play because uh, considering that Case has this, um, he has this, oh, now the, now the, the Shadow Flare, I didn't even know what that card did, because I've actually never seen it be played, I thought it was a Dusktail Dawn, but this could just super duper kill that Fiora, he has no way of saving it if you just drop the Dusktail Dawn right now, he opts not to, he opts to give the Fiora at 2 health, drops the Shadow Assassin, gets a draw, now I like this play here with this draw, now he has the Vi ready, uh, to suck in the Fiora, and you drop the Vi next, oh, Thermogenic Beam here, to bait out that, um, that spell from Case. Does he want to drop it here, or is he fine just letting Fiora die? No, he does end up dropping it, and now if Case drops, or if James drops this Vi here, it's going to have more than enough attack to kill this Fiora. Case has no way to actually save it, because he only is going to have seven mana here, um, and he can't play his Unyielding Spirit. Oh, and the Mystic Shot to add insult to injury here. Now, James has to be considering what Case has in hand. He doesn't want to overcommit with the Vi, spend all of his mana, and then have no way... Oh, but he will play the Vi here after all. I think that this is the right play. Case is going to drop one of his four-cost units. Leaving... Now, this four-cost units, they're good for tempo, and they're really hard to trade against. So, even if the Fiora dies here, he has that alternate win con. Oh, he'll just pass the turn... James is not, he's going to attack with a 2-2 for sure. Will, he opts not to attack with the Vi? This is crazy. I guess Fiora doesn't have any, now, Case sees that now that James doesn't have the attacking totem, he doesn't have to hold its mana up. Well played by Case keeping his Vi alive. Here comes Plaza Guardian. It's at 5 already. <clears throat> James has not drawn any Lee Sins. Here's Breadsteel Protector going onto Fiora. 
but he reconsiders. Instead, he opts to attack straight with the 3-1. What does James do here? Now, you can play Will of Ionia, but, but I don't know if it's actually good at all. And now James might be kicking himself a little bit here. Oh, he actually can do uh, Mystic Shot now. If he Mystic Shots a few Arcades, he doesn't have any fast way to save it. And that, that would be a pretty good... He opts to block with the 2-2, two, two, saving himself 3. James, I really think you should have played that 6-mana uh, card when you had that chance to kill that Fiora. He is going to go for the Mystic Shot here. That's a good play, although it's risky. Oh, no, Case can use Unyielding Spirit in response. Now, of course, James then would have the ability to recall Fiora. <clears throat> and Case would be blowing away basically his whole turn. He loses this card from his hand, although it's not really doing much in there anyway because James has two Will of Ionias. He does opt to use it. That's his whole mana bar. What will James do in response? Now, you can use Will of Ionia to make that spell fizzle, <clears throat> but it's actually not optimal. Uh, he might be thinking about the tempo here, but if, if you disregard the tempo, you want your Mystic Shot to go through so that your Plaza Guardian has more of a discount. I, I, yeah, and he, he opts, uh, opts to do that. He lets the card go through. Now, the question is, does he Will of Ionia right now? He will Will of Ionia right now, uh, basically eating Case's 8-drop spell, but I'm feeling pretty nervous for James here. Yes, he has the Plaza Guardian for 3 mana, but Case has this hand. He's got a Fiora, a Bright Steel Legion, and another Grizzled Veteran in hand. He's going to suck in this Vi, get free chip damage onto it, and deal 6 more damage onto James's Nexus, setting him down to 12. Now, when Case drops this 9-drop in two turns, James might not have a suitable way to deal with it. Oh, except for that big board clear he held onto from earlier uh, uh, can give everything. Aesthetic Shock helps, too. I think he's going to go straight for the Plaza Guardian here. Uh, this helps level up Vi some more. Uh, and you have to wonder what Case is going to play here. He might go straight for the Grizzled Ranger, and he does. James has his free 6 attack. The Vi is going to suck in the Lorem Protégé, which I think is a really good play here. You only take 1 damage and you kill this whole unit. Case has no way to respond with Barrier. He opts to block with that Scout unit. I'm not sure about that, Case. You maybe wanted that to trip up James during the next attack totem phase with that, um, <clears throat> Bright Steel Legionary. And now James keeps up two big blockers here. Case is obviously going to play another three cost uh, unit. James has the option to recall that again and keep some tempo up, which I think might be good here because Case is probably going to opt to uh, drop the nine drop next turn. He doesn't do that though. He's going to be sitting on a lot of mana here. Now, here comes the Bright Steel formation. And James is going to have to do some pretty serious blocking here. He might just straight Will of Ionia, but the thing is, is that if James can bait in uh, all that attacking and block appropriately, he might have to sack some of his cards, but he leaves Case totally destitute with more draw and burn in hand. Uh, he'll, we, he will have to block twice and be set down to three, but he will be able to essentially totally wipe the board of units here. Uh... I don't know if that's something that he wants to do. James is considering his options here. If he wants to eat that 9 mana, you do set case back 2 turns, and you can use Static Shock then to draw and break some of the... Wait, is he going to... He's going to Will of Ionia the 3-4. Now, this, I like this. I don't know if Case is going to be able to see it, because he knows James isn't main running any wide uh, AoE board clears. Will Case full swing here if he... Holds back with any of his units. James is going to have that option. Now, he's going to block the with the Plaza Guardian here on the left. James is going to go for the Ephemeral card. He has to. He's left himself no other option. And now, Case's whole unit, all of Case's units are going to die. He's left with two three drops left in hand. James is going to have six health. So, James should, unless Case draws well here, have the ability to uh, withstand. This Fior is... Oh, the Fior is not a follower, though. I think James might have misplayed here. I don't think he realized that the Fiora wouldn't have died from the Ephemeral card. Now, that's, this Clause of the Dragon is really good. James is going to go for two Static Shocks here. Um, on the Fiora and the Nexus. Drawing twice. Now, he's going to draw once first. See if maybe he can get a Progress Day out or something. But James is in a really bad spot here. Because Case has... Oh, Deep Meditation doesn't really help. Oh, it is... Oh, I think that that's actually really good. He can draw two, summon his Claws of the Dragon, there's a progress day, two progress days, None, neither of those can be played right here, although he will be able to fish next turn. 
Now he's going to attack with this 3-2, trying to bait in some kind of uh, barrier play from Case. Case does opt for the barrier play. This could be good for James, although he is still dealing with Case having a lot of power on the board. He's going to go for the Static Shock here. I think you like to, yeah, you Static Shock the 3-2 in case you can find uh, another Static Shock off the top or even a Hyperthermic Beam. Thermogenic beam in order to kill that 3-1 with your one remaining mana. Instead he finds a shadow assassin. Now this can help block next turn. Case doesn't have lethal on board. Oh no, he does because he's going to be able to play both these cards. And now James is in a really tight spot. It's all going to come down to what he can draw from progress state. He does have four mana. And Case draws a bright steel formation here. This is a probably curtains here. Unless James can draw something huge. But I don't think he has anything left in his deck uh, capable of dealing with this threat. He does draw a Mystic Shot and a Plaza Guardian, which he can play for free. But James just surrenders. Case resets the bracket here. And we're going to be going back to an even game state. James versus Case, 0-0. Zero and zero. Now that is something I did not expect to see. Well played by Case with some clutch draws when he needed them. Um, yeah, I mean, that was just overall a really entertaining series. And now we're going to see James has to be feeling nervous. I think James really wants to win this tournament. He's definitely been heralded as the favorite the entire way through. And I think if he loses, he's just, uh, he's just, he's going to be really upset. Um, a case, I think, has to be really happy. I know he was sweating after those last couple of games, how close they were. Uh, and we're going to see which player can keep their nerves up. Uh, James has elected to actually ban a different deck. He's banning the Swain. Uh, I'm going to tell them James bans Swain. Ace bans Sej. And now I think James got a little bit, he maybe got a little bit tilted against that uh, Swain deck with its combo pieces and the ability to continue to swing or to uh, uh, string together spells. Now let's see if this barrel midrange is going to be able to uh, take down the Sejuani Gangplank. Both these decks are running Gangplank. I do favor Case's deck here actually. I think that uh, the Sejuani is just a all around better champion than Anivia, especially in the case when you've built a deck around her and you want to be leveling it up, which you have clearly on both sides because they're both running Gangplank who has the exact same level up condition. Now, again, I, I think it's going to come down to who gets a better early draw. Who has the more make it rain barrel combos? James has a good turn one, but Case has an equal turn one, actually also drawing a parlay. Uh, James opts to... Uh, actually, I wasn't thinking of James as Mulligan. Case has both of his champions in hand. James doesn't go for the uh, plunder right away. Ace is going to go for the plunder, actually punishing James for uh, holding out his uh, plunder effect a little bit here. Now let's see, Case or James draws a uh, black market merchant. James is comfortable taking this three to the face. I think he has to be. Uh, James is going to have uh, this paid off for. Actually, he opts not to use that warning shot. He's going to save it for later. Not sure what. He's going to play the petty officer here. So he has to summon a random one cost. Uh, what is he going to get? Now this two one. It's better than a one one, but it's not great. You much would rather see something that draws you a card or put something in your hand or something uh, with a higher value. Now, Case, he does have this parlay to stop the 3-2. James is going to actually full swing here, I wonder, and he's going to protect his 2-2 two -two unit. Now, I like this, kind of. Case Actually, Case is a pretty good block here with his 3-3 three -three and his 2-2. Two -two. He can send the 2-2 two -two into the 3-2 two, and the 3-3 three -three into the 2-1. Uh, he has this parlay available to save one of his units. I think he's going to use it on the 3-2 here. And Case is going to be off to a really good early start. Let's see what he elects to do. How he wants to spend. No. Case actually just sits on the barrel. Uh, and lets it get destroyed here. Opting to keep the parlay for some other turn where he can maybe trigger this plunder effect. And now James has traded pretty evenly. The 3-1 and the 2-2 are about similar in value here. Now, let's see what James wants to do. You might warning shot into the overwhelm unit. That could be really good value here. And then you can get your plunder on next turn and start ramping up this mana really effectively. Will that be what he decides to do? He hovers over warning shot, he goes for it, and he will play this wolf rider. Now, this gangplank has to be getting close to leveling up. Actually, it's probably not that close. I'm probably just trolling because he, 
That might have been the first plunder take. You see cases, uh, Nexus is at 19. It's the first time it's taking damage this game. Okay, I'm griefing. Um, now, Case is going to do parlay on this 2-2, two -two, and James, he only has the one blocker. Case is probably just going to full swing here, uh, or just swing with the 3-1, holding his 2-2 two -two back. Now, James is going to want to hang on to this 4-3 uh, in order to activate plunder next turn, and actually, I think, oh, make it rain helps. Now, you attack with the 4-3 here, hold the make it rain, and then once Case decides, no, 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 hold the make it rain. When Case decides to block, you can use that. Oh, but James decides not to. He's just going to make it rain straight away. Putting Case into a position where he knows... Um, he knows how he's going to have to go up against this. He is going to opt to block with the 2-1 to deal some damage to the 4-3. That is the correct play here. 4-3, of course, lives. And now Case... Uh, I wonder what he's going to decide to do. He could drop the Gangplank here. It's a solid uh, mid-range tanky unit. It summons the barrel for the uh monkey idol to deal more damage and now here comes james i think he's gonna do wolf rider and black market merchant or he could do two black market merchants now this warning shot doesn't really help that much considering uh james's current board state make it rain is gonna be a, a slightly valuable card now i am gonna wonder if case has properly actually timed out this monkey idol because Oh, he draws another one. It doesn't matter. Okay, here comes Sejuani. in a vulnerable out the 4-1 uh, and take it down. What's James going to play here? I think you play the Gangplank. Set up the barrel for the Make It Rain combo here. And then um, get uh, some solid amounts of chip damage. Now, let's see what Case opts to do here. Will he attack with the uh, Monkey as well as the Sejuani? Let's see. Sejuani attacks... Hooks in the zero one. I think that that's the right play. I think Case is smart to be able to see that. He actually hooks. He's thinking about hooking in the barrel here. Uh, I don't think that that's the right play here. Maybe calling James's bluff that he thinks James doesn't have anything, but James does. He's sitting on a make it rain here. And now he does opt to hook in the barrel. James is going to go for the make it rain. If it hits the nexus, he'll have that plunder effect. Uh, and I think that that's kind of what you want here. You don't want to hit that monkey. Definitely, and this is actually optimal from James. You deny the last monkey from coming out. You get the plunder effect ready to go. You hit the Sejuani, but you have to be thinking if you're James, you might feel a little scared here. Sejuani's, what, one or two turns away from leveling, and you've just got a, a, block, a board full of chump blockers. You can't stop her. Now, he is going to hold on. Man, this is just so scary for James here, especially with the Riptide Rex coming down next turn. Now, that, that uh, Powder Keg unit... Helps a little bit. You can go Powder Keg Yuna into um, Warning Shot into uh, the Wonder Unit, but this is just in a tough spot here. He is going to end up full swinging here, which is big damage on the case of Case. Opts to greedily trade here. He's going to get set down pretty low. Instead, he will decide to trade off his Sejuani. That's the smart play because you have to remember you have the Gangplank sitting behind it. So it's not like you're losing your entire. Uh, a set of units here. James is going to resolve. Uh, he's going to take him down to 7 and then further down to 5 here. But I don't think he actually has a way of winning. Yeah, Case is going to play Jagged Butcher. The thing is, uh, my question is, will he play Gangplank here? I think the right play is actually Monkey Idol. And then you have the attacking 2-1 that will always trigger Plunder for the Riptide Rex on the following turn. Let's see if Case... Nope, Case decides to play the Gangplank here. Oh, but the Gangplank attack will also trigger the Riptide Rex, and I think James is really on the uh, end of his ropes here. I think he might have a Scrap Shot in deck, which can deal with this uh, Gangplank, uh, but we're going to have to see if he finds that. I don't think it's unlikely that he finds it. Gangplank, uh, can, here's a Riptide Rex. Now, now, this could be big. James can clear the whole board here. If he gets some good blocks here, he's going to have to hover over the eye. Oh, he's just dead. There's no way James can survive here. Because of the fact that Gangplank has Overwhelm and he's going to be damaging not only the Nexus but the minion blocking GG. Case is up 1-0 in this tournament and now it's suddenly feeling scary for James. Uh, somehow James has been a little bit, it's been taken down a little bit uh, in what everybody expected or what I at least expected to be a 2-0 uh, going into this final uh, uh, grand finals. James just takes out Case easily. Case actually manages to claw his way to being one game away from winning the tournament. And he's at a tourna tournament point here.
Now, James does have to go up against Case's weakest deck. It did have a couple good draws in the past couple of times and did really luck out against me getting that Serthia the Bold. It was actually pretty crazy. If he didn't draw that unit, he probably would have lost the entire game. Ugly would have remained undefeated and I would have had one more chance to go up against Attack a lot and probably would have won and I would be sitting here where Case is right now, but... It's foolish to dwell on Passive 6. Now, James has a decent curve here. Obviously, that 2-drop doesn't really want to go down on turn 2 unless James can get a Plunder. He doesn't have the Attack Chip on turn 2. Now, Case has a lot of 1-drops here. He has Fleet Feather Tracker, Green Blade Caretaker, and Fiora. This single combat, this is a pretty powerful hand from Case, but he could gas out if he doesn't have that kind of uh, good effect at the beginning. James is going to drop his turn 1 Omanaki. Picks up another Make It Rain. Now, that's good value here. Case actually has no barrier givers. He's going to drop the Green, Green Glade Caretaker or the Fleet Feather Tracker here. I don't know which one's better. Fleet Feather Tracker comes down. James is going to swing with the Omanhawk because he knows that that's less valuable than the Fleet Feather Tracker every time. This is basically a free one damage uh, early on to Case's Nexus. He gets that Gangplank level up uh, condition even further ahead. He draws an Anivia that's leveled up. That's actually pretty big. Anivia's low style is its biggest weakness. And now, James, you have to wonder if you want to do Make It Rain here. I think that it's a pretty high value play. Uh, you might want to wait to see what Case does, because if you Make It Rain right away, he's obviously just going to challenge your 1-1. <clears throat> but if you pass here, you get the chance of Case not challenging, because he feels like trading in the 1-2 is better. We'll have to see what he does. Will he challenge here? He has not challenged yet. He's going to be thinking about it. Now, obviously, knowing what I know, it's not the right play to challenge, and Case might end up just passing turn here. Not a terrible play because you have uh, Fiora coming in next turn. He's going to play Petty Officer, maybe. He's hovering over it, and I think you want to summon the Powder Keg here for sure. And now you have that, yeah, now you have a, a, the Make It Rain already powered up, and you have these 2-1s and 1-2s on the board here that both died of the Make It Rain. What will Case play? It looks like he wants to play that Laurent. Protégé, not wanting to put Fiora in harm's way just about yet. You have to remember, though, for James, he does have three nabs, so it's not like he's going to be gassing out anytime soon. And Case's deck has a lot of pretty standard good units. He has the Grizzled Veteran as well as the Lauren Protégé and the uh, the Challenger Elite unit that has a uh, the Death Death Rattle. Oh, and this is a pretty decent Make It Rain here. Case might not be expecting the second Make It, make it Rain. And James could get him with a tricky one on Fiora. You kill both these units, but Fiora remains unscathed. And now she can pull in this 1-1 um, this one -one when she gets a chance. Now, James has Case down to 14 already. Case does have that... Oh, he has... Wow, Case actually has been drawing absolutely insanely here. He's getting so lucky pulling the Shen as well as the other barrier card. So even if James has a way to uh, shut down the Fiora... Case actually has multiple barriers in hand as well as a single combat to keep her alive. And now this is a little scary for James here. Um, now he opts to pass, hold up his spell mana, give Case the tempo turn. Case is probably going to trap Shen here. He might be worried about what James has. Um, it's, it's definitely actually really scary for James here because this Fiora has so much barrier behind it here i think case just wants to drop the shen and get ready to start clean sweeping the game with fiora you also have the single combat to finish it off at the end if james starts playing safer now, what does james do here he opts to pass this is probably a good play he wants to hold uh his his uh unit mana for this make it rain into nab units combo with the plunder effects i think that's what you have to do here and then you also have the three three if you don't draw anything that you want Case is gonna let it uh let it resolve here. His Fjord is gonna have a 3-1. That's a little scary if James ever has any more make it rains or parlays here. James is gonna drop his 2-1 into the pilfered goods. Case drops Green Lake Caretaker. Not terrible considering he's picked up. Now James drops a single combat. Now that's really gonna be good for uh killing Fiora if Fiora ends up uh, getting barrier and trying to use that to her advantage. He does pick up a late game card and has it discounted. Now here comes the Bright Soul Protector as well. This is going to be really good for Tempo. He's going to play the Jagged Butcher here. Obviously, it's going to be up to a 4-4. Four -four. Now that's actually pretty powerful. Case has no good trades into that, uh, save for using single combat and his barriers. 
Uh, now, Case, I think he's going to want to play the Lauren Protégé here. Stay up on tempo. He has whittled away all his mana. Now, what are you thinking if you're James here? Do you want to give barrier to the 3-2, and then it becomes really hard to kill with you, or no? Then he just passes, holds up that spell mana for the uh, single combat, and we're going to see if Case is going to be able to... Um, Take him out. Now James has the Anivia ready to come down next turn, and there's still a couple turns left for Fiora. He opts to put Barrier on the Greenglaive Caretaker. I think this is signifying that he's going to want to put Barrier onto Fiora with Shen when they attack. Now James might be able to see this and drop the Fiora, or and drop the Anivia here. That actually can't kill Shen, but it will be able to kill something else, maybe. No, no, it won't actually, unless Case opts to uh, attack with the 3-2, which I don't think is right ever. Now what are you thinking if you're James? Right, still protector gives you tempo. It gives you a blocker and allows you to keep one of your units uh, safe from the fjord. But it does keep this three two um, vulnerable to fjord. Now, Jamesy's still thinking. I think this is the right play here. You get that card out. It's got really good tempo. It gives you another blocker. I think if if James can kill this Fiora, he's in a really good spot to win the game here. So he's gonna try and bait out Case's mana here. He's going to suck in the 2-1. I think James might go for the single combat. <clears throat> but the question is with what onto what? Now you block with the 4-4 onto Shen. You single combat the Fiora. And you have to think what case can only save one of these units. And then once you get rid of not only the Shen, but also the last barrier card in hand, Case has to be thinking. Um, no, he actually can't save Fiora here. He has to try and save Shen. He gets a little bit of health back, saves the Shen, although James does... Now what does he do? Oh no, he's going to single combat. Fighting the 2-1. Actually, no, he. I don't think he can save Fiora in this case. No matter what he does, uh, this Fiora is going to be dying. Actually, if he single combats with another unit onto that 2-1, uh, the Fiora will live and level up to be a 4-2. And he'll still have Shen on the field. This is pretty good, although you have to consider it. You're going into James's turn with him having the attacking totem. And you only have one card left in hand. It's that five mana challenger unit. So Case is wondering if he wants to blow all of his combat tricks here. He opts not to. let He lets the Fiora die, holding open that single combat in hopes of using it later, uh, trying to get that win condition with the Shen Greenglaive Caretaker. Now James is going to drop the Yordle Grifter here. Really have the, he does get the Elysians, picks up another uh, Greenglaive Caretaker. Now this is good because Case's units don't have Fearsome or Trample. That's just a really free chump blocker. Now I would definitely play the Greenglaive Caretaker here. Oh my goodness, beyond the fact that he has the uh, Protector, or the, the Legion. Now you draw Parlay here, you can use that to kill something. Here comes a Nivea out of 3-5 stat line. Uh, nothing can really kill this really well. Case drops his one drop, which is probably just going to die to Anivia if he does, so you might want to hold on to that. What do you play here? Now, you could play the 5-3, or you could have to do a little bit of a single combat on Anivia. Case is is trying to call James's bluff that the gas that he has left is uh, reliant on this Anivia, which is actually just not true. Now, James here has an interesting decision to make. Yes, oh, he might want, he might be thinking, I want to parlay the 2-1 the in order to save my Anivia. Little does he know he has the 5-4 coming in next turn. Uh, or he, Case might just drop it right here. If Case drops it here, though, you do let James out of the secret, and you can drop the Green Glaive Caretaker. Now, Case is definitely not going to be thinking, yeah, you have to drop it here. Here comes the Swiftling Lancer. James is going to drop that Green Glaive Caretaker. And Case isn't thinking about the fact that James has the uh, Legionnaire here. Oh, that 2-1 actually, Case misorders. This could be really big. Uh, he doesn't have that uh, challenger on the 2-1. Case draws a repost. Now, that helps a lot. Uh, the question is, what is Case going to do? Obviously, he's going to attack immediately with the four, uh, with the 5-4 and kill this uh, Egg Nivea off before it gets a chance to do anything. Now, he is probably going to uh, save. Uh, here, Shen levels up here. Uh, which would be bad if Case had something behind it, but all Case has is this repost. Oh, James actually can't kill Shen anymore. Now this is getting a little scary. Uh, what does Case elect to do here? Now, if you're, if I'm Case, I'm probably thinking you want to repost the two one, and um, save it and keep your units alive here. What is Case thinking? Of course, that puts your Shen really low, and if Case or if James has a parlay, that sets you up for disaster here. But what will Case? Ooh, he will have the commanding board after this. James is 
especially if he uses repost in his 2 1, but he does leave his hand empty. James still has gas to uh, pull out, especially because a lot of that gas is in the form. Oh, case ops to not do anything. He holds that repost, that combat trick for later, which is actually pretty good. But James is going to drop the Brightsteel formation here, buffing up this Green Glaive Caretaker a lot, and Case has no real viable way to kill this, right? He needs to wait a couple turns in order to uh, give his green or uh, give his attack with a challenger. Oh, and here's an Anivia. Now, James has even more uh, ability to attack here. Now, when you're James, you have to be thinking, can he kill this unit? And I think he's going to look at the deck list and see there's no way he can actually kill it. Anivia is not leveled up yet, but you are going to be able to kill that Shen, save for a uh, repost here. War Chefs comes down to be an additional blocker, but it's really not that impactful. James is going to full swing with everything here. Now, Case has to block a lot of this. The Anivia obviously, uh, well, actually, you shouldn't block the Anivia because he's not getting that much in. He obviously has to block the 19 2 and he has to block the 9 9. Uh, he's going to block with War Chefs here, keeping his Shen and uh, 5 4 alive, but Case's Nexus is going to get down pretty low here. It's actually going to go down the six and james is going to have a full board of blockers ready for next turn as well as some more draw here he can go for the um the plunder effect uh with with um pilfered goods or with the other card he is going to choose to use repost here on shen to save it in order for next turn to have it uh as a as a blocker james now the thing is is that james has a lot behind this still he still has three draw in hand uh, all that can be discounted here. And Black Market Merchant, he doesn't even need to use the warning shot. He's going to draw a repost here. That's big. And Case is really looking at the end of his ropes here. What can he draw? What can he draw? Maybe the 9-mana Bright Steel Legion might be able to uh, get him a little bit through. Buff up his minions. But Spirit's Refuge will heal him a little bit. But it's simply not going to be enough. Case surrenders. And we go down to match point for both players here. James and Case both on 1-1. One, one. James just barely manages to eke out that victory with a bunch of very clutch and lucky draws from the pilfer you know you get that bright steel illusion on top of the green glaive caretaker you get a really big combo especially with a wide board that case was not expecting and now it comes down to lee sin control versus the shen fiora from case who will come out on top here now obviously shen fiora at the beginning of the tournament case was pretty unhappy about it um because he just he didn't know how to pilot it maybe now that he's been going on a little bit more he's, he's learned how to pilot it better james i think wants to mull a lot here for uh removal for that fiora but instead opts to keep his hand and this could be really bad now case doesn't have that fiora early but he does have a pretty good curve with the war chefs into the shed <clears throat> james does have that recall but honestly if james doesn't get a really good draw here he's gonna be looking really bad now here's lee sin lee sin in the uh late game is really going to be effective at shutting case down this doesn't have any mana for combat tricks will he elect to swing here james could get a pretty good trade he doesn't i think the longer this game goes the better for james here's the vi now this is big also james is going to have this draw from the elusive unit Ace is probably going to drop the Lauren Protégé here, so the Elusive Unit won't live for that much longer, but he is going to attack with it here, get a little bit of chip damage in, and that's going to be helpful for later. Now, he chooses to block with a 3, or to attack with a 3-2, uh, knowing that he wants that Protégé dead for later. Uh, I don't know if James is considering the value here, though. He gets 2 for 1 with that Lauren Protégé, 3 mana to kill 5 mana worth of units. Now, this is really good. No, you know what he does see is he sees the static shock play into the Lauren Protégé. Now, does Case see it? Will he attack straight away or will he drop the Shen? Now, if Case drops the Shen, James can actually go for the fast spell before Case gets, an a, a, Case gets a chance to attack uh, and give it barrier. Let's see what he does. He's just thinking about it. He's considering his options here. Looks like he's playing Bright Steel Protector straight away. Maybe he heard me talking from the other room. Somebody did open the door down there. But this is really good for Case here. I don't think James expected this line of events. So you can still utilize your uh, Static Shock here. He actually plays War Chefs also. Case okay, is a really big board here. You can still utilize Static Shock uh, in order to try and make sure that this Lauren Protégé dies. James is waiting to see what Case decides to do. He's going to... Swing in with the protege and actually hit James here for nine. That's no, that's nothing to sne uh, sneeze at here. Of course, James is readying up the Vi for next turn. He can start sweeping away the board because he has two Shens in hand. He has 
uh, an overflex of gas. James might just be too heavy handed here in his in his hand. He does have that will of Ionia, uh, but it just costs so much. Now I think the Vi is going to be coming down here. Uh, you can start killing off units here with the Vi. You can start killing off the war chefs, but Case is sitting on the repost, and if he actually has the Green Glaive Caretaker to effectively stall out the turn. Now, if James attacks here with the Vi and gets reposted, it could be disaster. And I think James C is what I'm seeing. He might opt to just chill out, get some more spell mana here. Maybe you even wanted to hold off on the Vi and summon the 1-3 as a blocking body. He passes turn, uh, surrenders the attack to him in case. Yes, case mills through some mana here, but he actually tries single combat also. And here comes the Shen. This draw from James is so bad. I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to Will of Ionia the Shen. And actually, now Case can't replay the Shen here because he doesn't have enough uh, uh, minion mana here. Uh, Case might be looking at a single combat, but he opts not to. He opts just to let Shen get bounced. Single combat had its legs there because he had a second Shen in hand. Now we have to see what's going to happen. James has Lee Sin ready to go, but looks like Case is just going to get a pretty commanding swing in here again. Now what do you do if you're James? How do you block here? Because a, a blocking um, a unit with the Vi leaves you open to the same exact thing as last time with the repost that Case still has. And James, I just don't see a way out of this game. Of course, okay, here comes the Vi on the 3-4. You save yourself some Nexus damage. Mystic Shot coming in on the 2-2 uh, here. Um, I would have liked to see it on the 1-2 instead, considering the cards in Case's hand. That way you for sure kill two minions, and one of them is going to be pretty big. What is Case going to do here? He could go for the repost, honestly, on his Green Glaive Caretaker and set James down to one health. No, he actually can set it onto the 2 2 and just win the game here. And it looks like Case is just going to take the whole tournament here. James has no way to respond uh, appropriately, and it's over. It's over. James wins. Or Case wins. Well played, Case. The victor here. For the uh for the tournament that's crazy wow well i mean well played well played to both competitors there that was a really close we did end up having the full six game series um yeah it's just, just good stuff to both competitors uh really good stuff to case actually meaning to upset james there very well played he must have been on the edge of his seat and um wow Overall, just incredible matches from all of our players here. We'll pick from Case. I'm shocked he managed to finish it out, but you know, that's uh, that's really cool. He doesn't win anything except for Pride. James comes up. Got there. He got there. James, uh, always uh, uh, humble in defeat. Ugh. Here comes Case with a big smile on his face. Happy he won. Ugh. I will remind Case the only reason why he actually made it that far is because he lucked out and got Serthia off of his... Uh, last breath elite on my game so let's not get too big to our britches <laughs> here but uh, uh well played from both of our competitors those were some pretty exciting matches uh do you guys have anything to say yeah it was super fun super fun tournament i think case had had some insane draws there i don't think i was drawn as hot as i had been throughout uh, the past few days no i agree me too i'm a little bit sad that i didn't get to play my uh swain sejuani deck at all for the entire bracket uh because <laughs> i really love that deck but overall i had a great time um not only putting on the production but also playing you know it was it was a lot of fun and even though i didn't win uh i still made it to grand finals and and it was an exciting you know two all the way to game three best of three series and i gotta say i mean i didn't expect my shin Fiora to perform i was really disappointed that i made it um, but to all the naysayers, all it takes is four straight Shen Fiora games of incredible draw, and uh, you win the grand final. <laughs> yep, that was uh, woof. That was hard to beat, certainly. Yeah, that was uh, James. You did have that some lucky plunders on that game five with the uh, Bright Steel uh, Legion, certainly. Uh, but Case also had his fair share of lucky nabs. Uh, overall, well played to both my gentlemen here, and I think that we're gonna call it here. Uh, Thanks, everybody, for watching. Yeah, it was a ton of fun. Uh, we will for sure have some other invitationals happening within the upcoming future, whether they are in Legends of Runeterra or some other game. Stay tuned. Yep. Any last words, Case? No, I mean, thanks, you guys, for watching. And... All right, congratulations to our victor, and thank you all for watching.